This is Atomic Shinobi and today I am going to narrate a movie on what if Naruto disappeared in Land of Waves. If you enjoy this video please like, share and subscribe to this channel. Now wasting no more time, let's start the story. Numerous foundations support the world. Values, morality, honesty, and above all else, rumors. Stories that have strayed from reality and begun to resemble fiction, with numerous people fabricating tales until the lies conceal the truth of a significant historical event. That is what the Shadow Fox is like. There are a lot of rumors about this unidentified person. They claim he is one thing through someone else, and quite another through someone else. He is referred to be a saint by some, a sinner by others, and a creation formed beyond comprehension or control by humans by still others. Due to the inherent nature of humans, anything that cannot be controlled will be sought out and, if not, destroyed. As an example, Consider the shinobi villages from the elemental countries, who made every effort to track down the shadow fox and persuade him to join their village by any means necessary, at the behest of their respective cages. Any village that was successful in hiring the shadow fox would experience unparalleled glory and fame, as well as wealthy and powerful clients who would pay top dollar to hire the man, with the village keeping the majority of the earnings. The shadow fox was supposedly reported to have been present at the time, but due to all the rumors, nobody was able to follow him around. Not even the legendary Toad Sanin was able to solve this mystery using his spy network. However, the Leaf Village discovered that, despite spending a good day or two going over every rumor regarding the Shadow Fox, most of them revolved around a single, straightforward fact. Wave Country has seen multiple sightings of the Shadow Fox. That's the reason the former members of Genin Team 8 were reunited and sent out to find the Shadow Fox at the start of the Great Naruto Bridge. Whoa! exclaimed Kiba upon realizing the span of the bridge and hearing his devoted dog, Akamaru, bark in agreement at the sight of the structure. As he watched Hinata fight back tears and saw the lifeline of Wave Country stretch almost as far as the eye could see, Shino remarked, it's very impressive. It presents hope, strength, and a chance for this village to grow. As Hinata placed her hand on the golden plaque and said, it represents Naruto.kun well. He would be proud of it, her tears fell freely as Yuhi Kuranai placed a hand on the girl's shoulder. After learning of Naruto's passing here in Wave Country, Kuranai consoled Hinata for several months, and the senseis did the same for the other rookies. It's okay Hinata. You can say all that you want at his grave before we leave here, Kuranai said. Rewind to three years ago, in order to improve teamwork even more, Gen and teams 8, 9, and 10 were waiting in the Hokage's office for some horrible D-ranked mission. When team 7 arrived, the atmosphere around them had a carefree, everything is great and nothing can ruin my life. Vibe. But the Hokage knew something wasn't right when he noticed Kakashi wasn't reading his book. Kakashi remarked, Team 7 is. Is here reporting for duty Hokage. Sama. Our mission to wave country was a. Success, as the Hokage noticed the pained, melancholy, and dejected expressions on the Junin sensei and the other two genin nearby. Hold on, two of the genin, Kiba thought she stood up straighter than ever before, causing her chest to puff out more even though it was covered by her heavy jacket. Is Naruto.kun here? Whispered Hinata as she hid behind Shino. Where is Naruto? Asked the Hokage, trying with all of his might to deny what had happened even as he felt his heart tighten and his mind rapidly form the conclusion of what had transpired. He's, he's, Uzumaki Naruto is dead, Hokage. Sama, declared Kakashi allowing a tear to escape from one of his eyes. At that moment, the entire room felt freezing, unlike any previous winter night in Konoha's history. The Hokage cried out, what? With horror in his eyes that few had seen since his botched attempt to kill Orochimaru years prior. He leapt over his desk, grabbed Kakashi by his Junin vest, and slammed him into the closest wall. He's dead, Hokage. Sama. It's my fault, declared Kakashi, recounting to them the events that transpired in Wave Country. The initial battle with Zabuza, followed by the second one a week later, in which Naruto gave his life to save Zabuza's apprentice, Haku, and saved the girl from being killed by the Rikiri that she planned to take on Zabuza in order to save the Demon of the Mist. Hanada's mind abruptly shut down and she fell hard to the ground, looking as though a katana sword had stabbed her in the heart. Naruto.kun. Is. Dead. She exclaimed. After two days the Hokage sighed, having just informed the village of Naruto's passing and overheard the older generation discussing a celebration that would follow. Though a little taken aback, Konoha's younger generation remained silent about the issue, and they would have if the elderly fire shadow hadn't silenced their parents. Although it didn't really matter anymore, the old cage still had one more important announcement to make that the councils would hate him for, 
so there was no chance of having Naruto buried in Konoha as he had originally intended. If they wanted to rejoice over Naruto's passing, they could do it in large quantities and realize how foolish it was for them to treat the boy badly. Before I leave you to celebrate Uzumaki Naruto's death, I have more to say concerning him that you will not like, and make you all realize how pathetic this village has become. Twelve years ago the Yandaimi defeated the Kayubi by sealing up the demon inside a child, as it was the only way to stop the Kayubi from causing total destruction, but the Yandaimi didn't choose just anyone, and the choice he made cost him dearly for his dying wish to see the boy as a hero was not honored. That boy was none other than his own son that you hated since he was born. Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto. The Sandame. Watching the crowd go into stunned silence, the council's listening were beyond shocked, and the shinobi of the village felt time freeze over them. Boss was almost like me. The man was a cage's son, Konohamaru thought, finding it hard to believe Naruto had the Kayubi and now that he knew the same boy was also the Yandaimi's son. The Yandaimi wanted his legacy to be protected, nourished, and to grow up happy in the village he gave his life for. Instead, the boy had constant attempts on his life, beatings on his own birthday, and his academic instructors saw fit in the beginning to destroy his attempt at being a shinobi with the exception of one instructor. I tried to help the boy, but you all had to ruin Naruto's life in the attempts of hurting Kayubi, or believing he was the fox in human form. So when you go out today to party, have fun, and throw another festival. Think about what you are celebrating. Kayubi's death? Or celebrating the death of the Yandaimi's son? I know which one you will be choosing, the passing of the Sandame of individuals, and the younger generation started over what they did. The kids wouldn't listen to their parents for a very long time, a protracted period. Finalize flashback. Hanada turned to her old sensei and said, I have so much to say to him. Could I do it alone Kurinai? Sensei? The woman smiled kindly and nodded in response. Kurinai remarked, of course Hanada. Your time with Naruto should be between the two of you, realizing that her pupil had come a long way since learning of Naruto's passing and that the Genjutsu mistress had occasionally worried that she would lose the Hayuga to depression. The poor Hayuga girl had barricaded herself in her room, yelling that she was lonely and threatening to use the cage bird seal to stop the branch family from entering. Even though Hinata had no intention of doing so, the threat in and of itself caused a great deal of anxiety among the branch family members as they approached the girl's room, and Haishi himself didn't do it until later. Hinata had a conversation with her father, and when she emerged from it looking like a zombie and her tears falling like waterfalls, she found herself calling her sensei to ask for assistance. Even though Kurinai had tried her hardest to console Hinata, it was insufficient, and she was forced to ask Yamanaka Inoichi for assistance. Hinata appeared unstable even during the Chunin exams. Her encounter with her cousin Neji during the preliminary round made matters worse and nearly brought the girl to tears. In the end, Neji had humiliated Hinata, called her weak, and said that Naruto was destined to perish because he was nothing despite his ancestry. This led to a terrible defeat for Hinata. But Hinata did make Neji pay for his triumph by defaming Naruto by acting in a way that no one had ever anticipated. Before collapsing, Hinata applied the cage bird seal to him, however, the damage had inflicted significant agony on Neji and demonstrated to all that she possessed some residual strength. After that, Hinata completely transformed her abilities, self, assurance, and attitude toward people who had mistreated Naruto. The invasion then arrived shortly after, that being said, that was not the only possibility. The Sandame had learned from an unidentified source during the month leading up to the Chunin exam finals that Konoha would be attacked by both Sound and Suna. The old cage was informed in great detail that this was no joke, along with the where, when, who, and why. The Sandame had initially made an unsuccessful attempt to identify the sender of this information, and Jiraiya had advised them to be ready for anything. What had hit Orochimaru was unknown to him. Even so, Konoha had sustained some serious damage, and the elderly man had lost an arm in the battle. Tsunade had to step in for him after Jiraiya persuaded him, though nobody is sure what Jiraiya said to get the slug princess to come back. Tsunade didn't particularly enjoy it, but she did ensure that Kona had changed after she took office, even though the council was trying to maintain its authority because the allied invasion had failed and the Sandame were now too weak to lead. The rumors about a man known as the Shadow Fox first surfaced about a year after Tsunade took office. He was initially ignored, but that began to change when he took on tasks that would typically be given to a group of Anbu Black Ops members in a village, and he completed them with merciless efficiency. In the next two years, the Shadow Fox limited his missions to the most perilous ones and occasionally took on missions that benefited one of the elemental countries that needed his assistance. And here was the elderly member of Team 8, having made the long walk to Tazuna's residence, 
asking for the elderly man's assistance in finding the shadow fox. The four-leaf shinobi wondered if they would receive any assistance at all, and if so, if it would be anything more than a swift kick in the ass to leave Wave Country, though, given the way the people of Wave were staring at them with a cold hate. Tazuna glared at Team 8 when he saw all four of them because he had heard about how the leaf had treated Naruto like trash despite having a demon sealed inside of him and had even gone so far as to mourn him, in order to atone for their treatment of the boy. The trade agreement that was set up between the two countries, however, required that the shinobi from each side be hosted by a former client, and this was the first and only time that they had ever done so. Tazuna took a swig from his bottle and started to get tipsy at the table. So you're seeking the shadow fox huh? Good luck, because that guy is elusive, and if you look at him the wrong way will knock you on your ass, he exclaimed. Tsunami said, Father, watch your language. Inari will be home soon and I don't want you swearing when he's around as she placed food on the table, which was now abundant because the bridge had been finished three years earlier, and filled the space with the aroma of family. At the sight of the leaf shinobi in the room, Inari halted and glared angrily at them. Mom, Grandpa, I'm home, I just finished my training today with, he said. Is this the same as what Naruto.kun experienced when residing in the leaf? I wonder how Naruto handled it, Shino thought, having never experienced such hatred toward him. With a flexed right hand, Inari asked, what are they doing here, and reached for the kanai concealed behind his back. The once feeble child of Tsunami no longer appeared to be so, in the last three years, he had grown considerably, his hair reaching his shoulders, he was dressed like a shinobi in training, and a blue cloth with purple splotches on it from what had once been crimson blood covered his right arm. The blood of Naruto. Our goal is to locate the shadow fox so that he can accompany us to Konoha, Hanada uttered observing the boy's expression grow gloomy and even growling at them. Taking his plate of food from the table, Inari remarked, like the shadow fox would ever go to Konoha. It's filled with arrogant fools that care only about themselves, and he went upstairs to eat by himself. Inari. I'm sorry. The last time he did that was when Naruto died and wanted to be left alone, Tsunami said, watching her son ascend the steps and wondering if he would ever be able to let go of the leaf. Hanada asked, do you know where Naruto? Kun's grave is, Tsunami.san. Wanting to honor the boy who had died and tell him how she felt, something she should have done a long time ago. Seeing the girl smile, Tsunami said, I do. Eat up and then I'll take you to him, and return to her meal. Fifteen minutes later at Naruto's grave, the steel used to mark Naruto's grave was a solid golden sun color that gave off a dazzling appearance when sunlight struck it during the day or at night when the moon was out. Nine gracefully crafted fox. Like tails surrounded it, signifying that Naruto was Kayubi's vessel. However, in this way, it seemed to honor him rather than make him despised, and Hanada was sure that this would have made Naruto happy in that sense. The marker itself served as a kind of eternal beacon of hope, serving as a constant reminder to everyone that we are all capable of being heroes. Hanada saw that Wave had spent a great deal of money creating a grave that would be honored as a hero's grave, and she mentally noted that Naruto would never have been able to see it in Konoha. Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto is buried here, forever Wave Country's favorite surrogate son, and a true hero. Hanada exclaimed, it's beautiful, as she fixed her gaze on the grave and then turned to face Tsunami, who was grinning at her. As Tsunami watched Hanada start to cry at her words and watched the Hayuga girl take off her leaf headband before slamming it on the ground, she said, Inari comes here to speak to Naruto. It's his way of handling the loss of the only other person aside from his surrogate father that my son ever believed was a hero. Naruto had inspired Inari to fight back against Gato, bringing hope to Wave Country when there was no hope left for us to him, and he helped us believe that we could do anything we put our minds to it. As Hanada watched Tsunami nod and then bow, she said, Can I speak to him privately? I want to do this as me and as a shinobi of the leaf, and left the Hayuga heiress to complete her mission. Before leaving, Tsunami gave Hanada a nod of understanding and told the girl to give Naruto some alone time. You should know Hayuga.san. You are not the only girl that comes here to pay their respects to Naruto, and should you meet her, do not upset her," Tsunami said. Hanada could relate because she understood the psychological toll that losing the boy who was more than just a tool to someone and the man who had raised her could take. She also read the report about how Haku buried Naruto and how, in an attempt to persuade Kakashi to accompany them to Konoha, she had threatened to break his arms. Hello Naruto.kun. It's me, Hayuga Hanada, I was in your class back at the academy and I wanted to speak to you for some time now. I was so shy back when we were kids at the academy, as I was so worried over what others thought of me back then, and you come along with all the energy in your body that could power Konoha for years. 
You took on everyone and managed to win despite your handicap in learning at the academy with all the teachers there except Uruka trying to bring you down. When I heard you had died here in wave country, my heart broke into pieces because I never got to tell you that I really really liked you Naruto.kun, and now I'm finding I can only say it with you being gone from this world. It's unfair for both of us in a way. You wanted to be loved by others despite the Kyubi sealed inside of you and I wanted to love you despite what everyone tried to do to prevent that from happening, said Hinata, as she put a hand on the grave marker, and felt the warmth it created that felt similar to Naruto when he was around her. A lovely voice behind Hinata said, you cared for him too, I see, and the Hayuga spun around, prepared to fight in her gentle fist stance. Identify yourself. Hanada exclaimed as she moved away from Naruto's grave to prevent damage in the event of a fight and noticed a woman wearing a homespun dress that flaunted her feminine form. My name is Momochi Haku. I am the adopted daughter of Momochi Zabuza, Haku introduced herself, observing Hanada slightly let down her guard. You were with Naruto.kun at the end, Hanada remarked after reading the report and completely memorizing Naruto's actions that led to the blonde's death after Sasuke was killed by Haku. Yes. At the time, I was fully prepared to die for Zabuza, but just as I had stepped in front of the attack meant to end his life, Naruto had intervened, and taken the blow instead for me. I held him in my arms crying, pleading with him not to die, and he just smiled at me with those kind blue eyes that held happiness in them for what seemed like forever. It was as if Naruto.kun had finally done something good with his life by throwing it away to save me, and I couldn't stand the fighting anymore, Haku said. She saw that expression and it was an expression that was certainly on his face had she done so for Zabuza. I adored Naruto.kun, and I continue to do so even though he is no longer with us, Hinata remarked, noticing the identical expression in Haku's eyes as she did her own, and the elder girl's soft smile. Haku watched Hinata bow and go, having said what she wanted to say, as do I enjoy your stay in wave country for as long as you were able to, she said. The dark figure, wearing a black trench coat, was now standing behind Naruto's grave, such a pure heart. She is a lot like you Haku. Chan. You two could almost be sisters, he remarked. Haku approached him and kissed his face, which was obscured by the darkness at the moment. And you would no doubt bed her like you did me not that long ago, right my shadow? Sama? She asked. The shadow fox pulled Haku in closer as he made poor Haku blush at that memory. Only if she wished it. Like you did, remember? He asked. I remember shadow. Sama, but I am concerned about so many shinobi seeking you out here, and the threat they may represent to the people if you keep declining offers the way you have been doing," Haku remarked. The Leaf had been one of several teams that had located the Shadow Fox and had attempted to win him over with the strength of their village. The cage of that village was not too happy with the outcome, as nearly every team was destroyed and the players were only shadows of their former selves when they returned to their village. It's not something you want to happen again, being on the run with Zabuza, the Shadow Fox said, drawing Haku closer to him and sensing her reaction. Haku said, but I also want you to be happy, and there is no other place we can be that will give you happiness, as she noticed the warrior in front of her grinning at her through the thick shroud of darkness, and he gave her a tender peck on the cheek. The shadow fox saw Haku look at him with wide eyes and knew that she knew what he was talking about. There is one, but it is risky, and I don't want you to be in any more danger than you have to be, he said. There, are you sure? Haku asked giving the shadow fox another kiss on his masked face as she noticed him nod. Shadow fox saw Haku close her eyes and nod in agreement. We'll give them a trial run, but if I sense any kind of betrayal, then the village will have seen its last sunrise, and all in it will perish, he said. Haku thought to herself, for some reason, the sound of shadow. Sama talking like this is, soothing, as she and the shadow fox slipped into the night and left the fallen hero's grave behind. After 8 to 20 minutes, with the team, Shino asked, did you say what you needed to say? As he watched the Hayuga heiress nod and smile at him before making her way upstairs to her designated room. Kiba, who had his own plan for lifting Hinata's spirits, exclaimed, she still looks a bit down. I'll help cheer her up further. But Shino stopped him, forcing him to face the Aburame's glare. Shino, who had full knowledge of Kiba's plans, vowed not to dishonor Naruto by allowing the Inazuka to have his way with the Hayuga heiress. If you go up there to do what it is you plan to do, I will see to it that Kurinai knows, and that today will be the last day you live your life as a man," Shino declared. Oh no. As Kiba watched his companion ascend the stairs to console Hinata, he heard Akamaru bark in agreement. The dog's intentions were good, unlike Kiba's, and he just wanted to give the girl the comfort she needed. However, as soon as that occurred, Kurinai entered the house and gave everyone a scared look. 
Kuranai heard Akamaru running down the stairs and Hinata following closely behind the dog. Team 8 mobilize. There are a group of shinobi attacking the people in Wave Country, Kuranai exclaimed. Are they from a village or are these missing nin? Shino asked, fearing that this would escalate tensions and spark a conflict with a village that wasn't already at war. Kuranai saw her team nod and said, unknown, but if we ignore them, then the people in Wave Country will suffer, and we can't let that happen. They then hurriedly left the house to repel this enemy. During the battle, with a pang, Inari covered his wound from one of the shinobi he was fighting, who, based on the headbands, had come from Kumo and was also looking for the shadow fox. One of the more irascible Kumo shinobi lost patience and started attacking everyone he saw while calling out for the shadow fox to come out and fight him. This happened when no one responded to him. Big brother says I've gotten stronger, but I'm still young and have a long way to go before I reach his level, Inari thought to himself as he used the kanai he was holding to block a blow and battled to avoid being overwhelmed by the older, more powerful shinobi in front of him. The Kumo shinobi, who was more composed than some of his group and, based on the vest, appeared to be a junin, remarked, you're pretty strong for your age kid. This village doesn't have a shinobi village much less people that are shinobi here. As the Kumo shinobi pushed him back, Inari yelled, none of your business, that's who. This is my home and I'm going to defend it with my life. He then threw his kanai at his opponent and used hand gestures to multiply his one kanai into many. The Kumo shinobi did not anticipate that someone so young would learn such a skill, and as a result, the now dozen of kanais ultimately brought the Kumo junin to his knees. The throws were accurate and precise. Although the junin attempted to move aside, the explosive tag that Inari had thrown in the direction of the junin's attempted escape made him realize he was in danger before death claimed him. This was shortly after the junin used the jutsu. Having killed Kumo Shinobi, which had been one of his few early kills, Inari turned his head away, knowing that this would not be his last. Another Kumo Shinobi saw his friend die and vowed to repay the favor, exclaiming, Die brat. The Kumo Shinobi was about to be killed when Hinata stopped the attack and struck him in the heart with a gentle fist. Hinata turned back to Inari and started healing him. Despite being a leaf shinobi, the boy wasn't going to be upset with her because she had saved him. The wound isn't deep, but don't move for a few minutes, and recover your energy. Who did teach you how to fight anyway? Hanada asked, observing Inari turn away before turning to face her and expressing her obvious surprise at his fighting prowess. My knee dot san. He taught me everything I know about being a shinobi, Inari remarked, watching as Hanada gave him a perplexed look before turning to face the other Konoha shinobi engaged in combat with the sizable Kumo group. After using his bugs to take out several shinobi, Shino remarked, Kuranai. Sensei, we are outnumbered, and we cannot win despite our skills, while Kiba used Akamaru's assistance to take out one shinobi. He is correct. Kuranai, wondering how they were going to escape alive and return to the Hokage, thought, it's obvious this group of Kumo shinobi were meant to talk and then show force to draw out the shadow fox. With both girls trembling at the idea, the group leader yelled, forget the shadow fox. Knock out those two bitches from the leaf to take back to the rakage for breeding while pointing to Kuranai and Hinata. The group turned after sensing a strong chakra signature and saw the shadow fox standing on the rooftop above. I can't allow that, a deep, dark voice said. The man had a bloody mouth shaped like a fox's and his hands appeared to be partially clawed like an Inazuka. He was dressed in all black, from his boots to his trench coat and mask. His hair was a combination of fiery crimson red and blonde that had been bleached by the sun, falling to just past his shoulders. Even though the man wasn't even attempting to generate chakra out of his body, his level of energy was so great from where he was that he made Shino and Akamaru nervous. At the same time, though, he exuded a calm aura that made everyone outside of Wave Country afraid of him. He appeared to have no eyes at all, but when he glanced in your direction, you had the impression that the Shadow Fox was examining your soul to determine whether you were worthy enough to be in his company. Shadow Fox sir, we come from Kumo at the behest of our rakage to recruit you to our village, and offer you the chance to work with the strongest village in all the elemental countries," the group leader said, presenting the shadow fox with a scroll to read before he vanished and reappeared in front of him. The shadow fox saw the Kumo shinobi scowl at that piece of information being discovered and that this thing before him had learned of what the rakage wanted to do. You expect me to join Kumo because of this offer? What I see here is nothing more than a hollow promise, with your rakage wishing to know everything about me and then having a mark placed on me to show my loyalty. A mark that is not surprisingly very familiar to the seal you have on one knee Yugito, your nibi vessel in Kumo, and he uses to discipline her when he thinks she's acting too. Independent, said the shadow fox. 
The Kumo Shinobi, seeing his men prepare for battle, said, then let's put it this way then. You either come with us or we make you come with us by force. What's it going to be? He was sure that this creature would do the right thing by giving up. But when the shadow fox got his hand inside the Kumo Shinobi's chest and tore it out in front of everyone, the group leader's confidence died with him. The other Kumo Shinobi instantly flocked to the shadow fox as if they were moths to a flame, but before they could even attempt a blow, the shadow fox's hand held a shadowy sword that materialized out of nowhere and vanished just as quickly as it had appeared. A few of the non attacking Kumo Shinobi started to run away, but they were killed before they could get 15 feet because they were sliced down by successive waves of Senbon needles. Team 8 searched for Haku, who was wearing the same mask and outfit from all those years ago, holding Senbon needles ready to be thrown. The Shadow Fox said, Thank you for the assistance, my Ice Queen, ignoring the looks from Team 8 and their sensei because she was typically called for other purposes. Haku stood by his side and said, Anytime, Shadow. Sama, as she watched him signal for Team 8 to approach. Kuranai handed the scroll to the Shadow Fox, trying not to shiver in fear, but failing when one of his fingers touched her. Like Kumo, we're here to recruit you to our village, but the difference is we're here to only talk to you, and give you this scroll to show our attentions, she said. Look at the scroll. The Shadow Fox unfurled it, read it aloud, and then let out a deep, frustrated growl that unnerved Team 8. They had no idea what was in the scroll because the Hokage and her predecessor had given it to the Shadow Fox to read with just his eyes. The Shadow Fox, seeing that the Hokage was pleading with him to intervene in order to put an end to the war the leaf had started, exclaimed, Your Hokage and her predecessor are so foolish. Even after all they have done to keep the councils under control, the village is being run by arrogant Bakas, and made war with almost every single major village, he was prepared to pay a hefty amount for his assistance. The reason behind Suna's allied invasion with sound caused many things to change, and the late Kei's Cage's youngest took over as the new Kei's Cage of Suna since he was the most powerful shinobi in his village. We know. Hokage. Sama has been under a lot of pressure by the councils, but has been able to work out another alliance with Suna, and they have been able to assist us on a few occasions, Kurinai said. The Shadow Fox questioned, do they still spoil the Uchiha? Since he was aware of how much the boy was spoiled and it sickened him. Shino responded, telling their host not to do anything drastic to provoke Sasuke, yes. Even after his attempted defection, they are convinced that Sasuke will be able to help Konoha become stronger, and there is even talk of possibly making him Tsunade's successor in few more years. Shino was clearly terrified. As he had Haku read the entire scroll, the Shadow Fox asked, and you wonder why so many people hate Konoha so much, what do you think Ice Queen, should we visit Konoha? Haku gave him a long look before nodding. Haku nodded and rolled up the scroll before hurling it at Kurinai. Yes, if only for a little while, she said. The Shadow Fox saw Team 8 nod, said, Tell your Hokage, I will enter Konoha within the week, and not a day sooner. Additionally, tell her to make sure the councils are there, as I have a few things to say to them, and that we will speak of things concerning Konoha shortly upon my arrival, and headed back to report to the Hokage. Looking up at the Shadow Fox, Inari asked, Do you really have to go back there, big brother? The man ruffled the other man's hair. The shadow fox turned to face Haku, who nodded when he turned to face her, giving her a silent warning to watch herself when she was with him. It can't be helped. Not to mention a certain organization is still causing problems and needs to be dealt with accordingly. For that, I will need Konoha's help, and they are the only village I can. Somewhat trust, he said, looking to Haku. Without saying anything more, a rectangular wall of ice appeared for the two to enter. Konoha. After a few days, Tsunade let out a heavy sigh, feeling anxious about the Shadow Fox's visit and the topic of his conversation with her. The last thing they needed was for the Shadow Fox to decide to change his mind, so she informed the councils and forbidden them from telling anyone else. All they could think of was how to get the Shadow Fox to train the Uchiha in order to give Konoha even more power. Tell me again why I took this job, Shizune? Tsunade asked, glancing at her assistant and noticing the sorrowful expression in her eyes. Because of what Jiraiya told you, Shizun remarked, recalling the meeting and the tidings of Tsunade's past involvement with Naruto vividly. As soon as Tsunade saw her sensei enter, she said, Remind me to pound that super pervert into slime the next time he shows up, grinning and thanking Kami for taking care of the paperwork. It was enough for him to deal with his furious grandson for the time being. How's my old job? The Sandame asked, seeing Tsunade frown at him. The old cage felt that his former student would hurt him if he weren't in his current condition. Being even more tired than before, 
Tsunade sighed once more and sank back in her chair. Being a pain in my ass since you gave it to me, she uttered. The old Sandam said, that in the Uchiha is still demanding that every single Junin in Konoha train him in all their jutsus, because he had ensured that Tsunade had instructed all Junins to refuse that request unless she alone approved of it and to report the Uchiha right away should he attempt anything. She was still upset about his botched attempt to flee the village, so when the team went looking for Sasuke, they assumed he was gone, but they ended up finding him in the Valley of the End. When they arrived, however, they discovered something strange. Instead of standing there on his own two feet, the last Uchiha was lying on the ground, bleeding, his body broken, and there was a note written on his back that read, Yubaka's Omi, and was signed SF. Never one to pass up the chance to reclaim Sasuke, Jiraiya examined the seal around the boy's neck as he did so. Or rather, what was salvaged from it? It turns out that the boy's body had the cursed seal of heaven completely destroyed, and in its place was some sort of mark that, if Jiraiya's understanding of seals was accurate, would prevent the Uchiha from receiving a new cursed seal. The council sent three platoons of Anbu to patrol the area surrounding Konoha in order to ensure that there was no demon present, as the mark had been perplexing Jiraiya for some time due to its non- human appearance and almost demonic appearance. Nothing was discovered by them. A Chunin ran into the room, shouting, Hokage! Sama! Hokage! Sama! Someone is at the gate claiming to be the Shadow Fox, because he had been told to inform the Hokage. Tsunade said, let him pass, do not attack or provoke him in any way, realizing that the Bakas in this village detested foxes and that the fact that his title included the animal might incite some unrest. Should she pass too? He's with someone else too. A woman wearing a hunter nin mask that appears to be of a customized design. The Chunin said, observing the woman glare at him for his ignorance. Tsunade yelled, yes, let them through or else he'll leave, and flung a paperweight at the Chunin who was fleeing the room while babbling about inept shinobi. The retired Sandame declared, it's finally time, as she watched Tsunade get up from her chair, put on her hat and Hokage robes, and leave her office to meet the Shadow Fox. The streets of Konoha, as they strolled through the village's streets and realized that not much had changed, people parted ways for the Shadow Fox and his masked acquaintance. The parents dragged their kids away, and the shinobi were tense and prepared to fight if something went wrong. The Shadow Fox nodded silently to Haku, who kept her senses alert for anything amiss. Nothing has changed. They are still full of themselves. They seal away Kayubi into a child and they think they are favored by Kami. This village needs a wake-up call, the Shadow Fox said. Shadow Fox! exclaimed Tsunade as she materialized alongside twelve Enbu dressed in full combat gear, the Sandame in tow, prepared to battle despite his disability. Seeing Tsunade frown at him, the Shadow Fox said, Yes, you must be the slightly younger Hokage that was recruited to replace the older one, right? He was relieved that his mask concealed his smile. Caution, Shadow Fox. Despite your strength, you cannot defeat a Sanin in a cage in a single village, Tsunade remarked, watching as the Shadow Fox merely chuckled at her remarks and appeared to be making fun of her even more. Tsunade became tense, and Jiraiya emerged from his hiding place to glare at the mysterious shinobi. You have such faith in your Sanin, when all it takes to defeat him is a simple henge into a naked woman, and let's not get started on you with your fear of blood, exclaimed the Shadow Fox. Tsunade said, let's talk inside with the councils, we can discuss your contract that is prepared for you to sign. Observing the man twitch his head a little before nodding once and having Haku follow closely behind. There's something that feels familiar about him. The way Haku was acting around him and the fact that his hair resembled Naruto. Kuns made me try to use my Byakugan to see, but I was unable to pierce the mask. Is that possible? Is that him? Watching the Shadow Fox make his way to the Hokage Tower, Hanada couldn't help but think of him and wish she could call him by the name she would hear so many times in her dreams. Hokage Tower After 10 minutes, Tsunade, seeing the Shadow Fox standing with Haku still masked beside him, said, Everyone, I brought this meeting together to announce to you that the Shadow Fox has agreed to listen to our proposal in regards to possibly recruiting him to our village. The members of the Civilian Council wanted to know who this person was so they could sell it to the highest bidder and make Konoha the only safe place for the Shadow Fox to go. Hokage. Sama. I must insist that the Shadow Fox remove his mask to reveal to us his true identity, and that of his female associate. It is unfair that he comes to this village and does not remove his mask. It shows a certain level of disrespect, one of them said. I refuse, the Shadow Fox declared, watching the councilman sputter in dismay and appear as though he was about to utter some words that would bring Konoha to an end. 
Danzo ordered a couple dozen root Anbu to take the man and convert him to his root program in order to help overthrow Tsunade. You are in no position to refuse a shadow fox. Show us your real identity or you will pay the consequences for it, Danzo said. Oh, but I think I am in such a position you crippled fool. You really think I'm afraid of all the people in this room? Most of you have never even been in a battle much less knee deep in war. You civilian council members think you can boss me around simply because you think your position makes you better than those that you are supposed to represent here. You try to run things in the village that none of you have experience in and those that do are using outdated methods that are meant to support their own means," said the shadow, as he observed the shinobi council and the civilian council raising their voices in disapproval. Tsunade cried out, silence, ending the council's squabbling. The shadow fox remained composed, and the clan heads were the only ones who remained silent. Glowering at the shadow fox and then Haku, though it had no effect on either, Homura exclaimed, Hokage. Sama, this so, called legend is just a disrespectful punk in my eyes and should be taught a lesson in manners. Like you did the son of the Yandaimi? The shadow fox asked, observing the Hokage and clan heads wince while the other half did very little to help. What we did was necessary. What happened if the demon sealed inside the boy got out? We needed the boy under our control and beating him into submission was the only way, regardless of his heritage, declared the Haruno councilwoman. She had attempted to garner support for allowing the councils to seize the Namikaze assets, but each time they attempted, they were thwarted by unique account seals on the bank records, and only a yandaimi could open the Namikaze estates. The Shadow Fox observed the clan heads pale at that and realized their child could have been chosen had Kayubi arrived sooner or later. I'm sure the clan heads here will feel better knowing if that happens to their clan, the child will be in safe hands, and the dead members of the clan can rest in peace in the afterlife knowing that their legacy is going to be beaten constantly within an inch of his or her life, the Shadow Fox said. The clan heads remained silent as one member of the civilian council exclaimed, This is getting us nowhere. I say we interrogate these two and possibly use them for breeding stock, with support from those around him. The shadow fox said, How about I kill everyone in this room and then all their children, after noticing that everyone had stopped talking for two seconds and was staring at him fearfully. The Haruno councilman exclaimed, You wouldn't dare, as he observed the shadow fox cock his head slightly to the right before returning it to its original position. As he watched everyone remain silent and waited for Tsunade to step in and take the much needed leadership in this situation, the shadow fox said, I would, but then again my words may not be enough, care to try your luck anyway? The girl next to the shadow fox appeared to be whispering something to him so softly that even Inazuka Sume couldn't hear it. Tsunade said, I know you have done an incredible job in hiding your true identity from everyone in the elemental countries, but I do feel that we should know your identity for the village's safety and that of our shinobi you will be working with. The shadow fox laughed so hard that it sent shivers down everyone's spine. Very well, but if I do this, I want it done so the whole village knows through a series of matches, and so I can give them the surprise of a lifetime, he said, leaving with Haku through an ice mirror that left many gaping. Stadium Chunin exam, 10 minutes later, Haku warned Shadow. Sama, be careful, I sense there are other shinobi here that will strike without the word of the Hokage to command them. She didn't want the man to be flanked by these other shinobi. Three of the strongest Junin in the village stood in front of him, and the shadow fox saw her nod her head and move away from him. Yes, I know. Deal with them cautiously while I'm fighting, he said. I am Jiraiya, the appointed referee for this match, and I will be watching the shadow fox at the same time. The first match will be against Meida Gai in Taijutsu. Will the other two Junin move away to give them room to fight? Jiraiya asked. Gai extended his hand for the man to shake and said, Yash, I wish you good fortune in battle Shadow Fox and hope you are truly youthful in this fight. The Shadow Fox did not return the favor. As Maida Guy assumed his taijutsu stance and the Shadow Fox stood there anticipating an attack on him, Jiraiya exclaimed, Okay. Ready? Begin. The Shadow Fox saw Maida Guy take the bait and he moved quickly to answer the challenge, saying, The first move is yours Maida Guy. Show me what you've got. Even though Guy was possibly the fastest Junin in the village, it was obvious that the shadow fox was quicker because he moved so quickly that he projected moving images of himself, shocking everyone by failing to hit the man even once. After trying a few combos to get a sense of the shadow fox's fighting style, Guy quickly lost interest in it as the shadow fox delivered a forceful backhand to the chest followed by a powerful kick to the stomach that knocked Guy back a little more than 20 feet. He easily defeated Guy, Sensei without exerting much effort, 
as he watched his sensei stand up and remove his weights to demonstrate his seriousness, Li thought to himself. Since you are one of the few people I have fought who requires me to be more youthful in battle, Shadow Fox. Your skills in Taijutsu are impressive. Now you will face me without restraint so if you wish to stop now, then tell me, and we will stop fighting, Guy said, not wanting to injure the man if he wasn't capable of handling fighting at this level or somehow cripple the Shadow Fox. The Shadow Fox gestured for Guy to approach him, and the man did so even more quickly than before. As I told you before, Guy San. Show me what you've got, the Shadow Fox exclaimed. Most people couldn't see Maida Guy's speed unless they were able to see his bloodline limit or had skills that were higher than his. The Shadow Fox was clearly the stronger of the two fighters in this instance because his afterimages appeared more substantial, but he was still moving faster than Guy. The green beast of Konoha was sent skidding back 15 feet with a dash behind the man and a spin kick to the head. Enough! The winner is the Shadow Fox! exclaimed Jiraiya, drawing jeers from the surrounding crowd and accusations that the Shadow Fox was a liar. The Shadow Fox cried, if this is the best Konoha Junin have to offer, then this village is in serious trouble, and my fee may have to be doubled. Observing the shocked expressions on the council members and the Hokage's faces, he knew that any fee they had not yet arranged could be doubled if he requested it. Hitaki Kakashi will now put the Shadow Fox to the test in ninjutsu, Jiraiya declared, watching Kakashi rise to the occasion and prepare to use his Sharingan in battle against the Shadow Fox. The Shadow Fox watched the Junin narrow his natural eye at him and said, you should really put that away. Your eye won't help you in this fight Hitaki, preparing to use the other eye in spite of the warning. Jiraiya exclaimed, ready, begin, as he watched Kakashi use hand signals and unleashed a mud dragon at the shadow fox, who was now leaping into the air and hovering there with a mini tornado beneath him to keep him alive. This surprised everyone because it required a great deal of mastery over that element to do such a thing. The shadow fox exclaimed, water style, great tidal wave jutsu, as he passed through hand signals hidden beneath his trench coat. Then, he used the pipes beneath Konoha that ran beneath the stadium to create a massive tidal wave of water that sent the shocked Junin flying into the adjacent wall. Something like the Chidori that the Shadow Fox was holding in his hand, which he reportedly referred to as a lightning bomb, before dropping it, shocked everyone even more. The lightning bomb exploded when it struck the water, sending a strong wave of lightning ripping through Kakashi's body and causing him excruciating pain. That strike resembled either a full fledged Rikiri or a modified version of Maichidori. Perhaps if I ask nicely, he'll teach me that, Kakashi thought to himself as he struggled to stand up and noticed that the surrounding area was still submerged in water. Afterward, he discovered that he was in water prison jutsu, created by a shadow fox shadow clone. How is the shadow clone jutsu known to him? Everyone thought as they watched the original shadow fox turn to face Jiraiya, who announced the shadow fox as the winner and received more jeers from the audience. Jiraiya announced, Last up is Yuhi Kuranai, who will be testing the Shadow Fox in Genjutsu and testing the man's skills in resisting it. Kuranai approached to take part in the test, and the Shadow Fox nodded briefly to begin the fight. Demonic Illusion Tree Binding Death, declared Kuranai, entangling him in her delusion, before advancing behind him and striking his neck with a kanai. The Shadow Fox said, Impressive, but not enough to defeat me. Shadow Illusion Realm of Darkness and Demon Eyes As his body disappeared from the tree, to which he was bound. Kuranai then found herself in complete darkness, with a single red, crimson eye peering out at her with a piercing stare. All I can see are these eyes, though, Kuranai, her heart pounding, wondered how much more she could bear. It's like I'm blind to everything all around me that I know, she thought. The shadow fox asked, do you yield? Because he didn't want to cause the woman any more suffering than necessary after noticing through the darkness that she was beginning to become anxious. Kuranai exclaimed, Yes, as she felt the genjutsu end moments after giving up and saw the shadow fox ignoring her as if nothing had happened. The shadow fox is the winner, exclaimed Jiraiya, wondering how this man could bend shadows more skillfully than any member of the Nara clan and wondering what had become of the girl who had been with the mysterious shinobi before she had appeared next to him via an ice mirror. Haku whispered to the shadow fox, all of them are neutralized, and the fox nodded in comprehension. Tsunade, accompanied by her assistant Shizune, said, Shadow Fox, you have passed all the tests before us, but now upon our agreement you have to reveal to us your name, and your identity to us, and they waited for the fox shadow to take off his mask. He remained motionless. Haku turned to face him and said, Shadow, Sama, at which point she burst out laughing as though she were telling him a joke. When he began laughing, Tsunade tensed, 
as did the other shinobi in the stadium. What's wrong? Aren't you going to tell us who you are? She asked. The shadow fox reached up to touch his mask and with little to no effort, removed it from his face. You misunderstand my laughing Senju Tsunade, as I am already known beyond this mask by another name within Konoha, and it's been so long since I've used it that even I have nearly forgotten my real name, the fox said. What? Who is this guy? We would know if he is from Konoha. Tsunade thought as she watched the shadow fox's mask gradually pull away from the man's face. The sanin turned Hokage gasp to see Jiraiya's pale, ghostly face behind the mask. There was only one person with that face, those prominent whisker marks, and that smile, and many believed them to be long dead. Naruto announced, my name is Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, as he witnessed the stunned looks on the faces of those around him and the fainting of a certain Hyuga heiress in the stands following a happy squeal. Now that Naruto was back home, the question was whether his family wanted him or still wanted to kill him. The people's reactions to learning that Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto was the shadow fox were described as being astounded, shocked, stupefied, and any other word in the dictionary. Believed to have died in wave country, taking the Kyubi with him and wiping out the Yandaimi family lineage forever. What's wrong? You really didn't think the Kyubi would let me die back in wave, did you? Asked Naruto, noticing his shocked grandson Konohamaru as well as the shocked expressions on the faces of Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Sandame in the stands. Tsunade exclaimed, you're alive. You're alive. As she saw the boy who was her godson and reached out to touch his face to confirm that it was genuine. She was halted, though, when the attractive Yandaimi impersonator's sly expression quickly changed to a scowl, his blue eyes turning scarlet, and a deep growl emerged from his throat. As soon as 20 Root Anbu appeared prepared to fight with Danzo standing next to him, Haku immediately armed herself with Senban needles and got ready to fight. Danzo's private security force, was approaching to apprehend Naruto and bring him to their master's covert Ru training facility. Namikaze Naruto, I am placing you under civilian arrest on the grounds of deserting your village, and I am going to move for your immediate execution after successfully breeding a child for the village, Danzo declared. Naruto growled even louder, his eyes glimmering with crimson fury and his teeth showing more clearly. You are making a big mistake, he exclaimed. Tsunade exclaimed, Danzo, I order you to stand down, and tell your private army to back off. She had a lot to make up for, and she was not going to let this old warhawk throw away her godson, who had just returned into her life. Naruto saw Danzo frown at him and motion for his root Anbu to advance. Some things never change around here. You want my head Danzo, why don't you be the strong leader you claim you are, and do it yourself? Naruto said. Danzo said, don't forget about the woman. Her bloodline limit is similar to the Nidime's own and we can have Uchiha Sasuke's sire a perfect combination of shinobi out of it. Observing Naruto's expression turned to one of extreme rage and the girl standing next to him displaying an equally high level of murderous intent. Naruto exclaimed, I warned you, as dark, shadowy energy tendrils emerged from beneath him, shooting at each enemy, and striking one root anbu after another, the tendrils slicing through each body they stabbed. You monster! Danzo exclaimed, watching as the tendrils shot out of their bodies and exploded his root anbu, aimed directly at Danzo. Naruto yelled, you should have known better and my fee regarding Konoha? I've decided not to double it like I originally thought. No, I'm going to ask for triple the amount, as deadly chakra was shot into each of Danzo's three limbs by each tendril of shadowy energy. Danzo cried out in pain as another tendril struck him in the chest, and his other limbs went dark before turning to dust. What are you doing to me? He exclaimed. Killing you. No more. No less, Naruto uttered as he witnessed Danzo's face turn a dark shade of black before dispersing into the wind and becoming dust. Jiraiya asked Haku after Naruto failed to respond, asking himself, what the hell was that? As she watched Naruto calm down and turn to face her with sorrowful eyes, Haku uttered the words, it's called, Shadow's Death Grip, and it destroys the body along with the soul so there is no way to save the person struck by Naruto. Kun's power. Naruto said, I hate doing that in front of you, because he didn't want Haku to see this side of him or remember the person he had turned into during their duel. Haku said, it's all right, Naruto.kun, taking off her mask to demonstrate her sincerity. Tsunade said, let's have another talk, but this time in private in my office, as she watched Naruto nod and go with Haku to the tower after following the Hokage. The other rookies in the stands trailed behind with their senseis because they were all eager to speak with Naruto and get some clarification from him. Office of the Hokage, the Sandame said, I'm glad you're back, Naruto. I missed you greatly, 
knowing Konohamaru would also be happy, he had missed his surrogate grandson. The three people in front of Naruto winced at that, sharing a common guilt, and I you old man. However, I do not miss Konoha, and I think you know the reasons why outside of the fox being one of them, Naruto remarked. The retired Sandame began, Naruto, what happened to you when you were younger was mostly my fault, and believe me when I say that I tried to. But Naruto interrupted, clenching his fists with unimaginable rage. You did and tried nothing, tell me old man, how would feel if it was your grandson that got beat up on his birthday, or forced to eat rotten food from dumpsters because the store owners didn't want their shops, tainted, by his presence? Perhaps I should take one of the youngest of the Hyuga clan's main family members to Kumo and see how they treat that poor child. What do you think will happen old man? Perhaps we should try some kind of social experiment and try it out. Only I think Kumo will not be so tough on the child like I originally thought, but I think he will be if they think it will stick it to the leaf, and make them feel better because it, said Naruto, as he saw the panic look in the retired Hokage's eyes. The Sandame said, Naruto, you have to understand that your father's dying wish had to be honored, and. But Naruto's irate expression silenced him once more. Pointing to the other two beside the elderly man, Naruto said, My father wanted me to be seen as a hero, but that didn't mean it had to be for holding the Kyubi now did it? Hell, you didn't even have to tell the councils anything, but you did anyway, and look what happened. You think, I'm going to simply walk back into this village, and ignore the misery they gave me for the first 12 years of my life? 12 years of pain that shouldn't have even happened, but did thanks to your stupidity, and their own negligence in raising me," said Naruto, pointing to the other two. Almost all of them, that is. Naruto, it's not that we didn't want to look after you, it's just that we. Ah! Uh, Jiraiya exclaimed as he felt a shadow tendril emerge from behind him and encircle his neck, with another one encircling Tsunade to keep her from assisting him. As he watched Jiraiya attempt to escape the shadow that was encircling his neck and Tsunade struggled to free herself using her superhuman strength, Naruto exclaimed, You were what? In pain? Suffering over the loss someone you cared about? Or did the fact that I held the Kyubi inside of me have something to do with it my oh so loving godparents? Hiruzen, not wanting to see the boy like this, said, Naruto, please release them. They are sorry for neglecting their responsibilities and wish to make it up to you. The boy didn't seem to hear him until Haku put a hand on his shoulder and whispered something in his ear. Retraction of the shadow power to his form, fine, you want to make it up to me? I'll tell you how, was Naruto's way of releasing his godparents. At the rear of the Hokage's office, Konohamaru exclaimed, what are they saying, what are they saying, and the other rookies wished they could hear what was being said as well. Shut up, kid, it's hard to tell because of you asking that question, from what I can tell, they seemed to be arguing a few seconds ago, and now they stopped talking, Kiba yelled, pressing his ear to the door to listen for any more words that Naruto might have said. Ino exclaimed, I can't believe Naruto is alive and that he's the infamous Shadow Fox, with a fangirl's squeal and hearts in her eyes. Tenten remarked, I'm kind of curious in how Naruto made that sword that you saw him make Hinata. Naruto, the Shadow Fox, had been told to make a sword out of nothing more complex than Shadow, similar to Chakra and Tenten was keen to learn any sword skills he might have. Hanada was obviously not thinking straight at the moment because she had a distant expression on her face and was obviously dreaming about Naruto based on the blush. He's very attractive, so powerful, need to fall in love with Naruto.kun, it's my crush turned love interest, Hanada thought to herself as she used her Baikugan, and she laughed in a way that made people laugh. Ino asked, knowing that look anywhere, someone likes what she sees, how big is he? wanting details to get around Konoha. Luckily, or unfortunately, depending on your point of view, the door opened before Hinata could respond, and the object of the Hyuga heiress's desires left with Haku. He passed by them all without a look, but when he stopped in front of Hinata, her face turned even redder. Naruto leaned in close to her, whispered something in her ear, and then turned to leave as the Hyuga heiress's eyes grew wide and she fell to the ground grinning. Hinata. Chan, come see me at the Namikaze estates in a few hours. I wish to speak with you." The words echoed in her mind like wedding bells, and she felt inner Hinata urging her to return home and prepare herself so that she could meet Naruto. Beyond the tower of the Hokage, Konohamaru yelled, Boss, boss wait up, as he pursued the shadow fox and passed him. Naruto asked, Konohamaru, what do I owe the pleasure of the Sandame's grandson? Noting the boy's hurt expression and frown. Konohamaru, hoping that Naruto had not changed too much, said, Come on boss, you know how I feel about being called that, and I'm not like the others that hated you. How could I? You saw me as just me just as I saw you as you, 
Can't we still continue to be friends like we were before? He saw the notorious Shadow Fox pause in thought before nodding his head. Naruto stroked Konohamaru's hair and grinned at the boy, observing how much the child had grown. Sure kid. You do make a good argument when you put it like that. In a way, I'm glad to be back if only to see one of the few people I can trust, and call a friend, Naruto said. He was no longer the whiny child who would try to hurt his grandfather only to trip over his own feet and then blame someone else for tripping him. This one was trying to become a true shinobi like Naruto was at the moment, so he was training hard and learning everything he could. After discovering the truth about Naruto's two greatest secrets, Konohamaru lost it and yelled at the Sandane, calling him a coward for failing to better protect Naruto as the Yandaimi had requested. The young child completely disregarded his grandfather after that. Instead of being trained by Ebisu, the child looked for another person who was knowledgeable about teaching outside of the elite, Junin and discovered Amino Uruka, an academy teacher. In the three years since Naruto's death, Uruka had undergone a radical transformation. He started teaching the full scope of being a shinobi, not just the historical side, and he received a lot of complaints from parents. Uruka informed the parents of those civilian children who aspired to greatness that being a shinobi required hard work and that if their children couldn't handle the harsh reality, they could drop out. Uruka felt that his shinobi training had been slipping away, so he started to work out more to strengthen his position. The man was even thinking about applying for the Junin exam in order to move up in rank. Regarding his student, the grandson of the Sandame was now the best in his class in every way, even crowned the future rookie of the year but Konohamaru had disregarded the title and persisted in his efforts to become stronger. The Sandame would sometimes try to talk to his grandson, but the boy would simply ignore him and would only talk to his uncle Asuma occasionally. Konohamaru had a reason to be genuinely happy now that Naruto had returned, and he was going to show that he was more than just the Sandame's grandson. Naruto. When Kakashi noticed the glare Naruto was giving him while he was standing in front of his former pupil, he spoke. Hi there. Hitaki.san. Still moaning in private about the passing of longtime friends, as Naruto noticed Kakashi avert his gaze, he couldn't help but feel guilty despite his mask. Kakashi saw Naruto sneer at him and flex his clawed hands. Naruto, I know I wasn't the best teacher to you, but I did intend to further your training when we got back from Wave Country, and teach to be a proper shinobi, Kakashi said. You mean the one who sneaks around training the Uchiha in his free time or shows up late to team meetings? Naruto observed Kakashi's eye widen and appear slightly anxious at that moment. You were aware? I saw Naruto nod and then laugh sharply, making the Cyclops Junin appear a little scared, exclaimed Kakashi. Who, in your opinion, prevented Sasuke from departing? The sole real reason the prodigy idiot is unaware of his embarrassing loss is because I erased his memory, but not before I used a small shadow chakra to probe his brain for memories. I was shocked to find that even after you had mourned for a mere day and returned from informing everyone that I had passed away, you were still attempting to train Sasuke and finding time to read your stupid orange book. Showing shame, Naruto saw Kakashi turn away, and he heard Konohamaru and the other rookies behind him gasp. Kakashi said, we all have ways of handling the death of friends Naruto, but even he knew that was the worst lie he had ever told, making all of his other excuses for being late seem plausible. Naruto was aware of this as well. If it had been Sasuke, you would have spent weeks grieving his passing and would have given up on training team 7 for a considerable amount of time. What distinguishes Sasuke's life from mine, Hitaki, especially with me being the son of your sensei? You obviously didn't notice that when you were staring at me, did you? You were only able to endure my torment because you saw me as the resurrected Kayubi, who bore a striking resemblance to my father. Correct, Hitaki? Yes. Answer me, you deceptive leaf shit party? as his body's chakra sharply increased. Naruto uttered these words, and the Junin turned away, unable to respond. He doesn't have to, because you're right, Naruto, the Sandame remarked, appearing to be a weary old man with a heavy expression on his face and a sigh. Old man, how would you know? Konohamaru gave his grandfather a glare and made the man wince. I put him in charge of Naruto with the intention of making Kakashi realize that the young man wasn't the monster that everyone had made him out to be. Unbelievably, Yuhi Kuranai knew the boy could help Hinata and possibly develop a bond with Shino, so she wanted him on her team. I informed her that it was not possible because, in my opinion, Kakashi would be a better fit for the position given the identity of his sensei. Sandame felt Naruto's enraged gaze now aimed at him, the crimson eyes glowing with power. Kuranai tried to protest, telling me how I was making a mistake like I had made so many with the boy, and it was only the threat of a demotion to Chunin did she back off, the Sandame said.
So you're saying that even though I could have had a great start with a team, you put me on a team that didn't like me right away and that my sensei didn't like me either? You really are a moron for someone who is meant to be the professor. Do you really think that once people see me, their hatred of me will go away? People hurt me when they saw me back because they believed me to be a demon, even though you knew that from the beginning. Naruto exclaimed as he observed Kakashi and the Sandame turn away. However, you can now receive the respect you are due since everyone is aware that you are the Yandaimi's son. Sakura spoke up, as her mother had advised her to get to know Naruto right away and perhaps wed into his family in order to benefit from the enormous wealth that clan possessed. Naruto merely heard his vile laugh once more before he glared at the rookies through glowing red eyes that resembled the Kayubis. You stupid, stupid baka of a fangirl for Uchiha. You believe that just because I am the son of the Yandaimi, I should now be treated with respect? That is equivalent to saying that Sasuke is the last devoted Uchiha to the leaf, so you should just fall in love with him. How does that mean to me, do you know, that it's all garbage? People couldn't stand me when I was an unnamed orphan, but now that I have all this supposed power, I'm a valuable asset to have around, and losing it would mean the village would perish. You are all frantically trying to make up for your past transgressions and save face Sakura because of my clan heritage. How utterly pitiful you seem to me at this moment. Haku, hurry up. Naruto remarked, I'm tired and I need to rest at my new home. I saw that my old apartment had been demolished and replaced with a fancy new one. In an instant, Naruto decided in his mind to set it on fire as a protest of his lack of appreciation for this village. Fifteen minutes later, Namikaze Estates. The Namikaze Estate wasn't too far from the Hyuga compound, but it was well. Defended should the need to defend those who lived there arise. It felt good to use his blood to unlock his inherited home, even though it was dusty from being neglected for more than ten years. The original Naruto concentrated on the bed that begged him to sleep in it. Naruto.kun, are you truly that tired? Hiku said, observing his worn dot out expression and the way he simply nodded while taking off his clothes to allow himself to fall onto the plush mattress before nodding off entirely. Hiku had hoped that with her by his side, it would heal, but after seeing him today, she realized that she would need help from those that cared about him and that she would see Naruto as Naruto. Yes, it hurt to see Naruto like this. His return here and his unmasking had really brought a lot of past pain to the surface, and it was really hurting him like an old wound that didn't seem to heal. Haku took off her own clothes, slipped into Naruto's bed, and cuddled up to him to reassure him that she would always be by his side. Kit, you are one lucky guy. Despite the fact that you are already in the affection of two attractive women, it is still insufficient to ease the pain you have endured. However, I will assist you in eliminating your adversaries, just as you have pledged to eliminate mine and assist you in elevating your clan to its predestined grandeur," Kayubi uttered, sensing the sleep of his vessel and one of his many future female lovers beside him. After several hours, Hanada approached the Namikaze estates with a tingling sensation all over her body, since she would be seeing Naruto for the first time in what seemed like an eternity after learning of his existence, and this might be her one and only opportunity to express her feelings to him. Perhaps he already knew, which would ease the situation, and it wouldn't be as if he were going to break her heart behind her back. Hanada knocked on the door, took a deep breath to calm herself, and was startled when it opened to reveal Haku in a water blue robe that barely covered her very attractive figure, she was secretly hoping that this didn't mean that Naruto was taken and that Haku was just the Namikaze's friend staying with him to help him settle in. Hi there, Hanada. Chan. Do come in, Haku said, allowing Hanada to pass through the door as she noticed the girl's hesitant steps. I'm not trespassing, is that right? Hanada uttered those words, unable to help but wonder what Haku had been up to and why she had on that robe. Not at all. Haku noticed Hanada nod and said, Naruto.kun was tired from earlier today when he talked to your Hokage and has been sleeping ever since. She wasn't going to tell the girl she was sleeping in the young man's bed, even if it was just platonically, at this time. Is Naruto.kun aware of my feelings? Hanada chose to go straight to the point and ask Haku the one question that would decide her fate with the Namikaze. They took comfortable chairs across from each other and sat down in the living room. Yes, he does know, which was why he wanted you here today so one of us could talk to you, and it just so happens to be me, Haku said. I see. Do you and he have a romantic relationship? Although Hinata was relieved that Naruto was aware of her feelings, she was concerned about what Haku meant to Naruto because she didn't know the girl and needed to know if she was inadvertently acting as the third wheel in their relationship. If I told you I wasn't, that would be lying. But before your heart breaks any more than it must be breaking right now, I want you to know that, since Naruto.kun is the last of his clan, he can have more than one wife to mend it. 
And, if you really do love him as much as you say, you can become a member of his clan. Do you want to be still? As she watched the Hyuga heiress turn her head in contemplation and process this information, Haku exclaimed. Haku.san, I sincerely adore Naruto.kun. Even in my darkest moments, he gave me the willpower to press on because I knew he would encourage me in every interaction. You want me to tell you how much I adore Naruto.kun and any other woman he meets and falls in love with. As you undoubtedly do, I have complete faith in Naruto.kun, and my only concern is his happiness. Hanada declared, I want to contribute to his happiness, and if that means sharing my love for him with other women, then I will, observing Haku's smile in return in their now. Muted agreement to see Naruto through to happiness. Hanada. Chan, welcome to the family. With a devilish smile, Haku said, when Naruto.kun wakes up, we can tell him the good news and show you one of the perks of being with him. Hanada blushed a deep red because she had many vivid dreams in that area. Is there anything I should know? Hanada, who was reticent to discuss this topic in general and even more so when it involved Naruto, said. Just two items. He's large and possesses a great deal of energy that can turn your entire body into mush, Haku remarked, observing Hanada display a confused expression and her nose bleeding from the sinister ideas she was having. Inner Hinata was directing her to enter his room and give him a proper wake up call. What time do you think Naruto.kun will wake up from his sleep? Hinata uttered those words as she noticed Haku lost in contemplation and realized she had no response. It's challenging to determine. After his near death encounter in Wave Country three years prior, Naruto.kun has experienced a great deal, so his return here is also not what he was expecting. Naruto is attempting to bear the suffering this place has caused him, and I'm going to need your assistance to mend the hole in his heart, given the things Danzo character has tried and the way people still see him. Especially after he learned about his family. And that his mother was still alive at the time, Haku remarked, shivering a little at Naruto's expression on that day. She remembered that sensitive subject all too well. His mom is still living. Hinata remarked, I thought the reason Naruto was alone all the time was because the woman died the day he was born. Hanada. Chan was alive, but when Naruto learned of her whereabouts and pursued her in an attempt to discover why she had fled, everything changed. The response he received deeply hurt him, and coming back here only serves to exacerbate the pain, Haku remarked, starting to tell Hanada the tale of Uzumaki Kashina and how she had betrayed her son on the day of his birth. And the way Naruto forced her to pay. Rewind, one year and five months ago. After being enhanced by Kyubi's various powers, which included mastery over shadows, Naruto had learned through this skills that his mother was still alive and that she was here in Crane City, deep in the elemental countries, in a well-sized home for a widow. Naruto had asked around about her, to learn about the woman that had given him life, and then left him to see what people thought of her. Finally, he had tracked her down, to this simple place where she had hidden herself from him on purpose. That one is a real partier. Acts as though she is carefree, remarked a person that Naruto had questioned and who had attended a party with Kashina. Loves to sip alcohol at gatherings. Flirts with numerous men as well. Another person recalled the redhead drinking with a guy and that they left shortly after, with the guy giving his friend the thumbs up. I think she even left with a few on occasion, the person said. She told me she had no family when I asked her once if she had any. A third person, a woman in her mid-30s, spoke up and said, that everyone she ever loved was dead she failed to notice the angry expression on Naruto's mask. That was enough for Naruto, who proceeded to his mother's house, broke in coveredly, and then waited for her to return from her night out. When Kashina did arrive, she was laughing with a man, giving him a passionate, lustful kiss, and allowing him to touch her roughly. It had to end, and Naruto had to. The mood was ruined with three kanai to the man's skull, and Kashina found herself looking, without realizing, at her angry son, whom she had long since left to the leaf's brutality. Before the red headed woman could take any further action, Haku materialized behind her, knocking her unconscious to give the alcohol in her blood time to take its course. When Kashina finally did wake up, many hours later, she was strapped to a chair with cuffs on her wrists and ankles, and her eyes were burning a hole through her head. Kashina had never seen seals of any kind on ankles before. Her hair was crimson blonde, and her captor's face was hidden in shadow, his red eyes burning fiercely. Well, you got me and broke up our one. Night romance. Kashina remarked, you're lucky I'm not restrained right now or I'd make you regret killing me, as she observed the figure pause and appear to be focusing on something in his hand. I've been wondering for a long time what you looked like, should I possess your hair? Your grin? You laugh? I questioned if you truly love me. 
as Hiakashina frowned at him, it was evident that she didn't know who he was, said Naruto. Cherished you? Pal, I don't even know you, and even if I did, I doubt I would want to, Kashina remarked, sensing that something wasn't quite right as the room began to cool down a few hundred degrees. Well, I guess you wouldn't know me because you abandoned me the day I was born, mother, and shortly after I had the Kyubi sealed inside of me. Naruto spoke as he inched closer and showed his face to the person who had brought him into the world. You. I considered myself freed from the very transgression of bearing you, my son, but I'm aware of who you are. Are you not the demon that took on human form? After all, Kashina remarked, spitting at his feet and glaring at him angrily, only a demon could withstand the grip of death like you did in Wave Country. There you have it. I was correct. You showed me zero love. Naruto saw her smirk at him, which infuriated the Namikaze. Even if I wasn't the one to have Kayubi sealed inside of me, you would have left, and I would have been alone, he said. Despite the fact that I adored the Yandaimi, I did not want a child at such a young age, but he was content to be a father nonetheless. Therefore, I kept it for the benefit of his happiness, but that didn't mean I wanted to be a mother, especially not when my so-called son turned into a demon. It's not what the Sandame told me to do, Kashina replied, wanting to raise her son the way Minato would have wanted him raised. The young man who happened to be Kashina's son quickly responded to her remark by giving her a backhand in the face, causing her to spit blood out of her mouth before turning to face him. Could you really believe that my father would transform me into a demon? He asked to be regarded as a hero, and what do you do when he sealed the beast inside of me completely? You flee in fear, cowardly, Naruto gave her a sharp glare in return, saying, if you truly loved my father, you would have stayed and raised me like a true mother would. Saying, I should have drowned you in the river when I learned of what Minato turned you into, Kashina sensed that Naruto was now looking at her from behind and that his intention to kill her was gradually growing. Naruto had heard all he needed to hear from this woman and made the decision to carry out the right justice in this case. When I get through with you, my so, called mother, you are going to wish that you had done what father had asked, and are going to beg for my forgiveness, he said. Are you okay with me leaving Naruto.kun? Haku exclaimed as she noticed Kashina's terrified expression and the rise of Naruto's shadow powers surrounding him. Do it, Haku. Chan. Naruto turned to face Haku and nodded, saying, what I'm about to do to this traitor should not be seen by your lovely eyes. He then walked away, turning back to face his so, called mother. Are you positive I shouldn't do this? Kayubi spoke in Naruto's head, sensing the lingering guilt his vessel was experiencing and choosing to step in. As the room's light started to fade and Kashina could only see her son's glowing red eyes burning in the night, Naruto thought, know this woman before me is no longer my mother in spirit and after today, she won't be my mother period. When Haku was outside the room, all he could hear was the woman's agonizing cries, her profanities, her jabs at Naruto, and her last cries of forgiveness mixed with her pleading for mercy from within. Finalize flashback. Naruto.kun was betrayed by his own mother. How horrible! Hanada exclaimed, not realizing that the village's betrayal had reached his family as well. Haku remarked, remembering how pale Hanada. Chan looked and how she had been there for him to hold on to. Regardless of what you think Hanada. Chan. The burden of what Naruto did has weighed heavily on him, and I shudder to think of what would happen if I wasn't there to comfort him, she said. I recognize. Is Naruto.kun visible to me? Hinata uttered those words because she wished to see Naruto, even for a brief while, and perhaps console him in some small way. Obviously, Haku heard Hinata let out a eep, and said, just don't try to jump him in his sleep, and flush a deep scarlet. Like you used to do that before you were hitched. Then again, inner Hinata mused considering the possibility of Naruto awakening and punishing her by bringing it to the Hyuga heiress. Two days later, the council meeting room in Hokage's tower. This cannot be justified. What gives that brat the freedom to act in that way without facing any consequences, regardless of whether he is the son of the Yandaimi, he needs to be punished, and the sooner the better. A lot of people cheered when one of the civilian councilmen said that, and in exchange, the Hokage received a terrible headache. They had been at this for a while now, with different people demanding different things from Naruto. That he pay for his actions against Danzo and for abandoning the village. That he sire a child prior to his execution. That he make restitution in money by giving up a third of the Namikaze bank accounts, and that Naruto teach Sasuke everything he knows. In addition, there was the question of Naruto's terms of payment, which remained unclear despite the fact that, whatever the sum, the Namikaze had meant to triple it. If this was the case, the village would most likely be drained of funds, making Naruto the richest person in the village. 
Maybe you ought to have treated him better than you treated the Uchiha. Jiraiya remarked, I don't like how they spoiled Uchiha Sasuke, as he noticed them all frowning at him. Naruto walked out of the shadows of the room, still wearing his mask and shadow fox outfit, and said, indeed, turning to face the group in front of him. Give us one solid argument against calling upon the Anbu to attack and kill you, demon. As Homura noticed Naruto glance at him and then at the Hokage, he spoke. Because I'll kill them alongside you, just as I killed Danzo's little army in secret. Therefore, stop talking before I close it for you. With a powerful burst of murderous intent, Naruto gave his order and carried it out. I assume you're here to talk about how much you'll be paid to continue serving the village. Tsunade nodded and followed him a few more steps, stopping squarely in front of the big table. Yes, and I'll make it reasonably priced. The shinobi village surrounding you was almost entirely turned against you because of your mistake, and now they are all my enemies. My fee is to be paid on time each month. If I discover that you are going to take advantage of me, I'll let your imaginations run wild. Naruto laughed a little at the thought of what he could do to them and perhaps even had fun. What is the cost of? Tsunade exclaimed as she observed her godson repeatedly and irritably scrape his hands with claws against the table. Naruto stated, my standard fee for my services is 50 million Ryu a month, and considering I am asking for triple my original fee. Observing everyone become pale and appear to be about to pass out when they calculated that amount in their brains. Tsunade, who was about to have a heart attack along with everyone else in the room save Naruto, said, the cost is 150 million Ryu a month. Outraged by this, Kaharu exclaimed, that could bankrupt us depending on how long you stay in the village, she would kill Naruto right now if she had the means to do so. Naruto saw her growing angrier and was about to call for the Anbu if it weren't for the lingering threat that he would kill her. No, it's made for you to look strong. Of course it will bankrupt the village you stupid old bat, he exclaimed. Tsunade asked, I was wondering if we could convince you to reconsider tripling your fee since you are still technically a member of this village Naruto. She explained that in order to make it official, she would need to go through the required paperwork and obtain the clan head's approval. Naruto, who loved watching their reactions to that little wound, said, Technically, I'm still dead in the eyes of Konoha Law, and even if you changed it so I'm not dead I would still charge you that amount. Besides, it shouldn't be too hard to get the money together from the village populace since I'm sure they'll bend over backwards to keep me happy just like they do for the Uchiha. Right? With no remorse about salted away as much as possible. Homura started to ask Naruto to teach Sasuke, speaking of the Uchiha, would you? But was cut off by a burst of murderous intent. It will be a cold day in hell before I teach that spoiled Uchiha anything. If that moron so much as he looks at me the wrong way, I'll butcher him, and leave you with an even lesser so-called, prodigy, to what you already have now, Naruto had previously declared, observing the feeble civilian council and hearing the shinobi council yell at him as he began to leave the room. The clan heads remained silent, pondering over their own misdeeds and how they had let the Yandaimi's son down, while Tsunade let out a sigh. Go back in time before Kayubi attacks, kill every single person that hurt me, and tell my father about how everyone he trusted to take care of me betrayed him, maybe then I'll consider not taking what is mine and just leaving Konoha to burn at the hands of all the enemies it's made out of their own arrogance. There was not enough sake to make those hateful, filled words go away. At the exterior of Hokage Tower, when Naruto left the building, Hanada and Haku were there to welcome him, and both of them had smiles on their faces. The Namikaze found his awakening to find Hanada fast asleep in a chair next to his bed, waiting for him to wake up. It had been quite the interesting start to the day. When he awoke Hanada and she saw Naruto's face inches from her own, the Hyuga heiress's expression was priceless. Hanada gave him a quick embrace and a deep kiss as soon as she saw that desire, in one of its sporadic but intense moments, had overcome her need to pass out. When Hanada found herself in this situation with Naruto, it quickly turned into a heated makeout session and resulted in the one thing Hanada had long since desired in her entire life. And history is written from there, as they say. Though it was a secret, Haku was secretly looking forward to her own time with the Namikaze again because she could still see the glow that surrounded Hanada, which was very similar to her own when she had become intimate with Naruto. Haku was about to finish thinking about it when she felt the chakra of Uchiha Sasuke, who was standing a few feet behind her. He had a haughty expression on his face, and it was obvious that he was hungry for power. Sometimes, Haku would reflect on the bridge memory and wish that she had killed the Uchiha instead of being a softy in her unwillingness to kill people. Haku stopped enforcing the, no kill, rule on her life after Naruto's actions in wave country, only sparing those that Naruto thought deserving. 
Ever haughty, Sasuke had grown enraged at the last rumored power and had been pressuring Kakashi to teach him everything he knew. So the loser cheats death and is the legendary Shadow Fox, huh? I don't know which is worse. You being alive, or you being the Shadow Fox every village wants, he asked. Naruto saw Sasuke scowl at him and said, I don't know which is more pathetic either. You still trying to kill your brother, or the fact that the people in the leaf still think you will revive your clan with their precious daughters? Maybe if they hanged into boys, you would be more eager? If Hitaki Kakashi hadn't gotten in the way, Naruto would have charged forward. Kakashi sensed Naruto glaring at him, as did the other two girls behind the Namikaze. Sasuke don't, Naruto was the one that stopped you from going to Orochimaru three years ago. If he can do that to you then, there is no telling what he can do to you now, and this time he may just kill you, Kakashi pleaded. Sasuke looked over Naruto's shoulder and saw Haku frowning at him. He got lucky. Besides, I've been taught by you on nearly everything you know, and I'm not about to have some so-called, Shadow Fox, feel superior to a member of the Uchiha clan, he said. Naruto saw the Junin turn away and exclaimed, even now you spare the Uchiha the beating he so rightfully deserves right now Hitaki. Where were you when I was getting my fair share of beatings? But before the Junin could turn around and face Naruto again, the Shadow Fox had given him a hard knee to the gut. Kakashi was knocked to his knees by the blow, clutching his stomach and trying not to vomit through his nose or into his mask. Kakashi was hit in the head by Naruto before he could even attempt to control his urge to throw up, and as a result, he saw darkness. After taking out Kakashi, Naruto crossed over the unconscious Junin and advanced on Sasuke, who was now prepared for battle. Shadow Fox, I'm going to show you how much of a fake you really are. I've waited a long time for this loser, mockingly remarked Sasuke, ignoring Hinata's bloodline activating and Haku's right hand full of Senbon. Naruto watched the Uchiha activate his eyes, and that was all the Namikaze needed to say. And I have been waiting for a second chance to kick the crap out of you before taking away those queer eyes of yours. The only reason I didn't do it before was the councils would be bending over backwards to find out who did it and I couldn't risk them hunting me when I had other things to do, he said. Kayubi, prepared to carry out his part, exclaimed, time to remove those eyes, and his head, before alerting Naruto via their connection and erecting a demonic chakra barrier around the two to keep the gathering crowd from halting the procedure. Naruto was behind Sasuke, moving faster than his Sharingan eyes could follow. He punched the man in the lower back and wrapped shadow hands that appeared to emerge from his chest before bringing the Uchiha to his knees. Sasuke felt something piercing the back of his head as he attempted to move, but he was unable to concentrate his chakra enough to even make a basic substitution. W. What are you doing to me? Sasuke exclaimed, feeling as though his brain was on fire as he attempted to fight against whatever Naruto was doing. As he withdrew his arm, Naruto felt Sasuke's bloodline leave him and form into a liquid orb in his hand. I'm taking away your bloodline Sasuke. Both from your eyes and that tiny thing between your legs that shoots the life-giving seed out. Now even if you were to get lucky with any girl, they will only produce none Sharingan users should they ever carry your child, and even then the kids you sire will be so weak even a fangirl like Sakura can beat them, he uttered. Sasuke screamed in agony, realizing what he was becoming. S. Stop, stop it, you can't do this to me. I'm Uchiha, without my bloodline, I'm nothing more than A, he exclaimed. After removing the shadow hands from around Sasuke's body, Naruto exclaimed, What? You're nothing more than what? A simple commoner? Your average shinobi? If you can't be a shinobi without that bloodline of yours I took away, then you don't deserve to even live, and have to. Die. He then raised his hand with the bloodline orb he took from the former Uchiha to summon a scythe before bringing it down upon the former Uchiha's neck. Tsunade exclaimed, Naruto stop as she and the other council members hurried to the scene upon hearing what was happening and realizing the precarious situation the Uchiha and Naruto were in. I am sick and tired of everyone praising the former Uchiha for his once held bloodline when all it does is steal from others. It makes a mockery of our profession, Naruto said, keeping his eyes fixed on Sasuke's terrified eyes and the silent plea they sent asking for mercy. Why? You know the history between me and this piece of shit from the old man. Do you know just how much weight I had to carry for him and Sakura on those crappy D-ranked missions while Kakashi trained Sasuke afterwards? All of IT. It was almost funny how pitiful this weakling looked at that moment. What do you mean, former Uchiha? asked the councilman from Haruno, who shared the Shinobi Council's disapproval of the direction this was taking. Naruto observed the horror on both council's faces and thought it was nice to see. Simple. I took away his Sharingan in his eyes and the ability to reproduce it in his loins. 
Unless Itachi returns to Konoha, the Sharingan eyes are lost to the leaf, and the Uchiha clan is no more, he said. A large man with influence in Konoha's merchant guild on the civilian council declared, we needed that bloodline. As he stepped away from Sasuke for a moment, Naruto said, well, you will have to deal without it because when I see Itachi, I'm going to kill him too, and I'm going to collect the bounty on it to further add to my fee. He then took it away by spinning around with his side, taking the Uchiha's head off completely. Nicely done, Kit. Nicely done, Kayubi exclaimed as he lifted the chakra barrier, sensing that his vessel was satisfied with the outcome of his actions. We'll have you arrested for this, declared Homura, who had Shinobi positioned all around them to apprehend Naruto in the event that the Namikaze had demonstrated a strong murderous intent. Naruto roared, exerting so much power that it seemed impossible for anything to move. You will do nothing. What you will do is agree to my terms or I will destroy everything in this village before rebuilding it in my own image. Setting the record straight, Naruto took back his body's seemingly demonic power and departed, now accompanied by his two special girls. Jiraiya. This is impossible. How can we make Naruto happy when all we do is aggravate him even more? Tsunade exclaimed, unable to decide how to handle the situation and leaving Jiraiya and the Sandane completely bewildered. Jiraiya said, I don't know Tsunade. Time. I really don't know. In all honesty, if I had known what was going on like our sensei was supposed to do, then I would have come back sooner and helped the kid out, realizing that Kashina had failed to be the devoted mother Naruto needed and that he had failed as a godparent. The Sandame spoke these words because he was feeling guilty about denying Naruto so much and it was starting to bother his already aging heart. Kashina was getting ready to leave the moment she heard Minato died and Kayubi was sealed inside her son. She wanted nothing to do with Naruto even after she gave birth to him. All she cared about was Minato, but when he died, and she decided that this village had no purpose for her despite the fact she had a son. As Tsunade put it, she had suspected Kashina was that way all along but had chosen to put her trust in Minato. Now that she was regretting it, she was acting as though she had neglected her role as Naruto's godparent. Well, I hope Kashina's dead because if she's not, I'll make her wish she was, and then use one of Orochimaru's forbidden jutsus to bring her back just to do it all over again. As he watched Tsunade furrow even more and massage her temples in an attempt to ease the headache that was now plaguing her, the elderly, retired Serutobi exclaimed, What are you going to do about Naruto's terms? Shizune handed Tsunade a bottle of sake, and the big, breasted woman raised an eyebrow at her assistant. We have no choice, but give in to his demands, as everyone in the elemental countries will soon learn who the shadow fox really is, and the fire daimyo has already put the leaf on notice since he learned of the village's cruelty to the boy, Tsunade said. Think of this as a one. Time thing, Tsunade. Sama, Shizune said, willing to overlook her drinking habit for this one occasion because she knew Tsunade needed it. Tsunade quickly emptied the bottle, but Jiraiya and the Sandame provided assistance. Location unknown. Two days later, Pain questioned Itachi, what do you have to report? As he stood with the others, projecting the members of his notorious group of S-class shinobi, and waited for him to speak. Itachi noted that many of the members appeared shocked at this and that some of them appeared a little nervous. It seems that our sources have indicated that the Shadow Fox is the vessel of Kayubi known to us all as Uzumaki Naruto has joined Konoha. However, it appears that he is more than we originally thought since he changed his name to Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, and is the Yandaimi's son, Itachi said. Kisame observed Itachi's eyes widen slightly before returning to normal, and Pain looking thoughtful for a moment. There is also the fact that the kid killed Itachi's little brother Sasuke after removing the Sharingan from his eye's head before taking it, Kisame said. This could be a problem. If the boy is indeed his father's son, then it's clear that he will learn everything his father knew from his family's home, and become a threat even to me, Pain said. Although he was aware of the Shadow Fox's strength, Pain felt that the boy's Yandaimi heritage and the knowledge found in the Namikaze estates would give Naruto immense power that could rival that of Uchiha Madara. Kisame asked, should we pursue him before we go after the others? He was curious about their plans for gathering the other demon vessels that were out there and what order they should be collected in. Pain explained, wanting to gather the others before pursuing Naruto, know we are to go after Shukaku first, then Nibi, and after that we will go after the fox vessel, and the other members nodded in agreement. Kisame spoke up, not wanting to waste his time on a wild goose chase only to discover the goose was just some duck. What if the kid doesn't have it? He was supposed to have died after taking a Chidori to the chest. What if he survived and the Kayubi didn't? He asked. That is the purpose of Itachi's eyes. Since you are matched for that reason, you will search for Naruto and determine whether or not he possesses the Kayubi. 
If he does, seize him to carry out the extraction procedure. If not, let him be, Payne stated, making it clear that he would not pursue someone who lacked the necessary items. Itachi responded, we understand, nodding in agreement with Kisame. Payne exclaimed, good, you all know what to do. Dismissed, as the projections of the Akatsuki members vanished and the room darkened. Namikaze Estate Currently, suckling closer to the Namikaze, Haku let out a happy sigh of bliss as the sweat from her amazing sex with Naruto gave her body a celestial glow. After what he had done to the Uchiha, he had been feeling extremely bloodthirsty. The village had accepted this since a number of fervent, Uchiha lovers, had attempted to kill Naruto in order to avenge the death of Uchiha Sasuke, and the Namikaze clan head had no problem taking his vengeance out on them. As soon as he entered the Namikaze estates, Naruto surrounded his house with a demonic chakra barrier and brought the two girls to his bed so he could do whatever he pleased with their bodies. Though Hinata went first and Haku received a shadow clone, she didn't mind because she thought Naruto treated her like the jackhammer he was and that she would be limping for a while. Naturally, Haku would be in a similar situation, but she didn't care because she was with Naruto and cherished everything he had done for her. Haku kissed her lover's chest and said, Haishi.san is going to wonder what has become of his daughter Naruto.kun. You think we should tell him? He wrapped his arms around her in a protective embrace. Naruto kissed Haku's forehead, enjoying the way she moaned at his touch. If he doesn't know already, I'll tell him, and make sure he can't take her away from me, he said. Hanada asked, Can I join you? as she entered the room nude and slid onto the opposite side of the bed to cuddle with Naruto. What's this? The world might be ending. The Hyuga heiress hasn't attempted to take you in your defenseless position, exclaimed Haku, observing Hinata blush before swatting her on the shoulder. She then glanced up at Naruto, who was now laughing at her behavior. Hinata let out a eep, and blushed a deeper shade of red when she felt Naruto cupping her very sensual rear end. Now behave yourself Hinata. Chan. You don't want me to tie you up and spank your ass to discipline you, right? Naruto asked. As Hanada continued to push the boundaries of color for different shades of red, Haku said, I don't know Naruto.kun, I think Hanada. Chan likes getting spanked by you, and wouldn't mind you doing so later, right Hanada? Chan? This made Naruto laugh even harder. Naruto quickly interrupted himself by kissing him on the lips with his tongue. Don't tease Hanada. Chan too much Haku. Chan or you'll be teased over the fact you have a secret sweet spot along your hemp, Naruto exclaimed. Oh no. Though Hinata would have to speak with Naruto later, she thought, I missed out on some teasing material, and hoped he would advise her to level the teasing playing field. The girl blushed at the thought and then glared at Hinata, who was now grinning devilishly back as Naruto cupped her ass. You're being naughty Haku. Chan. I may have to spank you instead and let Hinata. Chan watch, Naruto said, grinning at Haku. Hanada asked Naruto, Naruto.kun, will there be any other women in your life that you would like to be a part of your slowly growing family? Since she knew that some of the girls her age and around had a different perspective on Naruto. Naruto grinned at the thought of gathering them all and telling them that he was interested in getting to know them better. It all depends on the girls Hanada. Chan. I mean, there is Anko. Chan because she is like, in some ways, and she is really smoking hot. Tamari because she's strong, sexy and is the master of her affinity for wind like I am despite my massive usage of shadows. Tenten, on the other hand, has a thing for swords and has a killer figure behind that strong drive. I also would like to get to know Inazuka Hana better since I saw her take care of a young fox once before helping it back into the wild. Saying, as long as they make you happy, I'll support you, and so will Hanada. Chan, Haku planted another kiss on Naruto, and Hanada kissed him after that. Naruto pulled them to his body by their behinds and loved how they squealed with surprise. That's good to hear. Thank Haku. Chan. Hanada. Chan, he said. Hanada asked, aren't you tired Naruto.kun? She was surprised he could handle two women with such ease and felt his manhood beckoning for more fun. Haku felt what Hanada felt and, despite her soreness, she wasn't going to deny Naruto his much. Needed relief. So naive you were Hanada. Chan. When I gave myself to Naruto.kun for the first time, he had so much stamina that I passed out before he even finished, and still went with an orgasm as my wake-up call," Haku said. Oh my! Hanada thought as Naruto kissed her passionately and began massaging her buttocks, causing her to sigh with pleasure. Inner Hanada was bouncing with happiness. Kayubi recollected Naruto using his shadow powers to see into Hanada's mind regarding her family. Don't forget Kit, 
we soon have to deal with the Hyuga girl's family and a certain fate believing cousin of hers to further prevent any harm that he may try to unleash upon her further, he said. Neji appeared to still despise Hanada despite his strength, and Haishi, although slightly more pleased of his daughter, still desired to claim Hanabi as his heir. I'll take care of that family issue as soon as possible, but for now, Naruto reasoned, let me have some pleasure before I handle relations with the Hyuga clan. He groaned with pleasure as he experienced the sensation of two very special tongues during his erection, knowing that his dealings with the clan would have to wait. A very long time. Naruto left his house and crossed the road to the Hyuga clan compound because he needed to attend to some serious matters involving his cousin, Hinata father, and the elders who were causing all of this misery. He didn't really have anything to say about Hinata's elder man, but Naruto was aware that Haishi had initially held little regard for her, and Neji had even less respect for Hinata if his behavior during the Chunin exam prelims a few years prior was any guide. That was going to be altered. Right now, as Naruto approached the Grand Clan residence's main entrance, he noticed two branch family guards observing him with their Baikugan eyes, attempting to peer past his intimidating shadow fox attire. But the two Hyuga looked away in agony as his chakra became so strong that it was like a watermelon. Sized magnifying glass pointed up at the sun. Naruto remarked, I'm here to see Hayuga Haishi and Hayuga Neji, as the two glared at him and appeared determined to keep him out. This caused the young ninja to smile even more. The member of the Hayuga branch to Naruto's right yelled, You are an uninvited guest, sir. Leave now or else, and Namikaze pretended to be surprised. As he watched the guards stiffen, Naruto exclaimed, Sir? Did you just call me sir? No. Get out of here demon brat, no. We will use you for gentle fist practice if you look at this place again monster. Why the change? Could it be because I am now the head of the Namikaze clan and you are actually beneath me? Or, is it because of my powers that can maim, disfigure, and ultimately break the two of you into tiny little pieces? The Namikaze knew the answer was the latter. That was always the case. The member of the Hyuga branch to Naruto's left stated, We are trying to be respectful Namikaze. Sama, to which Namikaze shook his head in disapproval. Naruto saw both of the guards look at him with intense rage and had to fight back using their eyes again, knowing it would only hurt them. You're lying. I know you're lying because your shadows speak what you do not. You hate my guts, but you know you can't kill me because of my clan, and because you're too weak to so much as lay a hand on me. Though that's to be expected from those that just submit to fate, being its little bitch, and making excuses like all weak branch members do, Naruto said. The member of the Hyuga branch to Naruto's right remarked, you have a lot of nerve saying that, and Namikaze merely grinned behind his mask. I know I do. I also know that you have to stand there and take it like the weak pieces of branch member shit that you both are, Naruto uttered, dismissing the two's apparent murderous intent as a small irritation despite having felt it all his life. The member of the Hyuga branch to Naruto's right said, you should be careful of your words Namikaze. Sama. Insulting us like this will. But Naruto stopped him when he released a massive amount of chakra that swirled around him and howled like an enraged beast before stopping. You will not cause me any trouble. I can stand here insulting your lifestyle until the two of you collapse on the ground, crying like little babies, and not receive any form of harsh punishment for it. You want to know why? Because you two are nothing. You are weak, spineless, branch members of the Hyuga clan, and can do nothing without the approval of the main family. Now I came here to see Hyuga Haishi and Hyuga Neji because the Hyuga clan has important business to discuss with me regarding Hyuga Hanada. Now either you two let me through willingly or I beat you both within an inch of your pathetic lives to see them. Choose wisely, said Naruto, as they looked at then the one to the Namikaze's right granted him entry. Under that mask, the Hyuga branch member could swear on his eyes that Namikaze was grinning fairly. Please forgive us for our attempts to block you from important clan business Namikaze. Sama, he said glancing at Naruto. As he entered the Hyuga compound, Naruto declared, no promises, and he set out to track down Hinata's asshole cousin and her potentially still asshole father. Konoha Hospital Hitaki Kakashi awoke to the sound of guys storming into his room, screaming about the flames of youth, and how he was going to use them to resurrect his fallen rival. This gave him a terrible headache. Even though it was cruel, Kakashi, the patient man that he was, used his old strategies to force the man to focus his efforts on the people of the village rather than the patients at the hospital. Tsunade observed Kakashi getting out of bed and clutching his skull in agony before grabbing the aspirin bottle the woman threw at him. Recovering nicely, I see, she said. After being knocked out by Naruto, Kakashi asked, not really. The headache is the least of my problems. What happened with Sasuke and Naruto? 
not knowing what had happened earlier. Hitaki is dead. Naruto killed him, Tsunade informed him, detailing the events that led up to Naruto's plan to eradicate the Uchiha clan from the village forever. Speaking somberly, Kakashi walked to his hospital room window and looked out at the village. Well, it's not like it wasn't bound to happen, he said. Tsunade remarked, you're taking this better than I thought, because she had anticipated that Kakashi would lose it or have a crying fit due to the loss of the Uchiha. When Kakashi arrived, Sakura was hardly training at all and had only passed the Chunin exams because her teammates had done the majority of the work for her. I'm used to this Tsunade. I've lost my father, my sensei, and in a way I lost two of my original three students with the third being the true failure of what was once Team 7, Sakura said. It didn't help much that he hadn't trained her either. Tsunade, who could see it now, remarked, well, there is no doubt that Sakura is going to raise a screaming fit when she hears about it, wondering what Sakura would do when she faced Naruto. That is, if she had to face him. Kakashi, running a hand through his gravity, defying hair, said, let her complain all she wants. It makes no difference to me. What was I even thinking when I agreed to be Team 7's sensei? And pondered whether he would ever be able to patch things up with Naruto. Kakashi believed he had a far better chance of defeating both Kayubi and the formidable Shinigami simultaneously. Compound Hayuga. As he looked into the menacing masked eyes of Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, the formidable Shadow Fox, Hayuga Haishi was many things, but fear was not one of them. He wondered if he should be afraid. When the boy was younger, it was never easy to support him, but it was also hard to not support him because of his loyalty to Minato. In addition, Hanada had to take into account her feelings for the demon vessel. When Hanada returned home at age 5, with just two months to live before her mother passed away soon after giving birth to little Hanabi, Haishi had been aware of her feelings for Naruto for some time. Even though a lot had passed, Haishi could still clearly recall Hinata's excitement when she told her parents about the blonde child with the brilliant blue eyes and how he had helped shield her from some mean kids at the playground. The mother of the girl was exhausted, but despite her weakness, Hayuga Hitomi was happy and informed Hinata that she had met someone truly unique. Hinata was unaware of Naruto's unique qualities, but the girl's mother merely grinned and assured her that she would eventually comprehend his significance. Even though the elders refused to let go of their antiquated customs, Haishi knew Hitomi had a good sense of morality. He also recalled how his wife pleaded with him to keep Hizashi from leaving, even if the man desired to. Neji, the man's only son, would despise the main family in the absence of Hizashi and take his anger out on someone who didn't deserve it. Specifically Hinata, she was correct, too. She was correct every time. She predicted that the family would become divided due to the paranoia of keeping the secret from our eyes. Haishi wondered what his wife would think of him now and whether she would be ashamed of him for raising Hinata the way he had. Strange how my father forbade me from being with her, yet my mother defied him all the same, and made sure we were together when we fell in love, he thought to himself. What the heck was Haishi thinking? Hitomi would have easily destroyed him, and he would have earned every second of that brutality. In relation to beatings. You know why I am here? Naruto asked, gesturing to the branch member in the room to get Neji as he noticed Haishi give a small nod. After what happened at the prelims of the Chunin exams, I tried to be a better father to Hinata, but I still failed horribly, and came to the realization that I was too late to do anything, Haishi said with a sorrowful expression in his eyes, evidently regretting what he had done. I know Hinata was with you yesterday. She had always cared about you, even when she learned the truth, and still held you close to her heart, Haishi continued. It was fortunate for him that Hanabi had not chosen to follow the elder's path. And Neji? Naruto asked, observing Haishi wince and turn away in embarrassment at his further failure to be a caring uncle to his twin brother's kid. My dear nephew still hates Hinata and the rest of the main family. Ever since he beat Hinata, even with her use of the cage bird seal to make him pay for insulting you, Haishi said. He had tried to find a way to deal with Neji's hatred, but it seemed that there was no way to stop it, and the clan head appeared hesitant to give Neji the letter that Hizashi had written for the boy. Why hadn't he taken action earlier, perhaps fear was holding him back. As he heard the door open behind him, Neji entered the room without realizing who Haishi was currently speaking to. I'll deal with him myself, declared Naruto. As Haishi gave him his customary icy Hayuga look, Neji asked, you wish to see me Haishi? Sama? Fighting back the rage that was about to surface on his own face. Haishi turned to face the member of the Hayuga branch while observing Neji scowl a little at the name of his daughter Hinata. Yes Neji. There is someone here to see you and is a good friend of my daughter Hinata, Haishi said. Wonderful, 
Another weak idiot who wants to threaten my life because he is probably upset with me for how I handled Hanada. Sama. Neji approached the masked figure, who was still facing the Hyuga branch member and hadn't turned to face him, thinking to himself, how pathetic. Naruto turned to face Hyuga Neji, and the Hyuga boy's eyes widened in shock. You've caused Hanada. Chan a great deal of pain, Naruto said in a whisper. Neji exclaimed, you? As he took a step back, getting ready to defend himself against the Shadow Fox, when Naruto attacked first, striking the member of the Hyuga branch in the chest with a palm strike. The attack, however, covered the boy in shadow instead of sending Neji flying across the room as it would have done with anyone else, and the two were instantly carried away in a dark flash of light to who knows where. Hiyashi's eyes widened at that, and even though this was obviously different, he immediately thought of Minato and his Hiraishin Jutsu. Naruto is his father's son, and I trust no other shinobi in all of the elemental countries to make Hinata happy. Haishi would later tell Hinata in private that he approved of her relationship with Naruto and that he would always be proud of her something he ought to have done right away. Examining Chunin Stadium, Neji felt the force of the blow send him flying along the dirt for about 15 to 20 feet before stopping, and he struggled to get up from the ground as soon as the two appeared in the arena. Neji was treated like Rock Lee's training post from the moment he did, feeling as though someone had taken a sledgehammer to his stomach and then repeatedly struck him. Naruto asked, How does it feel, Hayuga Neji? How does it feel to be treated like trash? That is how you viewed Hanada. Chan because she was in the main family, but did you ever consider that perhaps she didn't wish for you to have it, and would switch places with you to take away your pain? No. You had to be a baka and try to humiliate her for trying to grow a spine that in the long run would have freed you from that misery currently symbolized on your forehead. Naruto continued, landing a few more blows to the boy's stomach before seizing his opponent's skull and slamming Neji hard to the ground. As Neji was lifted up again by the same hand on his skull that had slammed him into the ground, he thought, Naruto's ruthlessness in combat are true just like the stories say he is. He then stared into the metal mask that might be the last thing he saw. I should kill you right now just for looking at Hinata, Chan with your hate-filled eyes. I should tear you apart piece by piece for hurting her in the Chunin exam preliminaries just like the pathetic piece of branch family trash that you are. However, if I do that to you, then Hinata, Chan will be sad, and I can't have that at all. So this is how things will play out from now on. You are going to be the nice loving cousin that should have been protecting Hinata. Chan from day fucking one. This fight. Never happened. After I heal you, go find your cousin in a few days, get on your knees, and beg for forgiveness saying you had a sudden revelation that you could not ignore. If you don't, I will hunt you down, and then I will destroy you. Understand? Said Naruto, as he heard Neji barely gasp out a, yes, before dropping the defeated boy onto the ground, and swarmed his shadow powers over him. Neji was completely recovered in a matter of moments, and when he awoke, he witnessed Naruto leaving without saying a word to him. As if the beating had never taken place. Streets in Konoha, moments later. People parted to give Naruto plenty of room to move as he passed through the streets that had once been marred by his blood on multiple occasions as a result of mob attacks and fox hunts that were held on his birthday. His blood boiled from the looks of hatred, the delight people took in seeing him suffer for something that wasn't his fault and the murderous intent it was unleashing made a lot of people perspire profusely. Kayubi saw his vessel's mental appearance frown at him and said, Calm yourself Kit. The more killer intent you generate, the more you give all of them a reason to hate you further, and we both know the younger generation don't deserve that. He then toned it down, slightly. Walking through the streets, Naruto thought to himself, perhaps, but that doesn't mean I can't mess with the previous generation, and let them know what I think of their righteous justice against me. He entered a random store that he knew would have instantly kicked him out years ago. The shopkeeper, a somewhat middle-aged man, now gave the Namikaze boy a terrified look, and his customers hurried out, leaving the two of them alone in the store. The man, bowing submissively to Naruto, who had been told years earlier to never set foot in the store again, said, Namikaze. Sama. What an honor it is to see you here in my store. What can I get you here today? Don't try sucking up to me Baka. The late Uchiha Sasuke may have enjoyed it, but I do not, and I feel insulted that you would show me such a false display of respect. You want to know what you can get me today in your store? I'll tell you what you can give me. You can give me. Much needed vengeance, Naruto mused behind his mask. The store owner started to back into a corner and start whimpering like a small child. Oh, how ironic the situation between the two seemed at the moment. Twenty minutes afterward, after leaving the now, demolished store, Naruto left the owner, who was bloodied, bruised, 
and possibly even dying, to mull over the revelations from years earlier. Naruto knew that people saw and heard the beating, just as many had heard when he was beaten as a child, so the fight wasn't quiet either. Like in Naruto's case, nobody intervened to save the shopkeeper from the beating, and the Anbu only showed up after it was all over. Anko exclaimed, a little example to the masses, Naruto.kun, as she emerged from the alley and gave him a sly smile. Naruto, who was 11 years old at the time, remarked, I saw you do no less upon someone, who tried to have his way with you years ago, and thought you were drunk at your favorite dango shop. Remember? Anko had beaten the shit out of the man who had assumed she was weak enough to have a quickie without her permission. Naruto looked at Anko for a moment, then nodded before following her to the area of relative solitude. Touché. By the way, speaking of my favorite food dango, how would you like to have some with me Naruto.kun? I will even pay for whatever it is you order, Anko said. Naruto saw Anko blush and gave her a sheepish head rub. Knowing my reputation Anko. Chan, you'll get everything on the house, and the manager will be begging me not to rip him a new asshole, Naruto said, observing that Anko would probably get everything on the house. People gave them strange looks as they strolled through Konoha to Anko's favorite restaurant. They wondered what Orochimaru's failed student was doing with the Namikaze demon vessel. Anko, for her part, could feel the incredible power hidden behind Naruto's metal fox mask and could feel her body starting to heat up a little from being so close to this dangerous person. In the brief time the boy had returned to Konoha, he had killed the Uchiha prick, put Kakashi in his place, dispatched the councils like the little bitches they were, and killed Danzo. Anko could still feel the shivers running down her spine every time she thought about them. Naruto nodded in agreement as he saw Anko nod. So Anko. Chan, how have you been while I was away from Konoha? I know the people here in Konoha hate you almost as much as they do me, he said, explaining how the village's haughtiness had seemed to worsen until he arrived. With the Sandame on her side and him personally telling the councils that she was one of his most trusted shinobi in the leaf, Enko said, the assholes here suspected after the failed invasion years ago that I was in league with Orochimaru of all people and it was how he was able to put his plan into motion to take down Konoha, can you believe it? Enko didn't want to consider what would have happened if he hadn't been present to attest to her. Naruto remarked, that they would suspect you of being a secret spy for Orochimaru? Yes. That they were right to think so? Hell no as the proprietor of the dango shop let the food be served free of charge. The people inside were rushing. Naruto grinned beneath his mask as Anko ordered a big bowl of dango for the two of them. Looks like you were right, Naruto.kun, Anko said. It means that the next time we go somewhere and they don't give us the food for free, you're buying, Naruto teased, laughing at Anko's tears and his face smeared across the bar table. Anko whined, Naruto.kun, how can you be so mean to me? Naruto could only chuckle at her behavior. Naruto observed Anko laughing at the memory and struggling to order some sake to go with the dango. This coming from the same woman, who I saw years ago put a snake in a certain pink-haired woman's sake, bottle, and scared the screechy Haruno into pissing herself silly, he said. Anko heard Naruto laugh at that and shook his head at the news. Point taken, but in all fairness Naruto.kun, I only do it to bitchy women, and perverted bakas that like that old guy that writes those dirty books, Anko said. Naruto observed Anko laughing with him and thought the snake woman would be a good person to be around, as he knew she would. That would be Jiraiya of the Sani, who peeps on women for research purposes, and on occasion gets his ass handed to him for it. He also taught my father, though I think that's ranked second in his proud accomplish list, and the first being his peeping abilities in the hot springs, he said. Anko, who was visiting Kurenai, told Naruto about some amusing moments they had shared and how she had scared all the genin during the chunin exams with the forest of death. Well, I'm pleased to be one of the women that caught, and beat the crap out of him for it, Anko remarked. In exchange, Naruto told her about his time spent living outside of Konoha, how he trained non-stop when he wasn't accepting missions after gaining notoriety across the elemental countries, and how he enjoyed his newfound freedom. Anko thought this news to be very educational because she knew that Naruto and people like her needed to be removed from areas where they were despised. They could breathe freely once they were outside the village and away from all of those haughty bakas who were trying to destroy them every day. With a look of rage in her eyes, Haruno Sakura cried out, Naruto, and the Namikaze understood why. Since Sasuke had passed away, you would think Sakura would be more reserved, but nope, she needs to be a bitch and let out her inner banshee. As he turned to glance at the irate pink, haired Uchiha fangirl, Naruto thought to himself. Sakura was about to stomp over there and pound Naruto into paste like she used to when they were younger. You killed Sasuke.kun, 
I've been looking everywhere for you since it happened to get answers and here I find you're eating dango with this snake whore like all is well with the world, Sakura exclaimed. As he flexed his hands before they became fists and made popping sounds after being tightly closed, Naruto exclaimed, First, Sasuke. Teme was an asshole, who only had a thing for the same gender as him, and while you were somewhat close to that regard it just wouldn't have appealed to him unless you had the necessary thing downstairs. Second, Anko. Chan is not a snake whore, and if you call her that again, you'll regret it. Sakura pulled out a kanai and charged at him with the intention of killing him. I don't know why the councils didn't order your execution you monster, but I'll gladly do it to avenge Sasuke.kun and rid the village of your taint, she exclaimed. Naruto said, how bothersome. Earth style, imperial wall jutsu, before putting his right foot down forcefully and creating a solid rock wall several feet behind him into which Sakura ran painfully and left an imprint that proved she had done so. Anko exclaimed, now that was just pathetic, at Sakura's pathetic demonstration of skill, and she pondered whether or not to approach Tsunade about serving as a temporary mentor to the aspiring female leaf shinobi. Naruto left to speak with the matriarch of the Inazuka clan, who may or may not be the woman's only daughter. Agreed. Oh, look at the time, I have to go, and deal with some other business that needs to be taken care of. See you later, Anko. Chan, they exclaimed. Anko exclaimed, thanks Naruto.kun, sweet guy, maybe next time if he's interested, we can. Hey, as she noticed that the sake bottle had run out and all of the dango was gone. And Naruto had vanished from view. That cunning gaki took advantage of the situation involving fangirl McPinky to grab everything and just walk away from me with nothing. Well, I'm not paying for the dango this time, but that's not really the point. I believe I found love. I've finally found someone who can handle my crazy tendencies without running off and pissing his pants," Anko thought to herself. She mentally noted that she should pay Naruto a visit so they could maybe have some fun. At the moment, Kumaro, though the phrase, hiding out, should really be changed to, being restrained, by the Reikage's orders, Yugito was sick of hiding out in Kumo. She was being pursued by the Nibi organization, and Yugito believed that being in Kumo would make her a simpler target. On the other hand, the Reikage held a different opinion, claiming that they were well protected from this Akatsuki organization with her and Killer B in Kumo. He informed them that their decision to remain Kumo was final and that they would not be changing. Considering her seal, which he applied to her like a leash on his beloved pet, it's not like Yugito could refuse. As the brother of the Reikage, Killer B's allegiance to the bastard was undeniable, which was the only reason he didn't have one on him. The seal that imprisoned the demonic cat had a heavy barrier around it to prevent such a connection to the damn thing. I know you hate this kitten and I do too. If I could find a way to remove the seal from your body, I would have done so years ago, but there is a failsafe in place with my own seal, and needs to be handled by a seal master of the highest quality," Nibi said. The only way to get rid of it would be to find that seal master Jiraiya of the Sanin, Yugito reasoned, realizing that the solution to this issue lay in a rival village that, like Iwa, was at war with the leaf right now. Or the Shadow Fox. From what rumors we've heard about him, I think he could be at the same level as Jiraiya if not surpassing the old Sanin in terms of seals, and seems to sympathize with demon vessels like you," Nibi uttered. Yugito had been spreading for the previous three years about the Shadow Fox's assistance to those in need and his subsequent rise in respect from a variety of powerful people. That's all very well, Nibi, but there's a small issue. What number should we give him? Yugito, who was a little irritated since she found it hard to live in this place where no one seemed to care about her thought that she should be free from the rakage and kumo in general. Nibi remarked, it was just an idea, kitten. How you reach him is entirely up to you, understanding that Yugito was not allowed to have a summons or send out messages unless the rakage gave his approval. Oh, happiness, I don't know how I'm going to use the plan the Nibi suggested to get to the shadow fox, Yugito sighed. Konoha. A little later, deeply contemplating, Naruto strolled through the streets, hoping to see Inazuka Sume regarding her daughter. However, the woman was nowhere to be seen, so the Namikaze boy chose to put off his search for either Inazuka for the time being. Putting pleasure aside, Naruto was paid to be in Konoha, so he had to concentrate on business. If he didn't think about his mission to defeat his common enemies the Leaf, it would be detrimental to business. Orochimaru was the first to go since the Sanin had been planning to capture Sasuke for a while following the abortive defection attempt, and now that the Uchiha had died, the hubby would exact revenge on whoever had caused it. The notorious Akatsuki group came next. They had been actively pursuing their target for the previous three years and were probably going to focus their efforts on Kayubi at this point. There is nothing particularly novel there. After a while, 
Naruto came to the realization that Iwa and Kumo would cause him a lot of trouble. Iwa wanted his head because he was a namikaze, and Kumo would pursue Hinata for her eyes. Why did Konoha feel the need to post a verbal, we are taking on all comers, target on its back? Naruto turned to see Inazuka Hana chasing after a rather roguish dog that refused to take a bath or its shots. Hey! Stop right there, come back here you bad dog, the female voice said, followed by barking. The dog in question ceased running as soon as it saw Naruto and bowed before the formidable young shinobi. Naruto asked, having animal troubles with your unruly dog? After observing Hana gasping for air while chasing the mutt and how the poor animal gave up on running when it saw the namikaze. Hana finally realized who she had been speaking to and became a little afraid of him. Sort of. He needs his shots, but at this rate I might just castrate the dambaka, and do it in front of the other animals to teach them not. To. Run, she remarked. Hana. Chan, is there something wrong? Naruto asked, taking off his mask and grinning at the Inazuka lady who was blushing profusely at the moment. Hana, sensing her body heating up and the urge to mate with the attractive man in front of her, said, I was trying to stop the dog and. After donning his mask, Naruto said, I see, when you get off from work, stop by the Namikaze estates, and we can talk later in order to get to know each other better. Hana was left speechless as he left. Working field number 5, today, Tenton sparred by herself since she didn't want to yell, youthfulness. At Lee and Neji wasn't there to perhaps even ask to train. Tenten's training came in handy during moments like these when her mind would wander to unsettling topics. At the moment, her thoughts were focused on Naruto's return. Although she didn't really connect with him before or after the academy, she was aware of him from his reputation and enjoyed her silent giggles at his antics. She didn't understand why he was referred to as a monster, demon, and other derogatory terms until the retired Sandame revealed this information years prior to the Chunin exams. She never held Naruto responsible for what the Kayubi did because the Namikaze had been given the shaft end of life from the moment of his birth and the boy had never requested to have the demon sealed inside of him. Tenten wondered if her own father hated Naruto and had only come around because he was the son of the Yandaimi. She had asked her father about his thoughts on Naruto, but the man didn't seem to be able to respond. Tenten had no malice towards Naruto, regardless of her father's feelings, and if things went that far, she would like to be at least his friend. Naruto was a few years older than her, but even with his undiscovered powers, he was still quite strong and attractive. Tenten was eager to find out if Naruto was as skilled with a weapon as Hanada had claimed when she had seen him in Wave Country following his summoning of his Shadow Sword to defeat the Kumo Shinobi there, so the prospect of the two training together was very alluring. Naruto observed Tenten being startled by his voice while he was throwing a shuriken that flew wide, struck a few trees, then turned and hit a poor bastard who was carrying a tray of enraged crabs in the village. Training hard, I see, remarked Naruto. Tenten exclaimed, that never happened. When she heard Naruto laughing at her antics, she wasn't about to let his meddling ruin her perfect throwing score. The crimson black Nodashi class sword with a fox skull on the hilt and crimson gems along the eyes caused Tenten's eyes to widen. Agreed. Though I'm more interested in your sword skills over the throwing kind, Naruto said as he pulled his sword out of the shadows. Whoa, Tenten thought, now that's a really nice sword, admiring the deadly beauty of the weapon and wishing she owned one of her own. As Naruto prepared his blade, he asked, are you ready, Ten? Chan? And saw Tenten, who was blushing a little, call her own sword stance. Tenten exclaimed, ready, as she fixed her gaze on Naruto's covered face and bided her time until he moved to confront her. In a quiet voice, Naruto said, brace yourself, as he waited for the leaf to slowly drop between them. When it did, the two got into a fight. Tenten continued to attempt to hit Naruto while the latter showed no signs of slowing down as the two attacked each other with lightning. Fast accuracy and unwavering resolve. Although he did land a few cuts to indicate he had gotten her a couple of times and was happy with how strong her skills were, Naruto was actually holding back quite a bit against Tenten. He's doing well. Very good. Tenten thought to herself after failing several times to fake a right or left hit on Naruto. However, the Namikaze was too skilled and easily pushed her back. Naruto saw Tenten look at him angrily and said, Your skills are quite good Ten. Chan. A few more years of hardcore sword training and you. Might be a threat to me in terms of swordplay. Tenten apparently didn't like the line, might be a threat in terms of swordplay. That's why she was approaching Naruto more quickly, more forcefully, and attempting to take his sword out of his hand before snatching his head off his neck. Kayubi questioned, what did I tell you kid about upsetting women with swords? 
after witnessing Naruto deftly sidestep, duck, block, and counter Tenten's moves more quickly than previously. As Naruto moved behind Tenten, he thought, that's unhealthy. He kicked her in the back as she was swinging forward, causing the bun. Haired girl to stumble before turning to glare at him. Tenten remarked, I'm not weak, as she watched Naruto tilt his head to the right before taking off his mask. The weapons girl had to suppress a blush from wanting to show on her face. Naruto put away his sword and turned to face the blushing girl, giving her a weak, need smile. I never said you were ten. Chan. You took my words out of context. Not surprising since you were not the first to do that, he said. He's very attractive, Tenten thought to herself as her body began to gradually heat up, a part of her mind practically yelling for her to give him a kiss. Naruto nodded to Tenten, sensing that she couldn't be trusted with her own words. Tell you what, since I am impressed with your skills, I wish to invite you to my home at the Namikaze Estates for additional training, he said. More instruction? From a member of Namikaze clan? Tenten kissed Naruto on the lips, thinking that she was so shocked and excited by the news that she could not stop crying. Before realizing what she was doing, she leapt away, blushed, and then apologized profusely for kissing him while Naruto's face had a playful expression. Naruto put his mask back on and said, It's all right Ten. Chan. Though I do wish to thank you now for the kiss. I look forward to possibly having more of them with you later after our training sessions. The blushing girl was so embarrassed that she immediately vanished. As soon as Lee said, Yash, Tenten, I have just finished 20 miles worth of run, and I wanted to know if. Ah, uh, Tenten attacked him and began beating the red, faced girl up. Tenten flung her enraged fists at the poor boy, saying, Nothing happened, you hear me? Nothing happened, and left Rock Lee's nearly lifeless body there. But I don't even know what happened, Lee said to himself as he struggled to stand up but fell back down, he wanted to know what had caused Tenten to act in such a violent manner. The streets of Konoha, as Naruto felt a surge of weak killer intent while heading to his next location, he sighed in realization of who had fired it at him. When he turned around, he saw an enraged Sakura staring at him with a murderous look on her face and a band dot aid. Like adult size diaper on her forehead. Naruto saw Haruno seething with rage and stomping towards him like she did when they were younger. Here we are again. If I didn't know any better Haruno, I would suspect you don't like me for doing the world a favor and killing your precious Sasuke. Kun? Naruto asked. Sakura tried to slash at him with her kanai, but Naruto easily avoided it, after a few more poor attempts, the namikaze grabbed the arm before breaking it. Sakura exclaimed, I. Am. Going. To. Kill you. Naruto unleashed a blast of killer intent on Sakura, knocking the pink. Haired banshee unconscious and causing her to walk away without saying anything more. Get this through your thick skull Haruno. You can't defeat me. You are so weak that I could defeat you back when we were first starting out. If you ever come at me again, I'll kill you, and leave your bloody corpse at your parents' front door. Got it, Naruto exclaimed. When Naruto sensed something was amiss in Konoha, he stopped about two blocks away and narrowed his eyes before glancing in the direction he thought the unwelcome guest was currently heading. Although it wasn't surprising, it was unfortunate that his mission involving Konoha's numerous enemies, which he shared with them, appeared to be happening a little early. Since Orochimaru was the cause of so many problems in the world today, Naruto had initially intended to deal with him first. However, it appeared Kami had other ideas, and Naruto had to deal with these two Bakas who had now arrived in Konoha. Keeping that in mind, Naruto moved in the direction of the chakra signatures he was sensing and, sure enough, he spotted the two members of the group that wanted to find him in search of the fox. Hoshigaki Kisame and Uchiha Itachi. Naruto asked, it's been a long time Itachi. Do you hate me for killing your weak brother? Because he knew Itachi would find out and wanted to get even. Itachi activated his eyes and scowled when he felt them being blocked. No Sasuke had his chance to see past the hate, but gave into it anyway, and had to die like the others, Itachi said. He found this to be extremely unsettling. Kisame asked, What's wrong with Itachi? Does he have the Kyubi in him or not? After observing the man attempting to view the Kyubi's chakra signature and being taken aback by the man's delayed response. As he unleashed a monstrous wave of chakra that shocked his two opponents and essentially alerted every leaf shinobi in the village, Naruto said, let me save you the trouble Itachi. I don't need you hurting yourself so early into our fight. To answer the question running through your minds, as well as your organization's mind, I am proud to say that Kayubi is very much alive, and I have every intention of keeping him alive to help kick your ass into hell. His power is amazing. Itachi, who was starting to perspire profusely from the chakra output Naruto was generating, 
thought that Kisame taking a step back spoke volumes. Such strength was only seen in the Yandaimi and even now the boy is barely working up a sweat. Even though Kisame was insane, he wasn't suicidal. Naruto created a black crimson Rasengan and charged forward at the two members of the infamous Akatsuki, saying, What's wrong Itachi? I thought you wanted to capture me for the fox in my stomach? Did you change your mind? Well too bad, after I kill you, I'm killing the rest of your little boy band group, and wiping out the Uchiha name from the world. Itachi move, exclaimed Kisame, who then paid for his actions by having Naruto strike the former Mist Shinobi with an attack after knocking Itachi back while drawing his sword. Naruto exclaimed, Shadow Fox style, Shadow Crimson Rasengan, as Kisame's stomach was destroyed and the remainder of the man was transformed into black powder that dissipated into thin air. Oh no, Itachi thought, I need to get away before it's too late, and he started to run, but he was stopped by a large dome of ice mirrors that had encircled him. The female figure, wearing a mask, was brandishing Senban needles, ready to fire, and before he could react, dozens of needles had pierced his body at different pressure points. Haku angrily remarked, you are not going anywhere, Uchiha Itachi, sensing that someone extremely powerful was trying to kill Naruto, she could feel Naruto's chakra spike easily. Not under her supervision, agreed, said Naruto, who was standing behind Itachi at the time, he then quickly stabbed Itachi in the back with his nodashi, the blade exiting through Itachi's lung and entering his right side. Naruto twisted the blade before drawing his sword and letting Itachi's body hit the ground. Namikaze then stabbed the man in the skull to confirm that he was dead. After completing his mission, Naruto nodded to Haku, who turned off her bloodline and unveiled a small Anbu army that included Jiraiya and the Hokage prepared for battle. Naruto put away his sword, went over to Kisami's own weapon, easily picked it up, and walked away with Haku by his side. You're late. Though with the past history the Anbu had with me and the villagers. That is no real surprise, he said. Jiraiya approached Itachi's body and declared, he still hates us, even though he didn't know where Kisami's body was. Is he to blame? I've reviewed Sensei's reports with the Anbu myself. There have been instances of delays in rescuing victims from mob beatings, neglecting guard duty for the boy, and even attempts by some Anbu members, Tsunade remarked, tearing apart the teams responsible for the new misbehavior and holding them accountable for their previous transgressions against the Yandaimi's lone child. And don't even get her started on the hospital staff, they experienced the slug princess's wrath too, and learned what it's like to be hurt and unable to get medical attention when you most needed it. Jiraiya, sighing at the news that another Uchiha was lost and would be proclaimed wiped out, said, well, it's not like we can undo all that, but Naruto did do Konoha a favor by killing two members of Akatsuki, and some of the stronger members no less. Though I wish it wasn't Itachi that was killed since he one of my secret informants. Tsunade seized the man by his shirt and gave him a terrifying, tell me everything or you're dead, look that made men gag, what, since when, she exclaimed. So Jiraiya told her, without going into detail about how he pissed himself, about how Itachi had been given the order to kill the Uchiha clan in order to stop the coup they were preparing. How Itachi sneaked into Akatsuki and collected intelligence while remaining hidden from the few people who knew he was a spy. Jiraiya explained, Serutobi knew that the Shinobi Council gave the order and used it as leverage against them to prevent those old fools from destroying our godson, witnessing Tsunade eschewing his favorite pastime of pummeling him until he passed out. Tsunade remarked, he should have used it to get rid of them, I'm going to have a word with that old fool after this is over, knowing that the shinobi council would have been replaced with younger, more responsible individuals to assist her with the leaf if things had gone differently while she was in charge. Jiraiya saw that Tsunade was looking less angry, which was good for him, fortunately, Itachi isn't my only spy contact regarding the organization, and I can still keep track of their activities, he said. If she was less enraged, she would probably hit him less frequently and have less chance of hitting him below the belt. Tsunade looked at Jiraiya and then in the direction Naruto went before approaching the boy to speak with him. I really need a drink, but that can wait for now, she said. A state's namikaze. Tsunade was at the door within minutes of Naruto arriving at his house, pounding forcefully to get the boy's attention because he was currently having a lip. Locking moment with Haku. Tsunade had opened the door, come in, and wanted to talk to him about her absence from his life in his living room. She was sick of their distance from one another and the lack of the foundation that ought to have grown between them soon after he was born. Why did you leave in the first place? Don't give me that, all of my family died, bullshit since I know you were there when my. When that woman gave birth to me, Naruto said, taking a seat with Tsunade, Haku, and Hinata waiting to provide much, needed emotional support. I was a coward. 
Part of me suspected Kashina would run, but I ignored it, and I had actually suspected Jiraiya would live up to his responsibilities in being a godparent if your moth. I mean the individual that gave birth to you did not. Even then Naruto, you still had my sensei, but now I see he was as useless as I was back then when around the sight of blood, and regret leaving you here in the village, Tsunade said in a sincere attempt to demonstrate it in some way. At least you will admit it to my face, Tsunade. The old geezer certainly hasn't been the most groveling of people upon my resurrection, as well as return to Konoha. Not once since I've been back has the Hiruzen come here, begging for my forgiveness, and neither has that perverted teammate of yours. At least you showed you have the balls to come see me and admit you were wrong, Naruto said, nodding to Tsunade. Using the ensuing silence, he allowed their gap to gradually close. I sent a letter to the fire daimyo telling him about your return and he wants to meet you at the fire country capital to discuss some things. He wants to know how to deal with Konoha, as well as possibly making peace with Kumo, and possibly Iwa though we both know that will only happen when one of the two villages is burned to the ground, Tsunade said as she observed Naruto nod up at the ceiling with intent. Naruto saw Tsunade sigh slightly and got up to go. I'll meet him. At least that way, I can possibly have the strongest political ally outside of the leaf, and could lead to future missions for the man that pay well too, he said. As she left the Namikaze alone with the two girls who loved him, Tsunade said, I'll send a messenger bird to him right away. Take care. My godson, hoping he could find happiness in Konoha long enough to think about staying in the village. More than he needed them, the leaf needed Naruto. After receiving a summons from an Anbu with instructions from the Hokage to meet with him for a mission, Naruto dressed for a mission and headed to the Hokage's office, knowing it was time to get paid. Not unexpected, considering that Itachi and Kisami's deaths occurred just a week prior, and the bounties assigned to each man were set to be added to Naruto's already. Hefty price. Since they had wanted Naruto dead for years, it was not surprising that many people in the village had called for his death during that time. However, the deaths of the two remaining Uchihas, Madara excluded for the time being, only served to fan the flames of hatred even more. Tsunade declared the Uchiha clan to be officially exterminated within two days of it becoming known to the public, causing the villagers to mourn the lost clan. While this was going on, more people started glaring angrily at Naruto whenever he passed by. Some even tried to harm him, but failed miserably. The councils objected to this, claiming it was a betrayal of the now deceased Leaf clan, and they asked Naruto make amends on behalf of the now defunct Uchiha clan. But Naruto decided that all they deserved was a good kicking in the ass, so he sent all of those idiots on the councils to the hospital, battered to within an inch of their lives. Even though Tsunade had to heal all of their wounds, she still found pleasure in witnessing their bandaged forms and admonishing them not to act foolishly since doing so would result in their deaths the next time. Naruto is currently standing in front of the desk with Tsunade behind it, but that was the past and this was the present. What mission am I going on? asked Naruto taking the scroll that Tsunade had given him, which contained information about his mission. He expressed gratitude to Tsunade for placing the councils in the hospital, as they would have sent him on a suicide mission if they had had the opportunity. Tsunade saw Naruto nod behind his metal fox mask and pocketed the information since he would need to look at it again later. You're going to Kumo. The Rakage got wind of what you did and feels the act alone to the Akatsuki organization warrants a form of peace between us since he has much to lose in fighting on two fronts with the Akatsuki being much more dangerous, Tsunade said. Naruto saw Tsunade scowl and realized that she had very little love for those fools who were currently in the hospital, drugged up to their eyeballs, even though some of them had long since recovered. If the councils heard that, they would consider it an insult, and want us to invade Kumo to show we are the stronger of their two enemies, he said. Those fools wouldn't know how to run this village properly without someone like me," Tsunade remarked, having engaged in a series of debates with them that threatened to undermine the leaf while enriching themselves. I saw Tsunade frown at the awful memory replaying in her head, and her hands clenching into fists as a result, and I heard how they tried to stop you from trying to start that special medic program to use for Field Shinobi to reduce casualties. What was the excuse they used? Lack of funding. Lack of. Something I believe it was," Naruto remarked. Those old fools have been bleeding this village dry and they claim we lack the funds needed, Tsunade said. They said it was the lack of funding and lack of personnel needed to start the training at all, she added. Tsunade had wanted to look into the fool's financial mismanagement but had never had an excuse and knew that without one they could move to have her position taken away for someone who had no problem being their puppet. 
I'll talk to the fire daimyo on my way to Kumo and tell him to agree to it in order to see if there is any discrepancies in the village funds, said Naruto, realizing that the Hokage's request for a peace mission could only be supported by the fire daimyo, who, based on the mission's appearance, had his seal next to the Hokage's, indicating that he wanted this as well. Just investigate without their permission. When they recover and find out, tell them that the daimyo had heard disturbing rumors of there being a lack of funds before ordering an investigation. Tsunade remarked, I figured as much, he's expecting you to meet him in the next few days, realizing that the two had to get together quickly to settle their differences before the two councils came up with some ridiculous legislation or rule that would be used against the young man in front of her. As he turned to leave, Naruto said, then I won't delay, and he stopped at the door when Tsunade called to him. Tsunade asked, Naruto, has Jiraiya, or my old sensei tried to visit you at all? Because she had hoped that both of them would just admit their mistakes and apologize to Naruto. Before departing, Naruto said, No I haven't heard from either one and the toads already know not to be messengers in regards to Jiraiya having them voice his apology to me. If Aero. Senen wants to apologize, then he's going to have to do it to my face. And the same goes for the old monkey. He then heard the woman in the room growl at the lack of intelligence those two had displayed. So, those two bakas won't acknowledge that Naruto was right? Alright, then, Tsunade thought to herself, I'll just have to make them do it and I know exactly how to make it happen. She beeped her intercom to get Shizune to come into her office, and sure enough, the woman with the dark hair did just that. You called Tsunade. Sama? Shizune asked, glancing at Tsunade's irate expression and knowing that whoever had enraged the fair, haired lady was going to suffer greatly. As soon as she saw Shizune nod, Tsunade said, get me an Anbu team in here, Shizune. I want them to get my old teammate and sensei in this office right now, if they do much as show signs of hesitation, the Anbu are authorized to use force to bring them in here, and tell them to not to be late getting back. Tsunade then went to gather an Anbu team trustworthy by the Hokage. Tsunade would make sure that the two ungrateful people knelt down in front of Naruto and begged for forgiveness in some manner. Namikaze estates. Subsequent moments, Haku asked, wanting to be an extra set of eyes and ears in case the rakage turned out to be trapping Naruto. So you are going to Kumo by yourself? I cannot go with you? Naruto saw Hanada and Haku entering the room and looked at him curiously. Yes. Do not worry, as I have taken the needed precautions to handle the rakage should he decide to be bold, and keep me restrained, he said. I also wish to go on a little side mission that Tsunade doesn't know about and should not know about until my return. Hanada heard the two in the room conversing and asked, what side mission is that Naruto.kun? She wanted to know what her love was up to. As he saw Haku and Hinata looking worried because Kumo had previously attempted to capture Hinata when she was still a child, Naruto declared, I'm going to remove the seal on the Nibi vessel so the Rakage can't keep her on a leash anymore. That way, even if the Rakage does decide to try something, I know the Nibi vessel will help me out in the end, and get me out of whatever prison the Baka throws me into. When Naruto got to Kumo's dwellings, there was no telling what he would do. Haku could not allow him to be taken prisoner and used for that village's own cruel purposes. If you are not back in three days, I will go to Kumo, and tear it to pieces to find you Naruto. Sama, she uttered. Hanada remarked, the same goes for me, Naruto.kun, knowing that she would not lose Naruto again. At least not to the same location where he had first attempted to kidnap her. Seeing as how both of you nod, I'd expect nothing less from you too. I expect to be in Kumo for a minimum of three days and then send a toad summons to Tsunade with my report. If she doesn't receive it, then you know something bad has happened, and then you can head to Kumo to tear it apart," Naruto said, guaranteeing that some of the other girls, like Anko, would be joining him in tearing things apart in Kumo. Come on, it's Anko, I mean, when she's relaxed, she sheds tears. Haku, travel quickly and safely, Naruto.kun, she said, planting a passionate kiss on his ass. Naruto gave her a firm squeeze on her ass in return. Naruto rubbed Haku's ass and said, Keep an eye on things while in the leaf Haku. Chan and when I get back we can spend some time together. Celebrating. Hanada then turned to face him and blushed a cherry red. Someone's jealous and obviously aroused, Haku thought, since Hanada was obviously bisexual based on the passionate evenings the three of them shared. Naruto kissed Hanada and gave her a passionate squeeze on the ass, sending the Hayuga girl into a state of intense pleasure that almost sent her flying out of her sandals. Don't worry Hanada. Chan. You can join in on the celebration too, and let your sexy side out," he said. Please hurry back, Hanada uttered in a squeaky voice, 
She was looking forward to seeing him again and knew that she would be spending some time with Haku tonight to prevent herself from going crazy. Naruto gave her another passionate kiss and said, I will. I promise, before letting the two girls fend for themselves outside the house. Daimyo's palace burns one day later, the young, unmasked blonde and a group of samurai followed the fire daimyo as they walked. I thank you for meeting me on such short notice, the latter said. The fire daimyo nodded and ran a hand through his hair before letting out a tired sigh. Thank you for having me here on such short notice. I know how much you want there to be peace between the leaf and kumo since the odds of Konoha winning the war are pretty slim, even with me siding with the leaf. You can thank the two councils for that since they've been trying to push people around since the third Hokage came out of retirement," Naruto added. The fire daimyo questioned, I have let them boss around the Hokage, haven't I? He had assumed the third Hokage would be able to handle the two councils following the Yandaimi's death, and it wasn't until the fifth Hokage and Naruto arrived that he realized how stupid he had been. Yes. I killed Danzo so most of their voice has been silenced, but they are still being a pain in the ass and they need to realize their place in a shinobi village. For that to happen, I need you to reinforce such things since no one can usurp the word of the fire daimyo in fire country except. Well, the fire daimyo? Naruto exclaimed, seeing the feudal lord nod in agreement. He knew the man would do just that. Seeing the young Namikaze nod, the fire daimyo knew that things had to improve. I'll write up the official documents before you go tomorrow for Kumo. For now, stay in my palace as my guest and accept my hospitality," he said. Otherwise, the leaf and fire country would only exist in memory. Reikage's office in Kumo, the next day, the Reikage extended his hand and the young shinobi in front of him accepted it. Welcome Shadow Fox. Sama to Kumo. I thank you for attending this meeting for peace between the leaf and Kumo, the Reikage said. Naruto laughed at Killer B's speech pattern and told him he had potential in the arts if music was used. And I thank you for welcoming me Reikage. Sama. Your brother was quite a sight to see when I arrived with him rhyming while talking to me," Naruto said. The Reikage, sensing the boy's intense power, said, I hope he didn't bother you. I've told him repeatedly to try speaking normally, but my poor brother seems to defy me in that regard, and I am starting to come to my wit's end. The Reikage knew that facing the Shadow Fox might be the hardest battle of his life if he tried. Naruto observed the Reikage stiffen at that and scowl at mention of Yugito. Not at all. He's rather unique. I like him. What concerns me, however, is the Nibi vessel you have here in Kumo, and the fact that you have a special seal outside of the one that contained the two. Tailed cat in me Yugito, he said. Yugito should be loyal to the village since she has the Nibi inside of her, but instead she chose to be rebellious and has on more than one occasion tried to leave Kumo without permission, the Reikage remarked, explaining that he had placed the seal on Yugito for a reason and that he expected the young woman to follow his orders without question. Naruto, who could see the Reikage glaring at him now, thought this could get dangerous. Perhaps she is not treated well within Kumo's walls for what she holds. Perhaps she feels being loyal to a village that hates her has no value, he said. She is this village's weapon. Ni Yugito is the offensive sword of Kumo just as my very own brother is the shield. Nothing will ever change that, the Reikage uttered, directing his deadly intent toward Naruto, who scowled in response and returned fire. Naruto started laughing at the now. Enraged Reikage, saying, so Ni Yugito should just kiss your ass despite the fact you don't deserve to have her or your brother serving Kumo. What a joke you are. No wonder you lost the last war with the leaf. He only stopped laughing when the man shot up from his desk, flaring his chakra. The Reikage, with his Kumo Anbu prepared for battle, yelled, You dare? I brought you here to bring peace between the leaf and Kumo. Yet you laugh at me like I was pathetic genin fresh out of the academy. Guards. As he saw Naruto slowly rising to his feet in a composed manner. Prior to overpowering the Reikage with his own killer intent and chakra. As Naruto spoke, several shadowy fox, like creatures with razor, sharp teeth and multiple red eyes emerged from his back and launched themselves at the Anbu behind him. It is you Reikage, who dares defy what is right in this world, and deny that demon vessels like the two in your village suffer under the oppression of people like you who rule shinobi villages. You use them for war or defending a village, yet you don't even acknowledge them for it, and let your village treat them like garbage that in itself is inexcusable. That power is just like the rumors spoke of, the Reikage thought to himself as he charged Naruto. He was certain that he could defeat the Shadow Fox because he believed the power could only be used effectively if the young shinobi remained motionless. With ease, Naruto deflected the enormous fist that was aimed towards his face, threw the man out of his office through the window, and leapt out to pursue the Reikage. 
The Reikage used Taijutsu on Naruto as soon as he hit the ground, putting the Namikaze on the defensive for a little while. But in this case, temporary, was the key word. Following the Reikage's attempt to strike him with a spin kick, Naruto avoided the strike and delivered a forceful right, hand a jab to the man's ribcage, followed by a vicious headbutt to the man's face. Before the Reikage had a chance to go on the defensive, he staggered a little as Naruto applied his own Taijutsu to the man. The man was realizing that the Shadow Fox's abilities were real, and he was now reconsidering his plan to battle this creature in front of him. One punch to the face was avoided by the Reikage, but he took a knee to the stomach, which became a vertical spin kick, and a foot to the jaw, which sent the man flying into a nearby building. Kumo Shinobi was waiting on the sidelines, ready to be called into battle against their enemy, while everyone else had scurried off. Since the Shadow Fox was listed in every bingo book as a villain to be avoided at all costs, they were aware that the Rakage was up against him. It didn't help that the mercenary had taken the lives of many of their allies. Naruto watched the Rakage leap out of the building he had been sent into and land a good 15 feet away from the young Namikaze. You brought me here to make peace between the Leaf and Kumo. Well, I have terms I think you will find very difficult to refuse, and quite frankly, you can't refuse, he said. You have nothing to say. I want to hear Shadow Fox!" exclaimed Rakage, launching a powerful A-ranked lightning jutsu at his opponent while using hand signals. Shadow Style Redirection Portal That's too bad, Rakage.san, since your village will now pay for your stupidity just like so many others have before you, Naruto remarked as he unlocked a massive shadow portal in front of him that absorbed the lightning jutsu and pointed toward a structure not far from the Rakage Tower. The Anbu headquarters in Kumo or, more accurately, the location of Kumo's former Anbu headquarters, which was completely destroyed by the lightning jutsu along with everyone who was inside. The Rakage, seeing that the building had vanished, exclaimed, no, before turning to face the shadow fox. Naruto stated, as I told you before Rakage.san, I have a simple proposal for peace, and the terms are non-negotiable, knowing the man was still in disbelief over losing a significant portion of his shinobi village and that he would at least listen to him. What are your terms? Rakage asked, wondering what kind of power this man possessed to do such a thing as he began to perspire profusely. Naruto, observing the Rakage nod, said, 1. You cease all hostilities towards the leaf, and redirect your efforts on Akatsuki since they do not like to play well with other shinobi villages. Naruto was aware of the organization's methods. After observing the Shadow Fox nod, the Rakage remarked, You mean wipe them out without mercy, and he awaited the second condition. Second. Ni Yugito is to have that seal you have to keep her contained removed, and is coming back with me to Konoha under the protection of my clan," declared Naruto, realizing that the Rakage was clearly not amused and that he didn't want to lose a weapon that was very important to his village. The Rakage remarked, I can't do that. The instant I do, Yugito will run away from Kumo, and leave her open for the Akatsuki organization to grab her. However, the Shadow Fox's deadly glare quickly silenced him. That's your fault. You should have treated her better, now. For the third, and final condition of peace between the two villages is the return of Hayuga Hizashi's body to the Hayuga clan," Naruto uttered, observing that the Rakage appeared to be upset about the fact that he had requested Hayuga Hiyashi's body and had yet to learn of it. The Rakage exclaimed, they killed my ambassador, as he began to feel Naruto's murderous intent slowly smothering him from the inside out. Do not tempt me Rakage.san in doing what the Akatsuki organization would do if they were here in my place," exclaimed Naruto not wanting to deal with the man's resistance to the terms and realizing that he would not be easily persuaded. Your so-called, ambassador, tried to kidnap a three-year-old Hayuga girl and the heiress of the clan no less on your orders. The Rakage saw Naruto nod and was shocked that the Shadow Fox would admit to such a thing. I can still fight you Shadow Fox. Me and my shinobi forces could fight. Even you can't fight an entire shinobi village with my brother ready to fight you even if you got by all of us, the Rakage said. It was true that Naruto had many connections from his time as the Shadow Fox and that each of them would be happy to exact revenge on him if he fell. How true. But, do you really want to sacrifice your entire village to defeat me, and leave it open to attacks from the others? Even your brother cannot repel them all for long and you forget I have quite few influential friends in those places that will tear this place apart, Naruto said. The Rakage scowled because he was well aware that the rumors were accurate. That the new case cage subcow no gara had only once faced the shadow fox and had quickly forged a close friendship with the youthful mercenary shinobi additionally the hidden mist village had recently overcome its civil war with the assistance of the shadow fox and they had forged a close friendship with the new mizukage however she kept the identity of the young man hidden from others even though he wore a metal mask 
The Rakage responded, Very well. For the sake of my village I agree to your terms, understanding that Kumo would be destroyed if he rejected the conditions. His village had to come first. Naruto, sensing that the Kumo shinobi around them weren't too fond of this one bit, said, Good. I will have all of this drawn up in a contract for you by tomorrow for you to sign before I have it taken to the Hokage for her to sign it and I wish to see Ni Yugito today so I can remove that disciplinary seal on her body. He also noticed the Rakage nodding his head in agreement. The Rakage, removing his fighting stance, said, I will summon her to my office. You can wait with me there for her, and he and Naruto made their way back to his office in search of the Nibi vessel. Hokage Tower. Currently, you can't do this, Jiraiya exclaimed to Tsunade as he and his old sensei were compelled to wear shabby, old janitor. Like clothing and he noticed the serious expression on his former teammate's face. I can't, you forget Jiraiya.kun, I am the Hokage of the Leaf Village, and I can make you do whatever I want since you are both shinobi of the Leaf. I know you are retired sensei, but I can recall you to active duty, and any form of duty that I want you to do. You both won't admit you screwed Naruto over when he was younger so until you do, I'm making you do this instead, and if you so much as think of running out on me Jiraiya I'll report this to the fire daimyo to get approval to revoke your traveling rights. Both of you are a disgrace to the leaf for not manning up and admitting you were wrong like I did. Even Naruto admitted I had more balls than you two and I'm a woman for Kami's sake. Said Tsunade, as he saw them looking away, and knew she had hit home. Jiraiya asked, looking at Tsunade's sly smile, what if, I rather we both apologize to Naruto when he comes back, will you call off this assignment that didn't bode well for him no this is my way of punishing you when naruto returns he can exact his own kind of punishment on you two bakas however i'm willing to wager that his version of horror will be far more brutal than mine tsunade said watching the two men shudder in response they were not interested in placing a wager like that and for once the slug princess was positive that not even her bad luck would prevail in betting when Jiraiya and Hiruzen set out to perform the most abhorrent, if not downright degrading, labor known to humankind, they said to themselves, Kami help us. Cleaning up the feces of both bulls and elephants after the Konohamaru Corps surreptitiously administered laxatives to the former. Kumo. One day later, from his hotel room, Naruto sighed as he studied Kumo, noting that its designs were both similar to and different from Konoha's. He then wondered how the others were faring at the moment. Even though he was well aware that he had lied to the rakage, he had sent a fox summons to Tsunade with the signed peace agreement last night ahead of schedule. He did this to ensure that the man would not reconsider the terms and to ensure Naruto's safety returning to Konoha. Yugito stirred in the big bed behind him, groaning for his touch again among the silk covers. Naruto wasn't sure how it happened, but he wasn't going to complain because his animal magnetism would have caused it to happen eventually. He also didn't think the blonde woman behind would be complaining. All that Naruto knew was that Yugito's baser instincts, which, if not from Nibi, then from her own body's desires, were suppressed by the Rakage's seal on her body. The woman was so shocked when Yugito first saw him that she nearly passed out when he told her that the Rakage was releasing her from her role as a Kumo shinobi in exchange for taking off the disciplinary seal. The aforementioned seal was on her right breast, which, although it had little meaning for Yugito when it was first placed on her as a child, meant that, as she grew older, the shadow fox would need to see her impressive bust in order to remove it. Upon awakening from her trance, the blonde Nibi vessel discovered herself reclined on a chair in a ceiling chamber alongside the shadow fox, who was patiently awaiting her reawakening. After they had a little conversation, Nibi told Yugito that she wouldn't mind if he made a little inappropriate advances, but Yugito was a little reluctant to expose herself to him and gave him a menacing glare to not do anything perverted. Not too long afterward, well, the rest is history as they say. You told the two girls back home about your new female guest, right? Kayubi asked, realizing that the boy wouldn't be getting any attention for a while if those two didn't find out about Yugito before they returned to Konoha. Naturally. Naruto reasoned that the girls would comprehend and accept his decision, adding, I also explained how she is a demon vessel like me and she is an honored guest in my house while under the protection of my clan. Kayubi asked, when do you leave for Konoha with the girl? since he was aware that Naruto had his own schedule and that there were still tasks to complete. Soon, following our breakfast, Naruto thought, Yugito. Chan needs to recover her energy she spent last night, as he turned to face the still, drowsing woman and heard the twisted fox giggling. Even though all cats were like that, Kayubi had to admit that the Nibi did help in terms of flexibility. Even then I didn't know she could bend her back like that. It was quite the sight to see if I do say so myself, he said, watching his vessel nod mentally. 
We can talk about this later. As Naruto fully turned to see Yugito get out of bed and yawn like a cat, he thought, Yugito's waking up. Nibi, what a dream I had. Yugito looked around the room, thinking, I dreamt I was free of Kumo, the damn disciplinary seal, and then I gave in to repressed desires by giving myself to the shadow fox. She stopped when she saw Naruto smiling and staring at her. Nibi watched Yugito process this information, squeak, and cover herself with sheets on the bed. Kitten, it wasn't a dream, Nibi said. Naruto saw her glaring at him and said, Is that really necessary Yugito? Chan? I have already seen your lovely figure, which is by the way very beautiful, and to be honest I had to in order to remove the disciplinary seal from your body. However, she stopped when she realized what he was saying and sighed at the realization that he was right. Even so, Yugito refused to allow him to see her chest. Yugito asked, I'm leaving Kumo to live with you, right? Knowing that this was her chance to be free and leave this hateful village that treated her like a kanai and threw her away when she was no longer needed. When Yugito nodded and then grinned at him, indicating that she felt that a new beginning was what her life needed, Naruto said, yes. I figured you would find your happiness with me in the leaf, but your status as the holder of the nibi will remain a secret just to be safe, and will have my clan's protection to further ensure nothing bad happens to you. Yugito observed him smile at her and nod that it was indeed true. I heard you killed two members of Akatsuki and were among their strongest among the organization, she continued. Naruto watched Yugito growl at the idea of being hunted like some mindless animal and looked forward to administering her own brand of justice. Yes. We will have to deal with the two assigned to hunt you down eventually since the two I killed were aimed for me, he said. I'm looking forward to it, Yugito exclaimed, sensing that Nibi was growing agitated and that this was reflected in the demonic chakra that was emerging from her body. She flinched at the title because it sounded like rakage to her, and she didn't like meeting anyone with that title. So am I, but that can wait until later when we're back in Konoha, and we report to the Hokage, Naruto said. Yugito observed Naruto smile and sit on her side of the bed, asking, she's nice right? Naruto merely laughed at Yugito's sweaty expression and put a soft hand on her shoulder, causing the blonde woman to blush. When she's not drunk or hasn't lost money gambling, he said. Well, it could be worse. Yugito reasoned, since the Hokage could be a big, fat pervert who would use her for that dirty orange book and other purposes. In the Konoha area, as the Sanin managed to fight off the force of Jiraiya's sudden, powerful sneeze that pushed him back behind one of the larger elephants, he found himself covered in elephant poop. All of Konoha could hear him scream, and Tsunade was laughing at his bad luck. With Yugito at his side, Naruto entered Konoha and made his way directly to the Hokage Tower where he was to report on the situation involving Kumo and announce that the alliance with the other shinobi village had been formally proclaimed accomplished. Naruto observed the villagers' varied reactions as he went along, including occasional smiles and looks of fear and rage. Yugito noticed this as well, but she dismissed it as the obvious consequence of Naruto's appearance as a demon vessel, understanding that it required great fortitude to ignore those glances. Do you have second thoughts, Yugito? Chan? Naruto asked after observing her surveying her surroundings and her actions toward the villagers. Yugito responded, No, my loyalty is to you and the Hokage if she is the person you make her out to be, after Naruto had informed her of Tsunade's transformation into the Hokage of Konoha and her wider perspective than that of other Leaf members. With a mock hurt that made Yugito blush, Naruto asked, Only loyalty? Nothing else? Her inner Nibi didn't help either. Nibi observed her vessel blushing even more and told the cat demon to stop talking. After freeing that seal from your body and then making you a full-fledged woman I'd say he has definitely got more than just our loyalty," Nibi said. Tsunade greeted the two as they entered her office prepared to deliver a mission report, saying, Welcome back, Naruto. This is Ni Yugito, I take it? Yep. Freed from Kumo, the seal that they use on her, and is going to be one of my many wives to help restore my clan," declared Naruto, giggling like a pervert as he noticed Yugito blushing and Tsunade's eyebrow twitch. Tsunade asked, did you do what I think you did? As she prepared to punch Naruto out of the village and into the following week. I don't know granny. What do you think I did? If you were thinking about what you think I did, then you might be right in thinking that, and you were thinking something else, declared Naruto, grabbing Yugito and swerving to avoid Tsunade's fist as he leapt for the window. With a menacing fist shake, Tsunade yelled, get back here, Naruto, and take your punishment like a man. She was met with a crude gesture in return. Naruto jumped out of the window, made a shadow clone to give Tsunade the full report on his mission, and went to the Namikaze estates with Yugito to introduce the girl to the others waiting for them. Why should I listen to the only woman in the elemental countries, 
who doesn't stay to pay her debts, and hides behind a genjutsu when it comes to taking punishment, he said. Training Area Number 4 A little later, now that he was training, Naruto allowed Yugito to get to know Haku and Hinata so they could form a bond without his intervention. Naturally anxious, Yugito had not bonded with anyone in Kumo because she was the Nibi's vessel. However, Naruto reassured the fair. Haired woman that Haku would accept her without reservation, and Hinata did the same. When Yugito was with them, all they would ask of her was that she be honest and authentic. When it comes to family, no pretense of smiles. Naruto exclaimed, you can come out now, Serutobi, Baka, as he turned to see the elderly man, a retired sandame known to all as Serutobi Hiruzen, approaching him. There was also a smell about him that was distinct from human waste. The retired sandame said, hi Naruto, realizing that the boy had every right to be upset as he noticed Naruto glaring at him. That's Namikaze to you, Baka, come to apologize, don't bother? No amount of begging for my forgiveness will ever make me forgive you or Jiraiya, Teme. Even more so when Yugito told me the truth behind the incident involving Kumo 13 years ago. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? The one thing that not even Haishi knew about in regards to the incident that you felt no one needed to know. The secret involving you and a secret agreement with the Rakage to get the Byakugan in exchange for no war with the Leaf. Said Naruto, who had heard the entire story from Yugito. The Rakage was furious about being screwed over while being powerless to do anything about knowing it could cause problems for both sides with the respected daimyos ordering the peace. The retired Sandame exclaimed, oh shit, as he watched Naruto approach him slowly and with a serious expression in his eyes that was unlike anything the old retired cage had seen in the boy's father during the last shinobi war. You remember, don't you? I would think you would since you were the one, who told the Kumo ambassador when to abduct Hinata, and how to escape the Hyuga compound after he did so. It was only by pure luck that Haishi had such a funny feeling about the man that he decided to keep an eye on things at night and saw the Baka stealing Hinata, Chan. The plan was so close to blowing in your face at that point, but then luck decided to smile on you once more out of a sense of pity old man, as you saw your chance to give the Rakage what he wanted, and in the form of Hyuga Haishi himself. However, the Hyuga elders threw an explosive tag onto that idea by having Hizashi go in his brother's place, and put Kumo at a stand still with the leaf up until now said Naruto, as he saw Hiruzen's eyes widening, and began sweating heavily. The retired Sandame asked, forcing himself to suppress a shiver down his spine as he looked directly into Naruto's eyes, what did you do? he asked. I completed the battle with Kumo, I returned with Ni Yugito, a beautiful woman they considered a weapon, and I returned Hayuga Hizashi's body to the leaf to be buried properly. By now Tsunade will be issuing an order for your arrest on the grounds of treason and various other laws of the leaf that you also broke because of it, Naruto said, watching the older man turn pale in the face before grabbing the younger man by the collar of his clothing in a panic. You don't understand Naruto. Kumo could have easily wiped us out with the Rakage's younger brother and the man himself had worked together. The only reason they didn't was because Lightning Country had been hit by a recession and any further continuance of conflict would have crippled them. I didn't know how long it would last since there were already signs of it ending soon and it was the only way to call off any future attack by Kumo. I did what I had to do for the leaf. Being Hokage is not so simple like you think it is Naruto. Said the Sandame and felt Naruto's grab his wrists before squeezing it, hard. Naruto now squeezed harder, feeling the old cage cry out in agony before making him fall to his knees. Like I think it is? You think I don't know old man? I know how hard it is because I saw you Sandame Hokage fail at being it. You failed at being the Hokage after my father died, you failed at being the Hokage during the Hyuga incident with Kumo, and you failed to keep the late Uchiha Sasuke from being spoiled by the Bakas in the village. Not to mention you lied to me about my family and you purposely kept away the one godparent that could have had watch over me if told to stay for that reason," exclaimed Naruto. The Sandame saw Naruto look at him with even more anger than before and he squeezed harder until he heard the sound of old Cage's wrists breaking. I had to, it was the only way to ensure you wouldn't die. Danzo had a root Anbu team on standby to kill you the instant Tsunade came back into the village on my order if it was marginally connected to you. He had so much information on me that I could have been overthrown and Danzo would have taken my place, the Sandame exclaimed. You spineless old man. That's your excuse. The old, I had to, speech? What you should have done, was tell Tsunade everything. You tell Jiraiya to get off his lazy perverted ass, and raise me like they were asked to by my father, instead, you roll yourself into a ball while drowning your guilt in the belief the people will one day come to their senses in seeing me like the hero they should have from the start, 
and ignore a child's cries that should have never been ignored in the first place," said Naruto, as he threw the individual to the floor and fled. The Sandame exclaimed, You will never become Hokage at this rate Naruto. You will always be the same stupid clueless boy you were growing up and will never understand what it takes to be a leader and to make sacrifices. Your father learned at least that much when he was Hokage of the Leaf, as he watched Naruto stop walking and turn around, walking toward the elderly cage until he stopped in front of his frail body with an angry expression on his wrinkled face. You still think I want to be Hokage? That I still want to rule over a bunch of spineless, arrogant, and egg-sucking pieces of gutter trash within the leaf? I'd sooner go to Iwa and become Chikage after they learn I'm the Yandaimi's son. You want to talk about my father making sacrifices? About being a leader, who makes sacrifices? Why not talk about me then because I've been making sacrifices for this Kami forsaken village since the day I was born? It's you retired Sandame Hokage, who does not understand what it means to make sacrifices, and you have long since tried to justify your guilt using the very position you have tainted since taking it over after my father died. May you burn in hell forever old man. May your soul burn for over a thousand lifetimes, for when you go to hell and believe me when I say you will go there. The demons that reside there will be sure to give you a royal welcome fitting for scum like you along with every arrogant baka this village holds," said Naruto, as he kicked the retired Hokage in the face, and then spit on the old man after doing so before walking off with the anbu that Tsunade ordered to arrest her former sensei. After Jiraiya, at a later time, while cleaning up steaming piles of elephant and bullcrap that his former teammate, who is now Hokage, had given him, Jiraiya was taking one of the very few breaks he was allowed. The Sanin sat there his shovel firmly planted in the ground in front of him, reflecting on how he had made such a huge mistake with his student's son and how he had abandoned the leaf rather than shielding the youngster from harm. Minato never ought to have gone to battle Kayubi, it was something I ought to have done. He could have worked on it later to make it even better, but I could have made the damn seal. All he had to do was play the role of the selfless, heroic, and righteous Baka. It's Naruto, Jiraiya thought to himself as he turned to face Naruto, who was frowning down at him from a fence post. Naruto said, his voice a mixture of disgust and mild amusement, so this is how the great toad Sanin Jiraiya spends his days when he's not peeping on women to keep his guilt from devouring his already weak soul. Jiraiya watched Naruto scoff at him and then turned to face the animals nearby. Sure rub it in my face why don't you, he said. Naruto saw Jiraiya turn pale and glare at him for being a smart ass. I would, but I don't want my hands smelling like animal crap and then going home to my future wives to have them smell it, he said. Similar to his father, Jiraiya thought as he watched the son of his late student look at him and then get a deadly serious look on his face, no respect whatsoever for their elders. Jiraiya winced at Naruto and looked away in shame, why didn't you come visit me like the old retarded monkey did when I returned from my mission to Kumo? Naruto asked. Jiraiya sensed Naruto's killer intent rising and knew the boy would demand an explanation, for one, I thought you might feel vengeful, and try to kill me. As for two, I. I couldn't see you because I didn't want to believe you came back, and alive from your mission to see the wreckage, Jiraiya said. I knew you were pathetic Arrow, Senen, but now even I in a hundred years, if given that amount of time to live, would have believed you wished me dead, Naruto said, watching Jiraiya scowl and getting up to walk away before a kanai struck him hard in the right leg. You didn't want to believe I would come back alive? Is that what you just said? Did I just hear my failure of a godfather wishing that I failed my mission and possibly died while on it? Turn the course around. Jiraiya asked Naruto, knowing that Naruto could have hit him with the sharp end but decided not to, what do you want me to say Naruto? That I hated you? That I wanted you dead? That I was like your mother and hoped the village would kill you? As he watched Jiraiya look at him startled, knowing that the man didn't expect his own shadow to rat him out, Naruto said, that would be a good thing to start with. I want to know just how far the hatred within you goes because your shadow is singing right now and I want to hear it from your own mouth and Jiraiya's inability to express his emotions openly was becoming intolerable. Alright, fine, I admit to hating you. The Yandaimi was my best student, and the Kayubi took what I had molded into a corpse after being sealed into you. So yeah, I do hate you Naruto. I still do. I hate you for holding the demon fox that killed my student, who was your father, and Kami helped me. I won't change how I feel about you in that regard, Jiraiya exclaimed, deciding to voice his feelings now, before they became too late. Pulling out his sword, Naruto said, I see. Tsunade had hoped you would know humility by doing this and admit you were wrong for being such a baka of a godfather, but it seems her hopes in you died long before she ever gave the order, and now I will have to do what must be done to set you free, as Jiraiya braced herself for combat. 
Jiraiya was tired of suppressing his anger over the losses he had endured over the years, including Tsunade's constant rejections, the Sandame's constant favoritism toward Orochimaru, and the loss of his own student, who was like a son to him. Bring it on monster. I no longer care what Tsunade thinks of me, I no longer care about anything regarding the leaf, and I don't care about you, Jiraiya exclaimed. Naruto's probing of the festering scab in Jiraiya's soul caused it to burst, indicating that letting it fester to this point had finally brought it out. Naruto struck the ground with his sword, and Jiraiya's shadow emerged, striking the Sanin in the back before piercing his chest. Shame. Tsunade will miss you, even if you are a super perverted baka, and filled with the mindless arrogant hate like all the other assholes in the village, Naruto said. Jiraiya, who was perplexed and saw Naruto approaching him with a serious expression on his face, exclaimed, W. What? What? You didn't think I would waste all my time and energy fighting you in an all-day battle, did you? I do not have the time nor the patience to fight someone lower than trash like you today. As for what awaits you in the afterlife, I think you along with my father are going to have a few choice words just like he's doing now with my bitch of a mother, and he will be the one to show you the true meaning of pain. Goodbye. Failure said Naruto, as he pulled out a further shadowy and cut off Jiraiya's head. Tsunade wasn't going to like this, but given that Kumo was no longer with him and Yugito was with him, he doubted she would raise a fuss like this given how much of a baka the man was. After Hokage's office, a few minutes, Tsunade exclaimed, you did what? As she gave Naruto the look that suggested he had made the worst mistake of his shinobi career. She also became even more pale when her godson knocked Jiraiya's head onto her desk. Naruto threw the tape on her desk and walked away without saying anything more. I killed Jiraiya. And before you even begin to think I'm betraying the village, I took the liberty of recording our conversation before I did, and have it here for you to listen to. Oh, FYI. That's a copy so don't even think of getting the idea of destroying it and then having me arrested, he said. You perverted Baka, Jiraiya. I was familiar with you, Tsunade thought to herself as she studied the face of her erstwhile teammate aware that he was the last to go after Naruto had finished with him. Tsunade was hoping that Anko would accompany Naruto so that she could watch her godson and make sure he didn't take any reckless actions. Time would tell. Wearing his shadow fox outfit, Naruto waited for Anko to meet him at the village's north gate entrance, exit, where he was assigned a special task by Tsunade. Killing the last male Sanin out of the three. Despite her mixed emotions, Tsunade gave him the assignment to Naruto understanding that Orochimaru had long since betrayed the Shinigami of his soul and that it was past due for the snake signing to make amends. Turning around, Naruto saw the woman emerge from one of the surrounding alleys wearing her typical clothes with a sly smile on her face. Come on out Anko. You can't hide from me. Not with that shadow of yours whispering things that would give a pervert a severe nosebleed, he said. Anko walked towards him, swaying her hips to indicate to the younger of the two that she wanted him badly. Damn. And here I thought I could sneak up behind you so I could grab that wonderful looking ass of yours, she said. Naruto saw Anko's eyes widen and tackled him into an embrace, his head now in her breasts as she repeatedly said, Thank you, before letting him go. Sorry to disappoint, but to make it up to you, I got us this mission to hunt down, and kill your old sensei since my spy network has found Orochimaru's most recent hideout that he won't be moving from for the next two months, Naruto said. Maybe after the mission is over we can have a little fun, Anko remarked, grinning wickedly and tracing random patterns with her index finger across his chest. Well, maybe. But first we have to finish the mission, and then we can enjoy ourselves, Naruto said, smiling behind his mask. He then gave Anko a hard grab on her behind, causing the special Junin to squeak in shock. He then released her and revealed the woman's red face. It was obvious that no one had ever had the guts to grab her behind because they were afraid of losing the hand and another crucial male appendage. Anko yelled, pervert, as she reached to slap him, but he easily parried her attack and moved her face to his masked one, now less than an inch away. Naruto gave her another ass slap, let go of her, and ran off laughing the whole way. Maybe I am one. Maybe I'm not. However, you opened the door with your flirting, the innuendos, and this is the result of it. Don't like it? Then don't flirt and give me innuendos that are made to make me blush, he said. Anko yelled after him, when I catch you pervert, I'm going to cut that hand of yours, and mount it on my wall. But even as she ran after him, she could feel her heart quickening, and a part of her mind kept telling Naruto that she wouldn't mind if he grabbed her ass again, much less gave it a good spanking. A few days later, Namikaze estates, with a satisfied sigh, Hanada sipped her tea and observed the two girls sitting to either side of her in a triangle so they could gaze at each other. 
It was evident that they were as happy as she was. Hanada and Yugido completely agreed with Haku that she had made her own special blend of tea because she had felt the sudden need for it. At first, the arrangement wasn't easy because each of them had to establish their own legitimate territory when it came to Naruto, and if they claimed that claws didn't threaten to protrude, they would be lying. In Yugido's instance, it was extremely literal. Luckily, none of their claws ever showed, as the three realized that fighting over Naruto would not benefit them both and that they should instead find common ground in their desire to see him happy. Being the alpha female was something Naruto didn't want, so it was important to keep in mind that each girl in the harem had to trust the others because they were a part of something unique. He showed his equal love for each of them by not giving any of them too much or too little, and he let them know it when he was around. As Hanada said, I hope Naruto.kun is doing all right with Anko. They went to hunt down Orochimaru at one of his bases, she was expressing her knowledge that the snake Sanin was a formidable foe and that Kabuto was also a threat. Haku said, Naruto.kun can handle Orochimaru and Anko can make sure Kabuto is kept at bay, knowing that Naruto would eliminate Kabuto to ensure that everything the Sanin accomplished died with those two, and would destroy Orochimaru if Anko was not given that honor. You don't want to feel the wrath of Naruto.kun, Yugito remarked, having witnessed the boy's strength against the rakage and the reason the rakage gave up control over her. That is an understatement, Yugito said. Saying, I just wish Sakura would leave him alone. She's constantly on the warpath trying to kill Naruto.kun like the stupid bitch she is just like when we were younger, Hinata expressed her frustration. Sakura had visited the house yesterday, howling like a banshee and demanding that Naruto come out so she could kill him in order to exact revenge on Sasuke. The pink haired slut was sent sailing into the Hokage monument when Hinata gave her a gentle fist slap across the face. We will not tolerate Sakura's ardent Uchiha fan. Girl ways any longer. We will leave her alone for the time being, but if Sakura becomes a threat to Naruto, no matter how minor, we kill her, and burn the body just for the hell of it," Yugito uttered, seeing the other two nod in agreement. What about the other two girls? Tenten, Chan and Hana. Chan both seemed to like Naruto.kun quite a bit from what I saw from before when he was in contact with them, Haku inquired, curious as to the two girls' plans regarding the Shadow Fox. Hanada stated, I know Tenten. Chan is interested in him and would like to be in a possible relationship, but I also know she is interested in him and would like to be in a relationship, and as for Hannah. Chan, it is too soon to tell with her, and the feelings she may feel could possibly be instinct related in terms of finding an alpha. Hanada was aware of the two's interactions with Naruto during his return to Konoha and knew they were eager to learn more about him. Yugito, seeing the girls stare at her as if she were crazy, said, to be honest, I think those two will fit right in with us and that Anko woman can also liven things up if she joins Naruto. Kun's harem. It dawned on her that the Nibi vessel had no idea how Anko could get very excited about things. Well, Yugito would have to wait for some time to learn. Hokage Tower. Currently, a civilian council member yelled, this is outrageous, you have no right to do this, as Anbu dragged him away while beating and kicking him all the way to the Ibiki. Specifically, one of many. Tsunade stated, actually, the fire daimyo gave me all the rights I needed to violate yours, and I found enough mismanagement of funds at the hands of you Bakas to have you all executed. But then I thought, what would be the fun in that, and decided to let Ibiki earn his pay, as the final member of the civilian council was being dragged out of her office. She then turned to the shinobi council, giving the Sandame's former teammates a look as if they were about to urinate. H. Hokage. Sama. S. Surely our records are impeccable, and are a dot all in O. O. Order, Homura uttered, observing Tsunade scrutinize him with narrowed eyes before turning suspiciously to Kaharu. The two were cowering in the corner, nodding their heads rapidly. Tsunade said, Fortunately, you two have clean financials so for the moment you are off the hook with me, but if you so much as look at Naruto wrong, so much as think up a foul name in your head, I will arrest you both, and have Ibiki squeeze out every piece of information you hold in those wrinkled dried up heads of yours, got it? Why? Yes, Hokage. Sama, both of them simultaneously exclaimed. Tsunade stomped her foot, shook the room, and yelled, Good. Now get the fuck out of my office. The two old farts left the room acting as though they were in their twenties once more. Oh no. That had been her dream for years, although I've heard of clearing houses, this is absurd. Shizun, who had witnessed Tsunade arrive early this morning, thought this and started going through every last piece of paperwork without taking a drink before calling the councils to be torn assholes. Tsunade exclaimed, send in that landlord from the new apartment, 
she had one more task to complete, involving the proprietor of Naruto's previous apartment. The landlord, who had entered the room trembling like a small child, was getting more and more agitated due to the Hokage's sly smile as he heard Tsunade's fingers tapping on her desk. As he ought to be. Why? UW. Wanted to S. S. See me H. H. Hokage. Sama? The man asked, observing that Hokage was not impressed with what she saw and was treating him like a piece of meat. Yes, as you are aware, Namikaze Naruto's status was changed from deceased to alive due to the information that came to light about him being the Shadow Fox. You also know that he was the only tenant in the shithole that used to be your place, and you didn't live there either. According to Konoha's various housing laws under apartment buildings, a landlord forfeits their right to be landlord of the apartment and hands it over to the only tenant that lives there. The only way to get it back is if the new owner gives it to you and hands over the deed to the home, Tsunade said, observing the man grow fearful because he had invested a lot of money to turn the place into something akin to a luxury hotel, and now he was being told that he was going to lose it to the demon brat. The landlord saw Tsunade scowl at his near error and narrow her eyes at him, but that the dot boy lost his right to the place when he was declared dead, as such, the deed would go right back to me, and stay with me, he exclaimed. True, but it hasn't been a full three years since then, and now that his listing within the leaf ranks is no longer Kia. It means the deed is to be handed over to him immediately upon his return to Konoha. Failure to comply with my orders, sabotage the building, and do anything illegal to prevent Naruto from claiming the property as his will result in you along with various other parties involved being punished publicly for your actions until Naruto kills you for it, Tsunade said, as she observed the landlord leaping as if he were a rabid creature. The man yelled, hoping that his words would be heard by someone who would support him in the future. This is absurd. I will not hand my property over to that demonic abomination. It was bad enough that thing lived in my complex since it was born, but now this, I'd rather die. Tsunade met him by slamming her fist against her desk with such force that it shook the room and her killer intent came off, making the landlord urinate all over himself. Tsunade exclaimed, that can be arranged. She was not going to put up with this man's haughty nonsense and would even kill him immediately before calling his death an accident. The former owner of Naruto's recently acquired property appeared to be about to have a heart attack upon hearing this news, as he had called Tsunade, thinking her threat to kill him was a bluff, only to discover it wasn't. Tsunade called a faithful Anbu who had been in the room as he was leaving with his soiled pants on, telling him to keep an eye on the Baka in case he attempted anything on the property. Orochimaru's laid out after three days. As Orochimaru was conducting some experiments and his right-hand man was reviewing some test results, he asked, How is the progress coming with my latest vessel Kabuto? He's doing remarkably well, Orochimaru. Sama, it won't be long until he's ready for you to take over his body, Kabuto remarked, recognizing that Orochimaru's body was among his better ones when he saw the Sanin grinning deviously. Good. Make sure nothing happens to him while I run these tests, Orochimaru said smirking menacingly as he examined the blood samples in front of him. Soon afterward, the base's interior structure began to tremble with explosions, and the sounds of impending death could be heard. A sound shinobi exclaimed over the intercom, we're under attack. All forces defend and protect Orochima. Ah! But was soon eliminated by something that was obviously causing him a great deal of pain, as evidenced by the different sounds of flesh being torn off that could be heard over the intercom. Whoever dares attack the great Orochimaru of the Sanin, come forth and feel the wrath of a vengeful immortal god. Orochimaru growled in rage as he fled his base under attack to find out who was behind it and to make those who had attacked him regret it. Hearing a wicked laugh to his right, Orochimaru turned to see a sight that filled his wicked heart with fear he had not felt in years, the Shadow Fox. The Sanin was surprised to see Kabuto fighting Anko when he got outside, but at the same time, it looked like she was not the source of the carnage before him. The Shadow Fox was sitting on a crimson throne, leaking blood all around him, his right leg over his left, one hand interlacing the other, and he was in front of his mask staring into the Sanin's very soul. Orochimaru, not to be outdone, had heard about the Shadow Fox's true identity throughout the elemental countries and had been surprised that the boy was still alive after learning of his death in Wave Country. He had really gone looking for the body, only to find it wasn't there, and cursed himself thinking that the grave the people had given the brat was fake while secretly burying him somewhere else. Any action in finding out where would have alerted the Sandame, who would have contacted Jiraiya, and the Toad Sanin would have gone to investigate personally. Why did Orochimaru seem so shocked? Undoubtedly, you were aware that since I was now working for the Leaf, I would track you down and eliminate your child abuser, uttered Naruto, 
seeing the Sanin growl at him. He then swiftly removed Kusanagi from his mouth. To tell the truth, Orochimaru had long suspected that Naruto intended to exact revenge on the village and its residents. To be perfectly honest, I was under the impression that you hated the leaf, and would seek its destruction before I could do it myself, he said. The leaf and everyone inside it, I detest. I'm just picking on the bakas that hurt me the most, but that doesn't mean that everyone has to suffer because there are good people there even if they are a minority. Naruto remarked, like your old partner in crime, Danzo, for example, observing Orochimaru grow enraged at the news because he had spent a lot of time giving Danzo the Senju bloodline and now such potential was gone. God damn you! You instantly destroy the Senju bloodline that I worked so hard to give him, Orochimaru snapped, feeling that the boy was smirking at him from behind that metal fox mask, and it was annoying him. Naruto saw Orochimaru staring at him in shock and then fear because Jiraiya was the strongest of the three Sani. Well, if it makes you feel any better I evened the score for you by killing Jiraiya, and getting the old man arrested on criminal charges, Naruto said. Jiraiya is. Dead. That's not possible, Orochimaru uttered those words as Naruto slowly ascended from his red throne, laughing again at the Sanin as though what had been said was merely a jest. A brief word of caution before confronting me, Orochimaru. Teme. I strongly advise you to take a piss and then pray to your helpless god, said Naruto. With a graceful movement of his right hand, the shadow lines that had previously escaped his fingertips were now dancing in the air as if they were alive. What's he doing? It seems like he's using chakra strings, but I feel like there's something else, Orochimaru thought as he stepped back and cautiously observed the shadowy string. We have to stay away from those strings at all costs, because that's what Orochimaru, Sama used to kill everyone nearby, it was a fatal error, as the special Junin released lethal snakes from her trench coat sleeves encircling Kabuto and biting his upper body around his face with their poisonous fangs, the man uttered as he withdrew his gaze from Anko. Even with his own healing abilities, Kabuto was unable to fight for very long and couldn't take much more. Orochimaru thought, tensing at the sight of the shadow string moving around almost unnaturally, what, all this death was from that? Well, I didn't do everything myself. Anko blushed and burst out laughing at being put in such an awkward situation, but Anko, Chan did contribute a little by hurling a few hundred explosive tags in all directions, said Naruto. It was successful, as though to defend her actions, Anko spoke, and Naruto gave a head nod. That Anko. Chan did, indeed. That it did, that's right, Naruto said, letting out another evil, if not sinister, laugh before the infamous shinobi unleashed his deadly shadow strings on Orochimaru, who scrambled to avoid them, barely escaping with his life. Boy, I ain't going to die easy. I mean, I'm a Sanin. Mud Dragon Jutsu, Earth Style, uttered Orochimaru, gesturing hastily before hurling his jutsu at the Shadow Fox, who charged directly at him and effortlessly invaded it with grace. Naruto remarked, so foolish, as he sidestepped the length of the jutsu and made Orochimaru jump back every few seconds to avoid the Sanin's closing gap, which was attempting to sever his body with the Kusanagi sword. Leave me alone, knowing that one wrong move would destroy him. Orochimaru tried to use his sword to keep Naruto away from his person with those shadow strings all around the shadow fox. Allow the pain to commence. With ease, Naruto sidestepped the sword thrust from Orochimaru's weapon and wrapped the shadow strings around Sanin's wrists, the snake, before pulling on the strings, causing the traitor of the leaf's own hands to break. My hands. My hands were taken away by you. Orochimaru cried out in agony as he witnessed Naruto kick his sword to Anko and the woman grabbed it with her free hand before stabbing Kabuto to confirm the medic nin's official death. This is where you say a final prayer before passing away, it's the effect the infamous shinobi was hoping for, declared Naruto as he wrapped Orochimaru in the shadow strings and pulled hard. They had cut Orochimaru into pieces. Anko exclaimed, you have no idea how hot you just made from doing that to him, as she observed her bastard former teacher had been reduced to nothing more than sliced chunks of flesh, dripping with blood, of course. There were no fake bodies or mud clones, everything that was in front of them was Orochimaru in bits and pieces, and there was no way to bring the old bastard back. Are you up for taking the lead? When Naruto noticed her smirk and followed her hand signals, he said. Naruto.kun, you really are a gentleman. You get bonus points from me for that. Fireball Jutsu is the fire style. Enko exclaimed, it's amazing to see the Sanin's body turning to ash, as she rained down fire Jutsu on the remnants. Excited for it, Naruto remarked, chuckling again behind his mask. 
he knew that his demonic voice had made her feel so attracted to him. He was going to love getting laid by this gorgeous, seductive woman. After three days, Akatsuki home base. That has been verified, Orochimaru and Kabuto are dead, Pain exclaimed, watching the other Akatsuki members gape at him in disbelief and grow tense in response. Specifically Conan, the fox with a shadow. As soon as Hidan noticed Pain nodding, he began to swear loudly. With Mitarashi Anko's assistance, according to Zetsu's account, the Kayubi vessel employed what can only be Kalchado strings, to eliminate the majority of Orochimaru's soldiers, followed by Orochimaru himself, remarked Pain. Sasori appeared intrigued by the method Naruto employed to eliminate everyone, and he questioned whether it could be applied to his puppets. So, precisely what are you asking us to do? Observing Pain scowl thoughtfully, Didera pondered his options and spoke. Sasori and you will soon pursue the Shukaku vessel. Now is the time to assemble all nine of them. Kakuzu and Hidan will pursue the Nibi. You will go to Konoha and pick her up for the ceiling now that she is out of Kumo. According to what I've been told, Jiraiya of the Sanin has passed away, leaving only the last Sanin, who is currently the village's Hikage, against the leaf. Payne said, wipe out anyone that stands in your way, observing the four members nod before Zetsu and the man's projections disappeared, leaving only Conan and the man. How should we handle the Kayubi vessel? We don't even know if he still has the demon fox, Conan remarked, realizing that using all nine and securing them in a specific order was essential to the plan's success. Conan, we'll take care of him soon enough. Sadly, Kisame and Itachi's deaths have severely undermined our group at the moment. To make up for such losses at the hands of the Shadow Fox, we will first gather the one. Tail beasts and then the two. Tail ones, Pain stated, observing Conan nod but recognizing her concern and the fact that this was not how she had anticipated things to turn out. Do we really want to attack the leaf and seize the Nibi vessel in order to exact his wrath upon us? According to the rumors of Herd, the Shadow Fox has grown attached to her and might take this personally, Conan remarked. She had joined the organization out of love, and now she was with a man who threatened to hurt someone by potentially taking away their ability to feel that way. Was she turning into a phony? It is unavoidable. After Itachi and Kisame were lost, it was inevitable that the Shadow Fox would come into contact with us once more. I see it as a means to even the odds and compensate for our losses, Payne remarked understanding that the two demons capture would atone for the two Akatsuki members' deaths and return events to normal. You've evolved. Conan uttered these words, knowing that the man in front of her would never behave in such a way. She was hurt by this and felt pain in her own heart. Saying, change happens with the times Conan, pain disregarded the angry expression on Conan's face and, a few moments later, halted his form's projection onto the woman. Two days later, at Konoha Prison Center, the retired Hokage of Konoha, of course, didn't eat the crap they served him because he knew all about what was mashed in it and what it could do to the mind. After all, he had approved of it in his prime in secret meetings with his shinobi advisors during his time running the leaf in his prime and kept the process going covertly under the Yondaimi's own nose. The former Hokage of Konoha sat on his bed, in his cell, shackles on all four of his limbs with each limb connected to its parallel twin counterpart and a broken shell of what he once was after coming out of retirement when the Yondaimi died fighting Kayubi. Since he was an elderly man, no one had forced him to eat the drug, laced food that altered perceptions. However, it seems that the ruling class wanted him to remain sane during his execution so that everyone in the leaf could witness how mentally stable he had been during his previous reign as Hokage. And witness him stumble as badly as well. Evening, aging primate, has anyone yet to violate your old ass? When it's over, I could come back and talk to you then. Smiling at the shattered body in front of him, Naruto emerged from the shadows of the former Hokage's cell. The Yondaimi's son removed his mask and looked at Hiruzen with red demonic eyes. Come to see me one last time before my execution I see, Hiruzen said. Do you think I could deliver anything less? After all, Naruto said, I do have you to thank for everything that has happened to me in life and the mission you sent Team 7 on, which you knew was not a C rank. His eyes narrowed and the smile that suggested he was planning naughty jokes disappeared from his mouth. So you found out about that, Hiruzen said, noting that Tazuna wasn't being completely honest about the escorting and that he had purposefully given Team 7 that mission knowing what it was. It's challenging to refrain. Above all, you had the fault of keeping records that were overly organized and thoroughly documented. It wasn't difficult at all to go through the mission scrolls for that day and discover that the mission wasn't even marked as a C rank from the beginning. Instead, even though you knew it was an A-rank mission, 
you gave it to Kakashi using a genjutsu so that he could use it to stimulate the Uchiha's bastard eyes and possibly kill me all at once. Did you really think I would return from that mission unscathed? The councils were putting pressure on you to remove me, but they knew that if you did, word would spread that my father was the son of the Yandaimi, and the village would appear to be a group of inbred bastards. Since the plan seemed to give them what they wanted twice from the beginning, you made a compromise with them knowing that they would agree. They obtain the Sharingan eyes from Sasuke, and as a birthday present, they bury me six feet below the surface so they can dance on it. How could they say no? Naruto observed the former Sandame Hokage grunt, which caused the notorious Shadow Fox to chuckle at the elderly man. Naruto, it seems like you have me figured out. Is this the reason you're here? To take pride in having solved every puzzle. With hatred in his eyes, the elderly ex. Cage turned to face the boy. Me, gloat, my dear Sandame. Sama, how you hurt me. Please, don't make me sound like the late Uchiha bitch. I mean, I have plenty to brag about already, and the council members who would blow him away to get their own asses off. I have come to inform you that the public execution you had anticipated will not take place. Both Tsunade and the Fire Daimyo have decided that you will be executed in secret because, in spite of all of your transgressions, the majority of the people who live in Konoha, the public masses, still love you. They believed that the populace would rebel against this kind of thing and that it would be necessary to deceive them. Old man, you are fully aware of that. I know he touched a nerve, Naruto uttered as he noticed the retired Hokage, who was now a prisoner, glaring even harder. And you call me a hypocrite for doing it? Here is an asked, observing Naruto give him a mocking pout and, just for kicks, the finger. Go ahead, Hiruzen, all I'm doing is using your script. Your inability to tolerate it when someone else takes advantage of your own moves against you is not my fault. However, Naruto saw the old man's eyes widen in shock and then narrow as rage burned within them. I feel it is important to tell you that your favorite student is dead, and will be ready to meet you in hell, the man said. You little bastard, Hiruzen exclaimed, realizing that his prodigy of a pupil had been taken from him. He had always treasured his childhood memories of spending time with the snake Sanin. Oh, does that news hurt you? Then you obviously won't like the information that I also killed Jiraiya too earlier, right before your arrest, Naruto remarked, watching as the elderly man leapt off his bed at him. However, he was halted by the chains that held his limbs to the floor beneath the bed, and he didn't make it to the shadow fox, only spitting distance away. I'll murder you, crying, the former Hokage tried to break free but was unable to do so due to the seals on the chains that had depleted his chakra. Naruto, on the other hand, just laughed like a child seeing a wine. Up toy move. What a squander of energy. I give you an A for uniqueness, but AF for trying, and making it seem plausible, declared Naruto, brandishing his sword and severing the old man's head completely. He then let the shadows eat the head, making the body appear to be slowly being broken down by stomach acid. It wasn't dramatic or fancy, but it got the job done, and Naruto needed to report to the Hokage that the execution order had been carried out while the villagers would remain unaware of it, believing the old man had died in prison, losing what little dignity he still had, and if they happened to find out later that this was all a lie, then fuck them if they hated it. Screw them all, Mitarashi Anko, dressed in the formidable Shadow Fox uniform of Namikaze Naruto, sauntered, yes, sauntered, into the leaf with a smile on her face, radiant like the sun at dawn. A sly smile lurked behind his mask, one that any man would have to look past to see, though it would be kissing and telling. That said, yeah I got some and from Anko without a limb lost in the process. Naturally, Naruto felt that Anko deserved recognition for all the abuse she endured as the now, deceased Orochimaru's apprentice. He was too much of a gentleman to treat Anko in this manner. You go relax in the hot springs, Anko, Chan. I'll report to the Hokage about our successful mission, Naruto said letting his mask fall to his head deep in the valley of delights that so few people have ever experienced. He heard the woman squeal with excitement before she hugged him to death. And even fewer made it out of the aftermath alive. You're the best Naruto.kun. Maybe later we can have an encore of what we did on the way back here and in your bed this time, Anko complimented him while wearing a mask. She winked and skipped to the hot springs, grinning. I'm going to speak for Anko. Chan. Naruto. Walking with a skip in his own step thought, she may be sadistic and bloodthirsty, but make her happy, and she'll do things with her tongue that cause one's toe curl like the wicked witch with the red slippers in that Oz movie. He almost wished that people could see his face behind the mask. Female side of hot springs. 
Hannah exclaimed, oh, I so needed this. As she let out a sigh, content with her body giving into the warm, calming water. Yuhi Kuranai, her friend, sighed in agreement. Kuranai heard footsteps approaching from a woman and said, agreed. I know I'm all for women being strong, but there is nothing wrong with us being pampered, and being, well like women. Shortly after, Anko entered the room and changed into a towel before getting in the bath. Anko remarked, I love my life, as she took pleasure in the warm water's ability to relieve her own physical pain. Damn Anko, you're practically glowing. Killing Orochimaru must have been way more satisfying than I thought it would be and rightfully so so all things considered, Hannah remarked, seizing the chance to carry out the mission because she knew the woman was desperate to kill her sensei. I let the guy live, was followed by A, and I got some, look that left Anko looking shocked. That wasn't the only thing I found to be satisfying, Anko said. Kuranai asked, really, but the only guy that was with you was, you didn't. As Hannah stepped forward and displayed an almost wolf-like expression, Anko made her friends perspire at the happy expression on her face. I so did, I mean, how could I not reward him after killing Orochimaru, and letting me kill Kabuto while all their bud buddies were slaughtered around us? It was so, romantic, Anko exclaimed. Kuranai scowled at the Inazuka woman for her lack of detail as Hannah inquired, oh dot k. So, how was the fox boy? Kuranai reprimanded Hannah, knowing that Hinata was keeping quiet about her relationship with Naruto. Hannah, you shouldn't ask Anko to kill and tell. At least not like that, she said. Kuranai could tell by looking at her former student's glowing body that their moments together could be remembered for eternity. The memory made Anko's two friends blush and perspire a second time. Oh he's no boy Hannah. Chan. Naruto.kun is all fox man. Went at it about 10 miles away from the destroyed base, right in the forest area like two wild horny animals should, and it was just, oh Kami I think I just had an orgasm from thinking about it, Anko exclaimed, her body trembling with pleasure. Hannah remarked, so Naruto rocked your world huh, is he an alpha or did you make him your bitch? Knowing Anko to be a domineering woman who enjoyed being in charge. Anko laughed excitedly at the idea of going at it with Naruto.kun again. Make him my bitch, please. Naruto.kun isn't someone you can dominate when it comes to sex. He's all Alpha Hana. Chan and I doubt you could tame that man or what he's got down south. Oh Kami I love that thing, she said. Oh really, how much are you willing to wager that I can tame Naruto and be the dominant one during sex? Hana asked, noticing Kuranai giving her a strange look and Anko giving her an evil smile at her sudden epiphany. Anko saw Hana smiling at the thought of Anko making an absurd, I need Dango. Gimme gimme, statement, saying, so you want to make a bet huh? Okay, I'll set it up, you go on a date with Naruto.kun tomorrow since I'm going to be with him tonight with the other girls in the house. If you can get him in the sack and dominate him all, swear off Dango for a month. Hannah said thoughtfully, fine, and if I lose the bet all, hum, as Anko grinned menacingly once more and Kuranai's face was palmed with a, oh no, expression. Anko said, you'll be Naruto.kun's sex slave for a whole month, glancing at Hannah and Kuranai's quizzical expression. As Hannah became unsure about this, she asked, what? How come your stakes of losing the better lower than mine? She noticed Kuranai giving Anko the, woman scolding, look. Anko, giggling maniacally at her Inazuka friend and seeming as though her pride had just been bruised, asked, what's wrong Hannah? Chan. Afraid that you'll lose the bet and be dominated by Naruto.kun, Afraid you'll be his bitch tomorrow and then a month afterwards only to enjoy it and never want it to end. Hannah stretched out her hand and Anko grabbed it to seal the deal, Kuranai the unfortunate witness to this event. Afraid, afraid, Inazuka Hannah isn't afraid of anything. I accept your bet, get ready to go on a psychotic episode after going a whole month without Dango. I'll have my camera at the ready to see your moments of craziness, Hannah said. Anko grinned at Hannah and said, great, plus, I can stay the entire month being his fuck toy and getting fucked by Naruto.kun is better than Dango. So ha, she knew she had to tell Naruto about her date with the Inazuka woman. Hokage Tower. Currently, for a moment, Naruto gave a strange little laugh in front of Tsunade, and then he started to take it seriously as the Hokage herself arched an eyebrow at him. Tsunade asked, is there something you find funny? Because she was curious about what was happening inside his masked head and detested the mask at the moment. Naruto, hiding behind his mask, grinned and said, oh, 
I just had this strange feeling that a hot woman was talking about me with other hot women, and it involved something perverted. He also noticed that Tsunade had tick marks on her head. Saying, too much information, Naruto, Tsunade refrained from giving him a punch. You asked, Tsunade massaged her temples as Naruto said simply. Tsunade remarked, you could have lied, and Naruto laughed. Seeing Tsunade glare at him angrily, Naruto exclaimed, I thought it was treason to lie to a cage. Tsunade, on the verge of losing her cool, asked, that only involves the miss. Oh forget it. The point is Orochimaru and Kabuto are dead now, correct? Dead and in hell, Naruto declared merely, glancing at the Hokage in a relaxed manner as the woman in front of him reclined in her chair. Tsunade asked as she watched him get up from his chair and head out the door, so what do you intend to do next? Naruto said as he left the room, simple. I'm going to hunt down the remaining Akatsuki members and make them drown in the darkness they covet so much. As Tsunade reached for her own life, she thought to herself, damn this job, but Shizune grabbed her instead, sealing her away in a scroll. No, Tsunade. Sama, you must complete your paperwork, Shizune yelled as she noticed her teacher and Hokage furiously fuming. Tsunade made the guards outside her office perspire. Damn it Shizune, I'm the Hokage and as the Hokage I order you to hand me that sake so I can get wasted. She exclaimed. They also believed Anko's addiction to Dango was unhealthy. At some point later, Namikaze estates. With a satisfied sigh, Naruto lay in bed with Hinata to his right, Haku to his left, and Anko, who was now attached to him at the hip, on top of him. Yugito was on the ground, her eyes glazed over and her smile connoting that Naruto had truly turned her world upside down. Kayubi asked, thinking again about the future, as he noticed the distressed expression on his vessel's face and the feelings he was experiencing. How am I not able to? Naruto stroked Anko's hair and enjoyed how she moaned when he touched a particular spot behind her left ear. I have one problem down, but there are plenty more where that came from, and they are going after my kin, he thought to himself. Don't worry, Kit, two of its strongest members are dead, and the others will follow once we have a few days off. Kayubi uttered, sensing the annoyance of his vessel and the necessity of eliminating the Akatsuki. I hope so, Kayubi. Naruto decided it was time to give his mind a rest and turn his attention back to his love life. I guess a few days relaxing and then hunting the rest of the Akatsuki is the best plan for now, he thought to himself. And the growing number of women within it. The following day, Yugito limped through the kitchen to the refrigerator to get a gallon of milk and get herself something to drink. How could you put Naruto.kun in the middle of a bed Anko, Chan? She questioningly asked. Anko saw them all blush and Naruto was grinning at them in return. I had to defend Naruto. Kun's honor. She basically accused him of being a sub in the sack and we four know that is certainly not the case when it comes to getting laid, Anko said. Yugito heard Nibi chuckling inside and thought, you could say that again. She told the demon to stop talking so she could get over her soreness from the previous night. Naruto saw the woman pout and then sighed in defeat. I have no problem going on a date with Hana, but I won't simply screw her just so you can win a bet Anko. Chan, and only go that way unless she truly wants it. Understand, he said. Everyone, including Naruto, started to perspire when Anko said, okay, but I can still have you in the sack should I lose, right? The young Namikaze shrugged his shoulders and nodded his head, and the woman leapt about in delight as her lover observed her bouncing breasts move in such an erotic manner behind her shirt. With each jump, Naruto was able to see farther south without difficulty because Anko was only sporting a hip, length shirt. Naruto said, well, I'm off. I have to go help Tenten with her swordsmanship, while donning his mask, black slacks, and a black trench coat with bandages around his upper body. Regretfully, Haruno Sakura was going to knock on the door when he opened it, and she attempted to strike Naruto in the face when she saw him. The girl was weak and easily pushed aside as if she were nothing, so the key word here is obviously being tried. Sakura saw Naruto laugh, which only made the girl angrier. I've been waiting for your return monster. I'm going to avenge Sasuke.kun and then free those girls in that tainted house of your demon magic that binds them to be enslaved to your will, Sakura said. Sakura was looking very angry at the moment, so Naruto asked, are you serious? You actually think that? Sakura exclaimed, of course. How else does it explain so many women falling for you? The fact you didn't die from your injuries back in wave country. Answer me that, Naruto shrugged, unable or unwilling to provide a satisfactory explanation. Nevertheless, 
Naruto reasoned that he should at least explain himself to Sakura and get her out of his hair before doing something, awful to his erstwhile teammate. Maybe these women like me for me. Maybe I treat them with respect and love because they aren't shallow like you. Maybe I survived all my injuries because I simply choose to live instead of dying regardless if the people of Konoha like you wish it to the contrary, said Naruto as Sakura grew increasingly enraged. Sakura said, as if it were the easiest thing in the world, of course I want you dead Baka. You killed Sasuke.kun. Is it not bothering you that he attempted to kill me first? That he would betray you, Konoha, and everyone on the planet for a meager sliver of power? Asked Naruto, realizing that Sakura's fidelity to the late Uchiha was evident and that no amount of jutsu could ever free her from it. Sakura charged at Naruto, shocked when a claw made of pure shadow energy from Naruto's torso grabbed and started slowly crushing her body. What part of my life growing up don't you understand Baka? My purpose growing up was to keep you down and help Sasuke.kun not matter what. Sasuke. Kun's happiness was all that matters. Sakura exclaimed. Just like your slut of a mother. Always being shallow and narrow-minded when it comes to others. Your precious Sasuke.kun died a traitor's death just like the rest of his clan for their attempt at the coup and deserved to be wiped out for the crimes they've committed over the years in secret. That fact you would defend him and the Uchiha clan means you were a traitor to the founding beliefs this village once had, said Naruto with a demonic voice. He had had enough of Sakura and her ranting. Sakura felt her body being crushed harder and decided to stare defiantly at Naruto. And you are going to die a demon's death. The village will never accept you regardless of your heritage. Those women will be forever tormented by being associated with you and any bastard children they have will be tortured beyond measure just to teach your damn family a lesson, Sakura said. After saying, should what you say actually come to pass, the one thing I will have to look forward to is knowing Haruno will not be there to see it happen, and be too busy suffering in hell, Naruto suddenly had a fox's shadowy mouth emerge from his torso, giving the appearance of its tongue as it crushed Sakura's body. Sakura heard Naruto laugh at her words and retorted, you don't have the balls to kill me. I'm your, Sakura. Chan, and you've worshipped me since the days of the academy. The pink. Haired girl screamed in terror as the fox's jaws opened beyond comprehension and pulled Sakura into its mouth, its big, sharp teeth making a loud, crunch. Sound as it closed, and I have regretted those days every second of every minute of every hour of every day that has gone by since I became what I am. That's not likely to change after I kill you, Naruto said. The fox that materialized on Naruto's upper body chewed, chomped, and moved the mass of flesh in its mouth for a moment before spitting the remains of Haruno Sakura a good 15 feet away. Before Naruto used a fire jutsu to burn the body, what it spit out was essentially the equivalent of mangled flesh, bone, and blood in one large heap. He thought, damn, that felt good. Why hadn't he taken action sooner? Naruto set out to enjoy his day and give the girls at his house a day off before seeing Tenten for additional training in the art of swordsmanship. Kami knew those four people deserved it because, after killing Orochimaru and visiting the now deceased Sandame Hokage, he vented his frustrations on them through passionate sex the previous night. Because he had a successful relationship with her so soon after killing Orochimaru, many would argue that Anko was only a one-time fling. However, what people would never realize is that, to him at least, a person's shadow always told him everything about them and gave him access to their inner nature. Anko was a woman Naruto could really look up to because she endured the abuse the leaf gave her and proved that she was resilient, just as Naruto had always known. It revealed to him every detail about Anko, including her flaws and her wish to find the one man who would treat her fairly in spite of her sensei, who was now deceased. To be accepted for Anko as she was, loved for her wild, crazy self, and tolerated when others refused to. In their time together, Naruto could take care of Anko in every way possible, Something he'd immediately told her on their way back to the leaf, both before and after their forest romp. Naturally, Naruto's audacity alarmed Anko, but he also shared with her the benefits of his mastery of the shadows and his own desire to help her fill the void in her heart. Naturally, she had given him a direct look and essentially threatened to ruin him in any way her sadistic mind could come up with, showing him absolutely no mercy if he let her down. Naruto had just given her a gentle smile and then gently kissed her lips, assuring Anko that there was nothing to be concerned about in terms of the threat at that time. Naturally, Naruto would not be coerced into anything by Anko's feminine charms, unlike the Nara clan head and his spouse, or Shikamaru and Sabaku no Tamari based on what he had witnessed of their actualized relationship. 
With all the ups and downs in their relationship, Naruto would always be Naruto and Anko would always be Anko, no matter what. With Tenten. Later on. The sound of blades slamming as Tenten and Naruto moved to outdo each other in their duel was audible from the training ground. Tenten had so far held up fairly well considering her own sword skills, but even she was aware that Naruto was playing a practical joke on her and that he was grinning in a way that would irritate her if she saw it behind his shadow fox mask. It didn't help that he laughed when she would growl at him from time to time. Tenten pointed dramatically at Naruto, who was tilting his head to the right. You're mocking me behind that mask of yours, aren't you? Tenten asked, and as he shrugged, the girl became even more enraged. Who? Me? No, not me, never, I could never eat. Okay maybe a little, laughed Naruto, finding it hilarious to watch as Tenten made an irate face. With the characteristic feminine rage that all women were known for, Tenten pulled out a war club and exclaimed, that's it. I'm going to bash your brains in for making fun of me. But I'm not making fun of you, Naruto remarked as he sidestepped her club, which left a massive crater on the ground, and pondered whether Tsunade had ordered this weapon to be made. Given her familiarity with the Hokage, it is likely that she placed the order and then forgot about it due to her heavy drinking. Tenten yelled, liar, as she swung around once more, but horizontally this time. Naruto jumped to the top of the enormous club and peered down at the girl, wondering where he had gone since she had never seen him move. Naruto, grinning behind his mask, said, says the angry woman with a club clearly designed to hurt men, as Tenten attempted to shake him off after glancing at him from above. Finally getting Naruto off her club, Tenten said, well, it's clear you think I can't hit you because I'm a woman, and launched another attack at him. And she failed once more. Raising an eyebrow behind his mask, Naruto asked, what makes you think that? Tenten explained, because all men do it. They think a girl is only good at cooking, cleaning, and making babies, adding that she was sick of this type of life and had seen enough of it. I don't, said Naruto merely perplexed as to why Tenten would hold such a view. Tenten angrily remarked, yeah well, my tem of an uncle did, hating her father's brother just as much as her mother did. Naruto observed the girl nod and said, let me guess, he was one of those male pigs that thinks women should be put in their place, and underneath a man. Sensing Naruto's murderous intent rising at what his uncle felt she should do, Tenten replied, yeah. When I told my parents I wanted to be a shinobi like Tsunade, they were happy for me, but my uncle said I shouldn't try to take up a man's only profession, and told my parents I should stick to playing with dolls instead of training with weapons. That bastard, exclaimed Naruto, about to rip that Tem a known asshole if Tenten hadn't said something else. Tenten, who had watched Naruto cool down and return to a more normal human environment, said, he's dead now though. From what I learned, he was once part of the mobs that would try to hunt you down on your birthday and was killed by my father after he learned about it since the Yondaimi was a good friend to him. Naruto remarked, good to hear. If he were still alive, I'd show him what a monster truly is, and show the Tem what it means to face a demon, just before he witnessed Tenten hang her club and give him a friendly smile. With a hint of blush at the end of her statement, Tenten said, well, since training is done, you want to go get something to eat, and relax for a little bit. With a tinge of humor, Naruto said, my my Ten, Chan. Are you by chance asking me out, on a date? Tenten berated herself for being this way, saying, no, I mean, if you want it to be a date then. She had never gone on a date and was more interested in guns than boys. Then, a date it is, my lady, Naruto said, extending his elbow for Tenten to accept, which she did with a beaming expression. Tenten said, you know, when you're not being such an asshole when training, you can become quite the gentleman, and make a girl feel special, as she heard Naruto giggle. I try, Naruto replied, taking a jab in the ribs from Tenten even though it was all in good humor. Home of the Inazuka clan, later that night, Hannah put on some perfume that would attract any man who smelled it and came within close proximity to her body, then looked herself in the mirror, observing her figure that was obscured by the red dress she was wearing, stopping just past the hip. If Anko's twisted statements were accurate, Namikaze Naruto was the person Hannah felt was most interested in seducing right now. He seemed to be an alpha male, so Hannah felt she had to investigate these claims. Putting the crass wager aside, Hannah was going to pursue Naruto in the hopes of finding a suitable partner of her own, and this just expedited things. I guess Anko believes he's the epitome of an alpha male. Smirking slyly into the mirror, Hannah thought to herself, 
Well, let's see him handle me, and my alpha female ways when together. She knew she had this bet won. It had to count for something, after all, since her own mother was an alpha female who once scared the living daylights out of Hannah's father. Yes, exactly, soon called out to Hannah from downstairs, Hannah, your date's here, and Hannah's smile widened. As Hannah descended the stairs of the house, she remarked, coming. Time to show him my stuff, and noticed Kiba and Akamaru snarling at Naruto. I swear, Naruto, if you dishonor my sister in any way, Kiba yelled, gesturing a finger threateningly at the shadow fox, who was dressed in black pants, boots, a trench coat, and a thin white tee, shirt that flaunted his muscular abs. I know Kiba, you'll tear me apart, I get it, just shut up and let me enjoy some company with your sister before I start to get angry for your overprotective nature, Naruto yelled, growing irritated with the Inazuka man in front of him. He didn't intend to do anything improper with Hana, and he wouldn't even try if she wanted to. However, based on what Naruto could currently see of Hana, he surmised that this Inazuka woman would do more than just go out and have dinner with him. As Hana watched her brother's jaw drop and Naruto appear to be enjoying what he was seeing, she said, I agree with Naruto.kun. Leave us alone runt, I'm your older sister. Should we go, Hana, Chan? Naruto asked, taking her hand and giving it a dapper kiss. Yes, let's go before my brother decides to regain brain function and move to spy on us, Hannah said as they left. Kiba's brain didn't restart until the door closed, at which point he started spying on the two. Hold it right there, young man. Where do you think you're going? Sum asked, anticipating Kiba's expression and preparing to intervene to prevent her son from acting foolishly. Kiba saw his mother shake her head at him and then punch his skull hard enough that he hit the ground with a lump growing out. Come on mom, you know full that Naruto could try something with Hana. I have to make sure her honor is protected, Kiba said. Baka, Hana wanted to go out with Naruto.kun for a while now. It's clear he's alpha male material, but Hana has to be sure in her own way, and honestly, it's about time your sister settles down with me and we start having grandchildren, Sum exclaimed. She had been unsure of whether any man would be worthy of her daughter and was worried that Hana would end up alone if she didn't marry a cowardly man. Before Kiba was still inside of her and wasn't yet displaying the pregnancy, Sum herself had done before the man fled in terror during one of her more, angrier moments. As he had barely survived the pregnancy with Hannah and could withstand another assault with Kiba in her womb, the man Sum married simply had no idea what he was getting into when he got married to her. Sum was determined to seize Hannah's once. In a lifetime chance to be with an alpha male, and her Baka son's sudden need for protection was not going to stop her. Kiba started crying waterfall tears and imagined himself as an uncle who the kids were using as a chew toy. I pray to Kami that's not the case, he thought to himself. Oh, how human, with Hana and Naruto. Hana, on the other hand, was having the time of her life with Naruto since he was acting like the epitome of a gentleman in front of her and she could tell he was trying to counteract the effects of her perfume. When they got to the nice restaurant he took her to, Naruto pulled out the chair to allow her to sit first. He then sat down and even stood up for her honor when some drunken asshole tried to take her away. The Baka had referred to her as a, Inazuka slut, and other derogatory terms when she had rejected his advances and for simply going on their date with Naruto. If Hana was hearing what she thought were the screams of the inebriated Baka, Naruto's retaliation consisted of creating a shadow clone, having the duplicate take the stupid man outside in the back alley, and beating the living shit out of him. Hana wasn't sure what the shadow clone of Naruto had done, but the Namikaze reassured her that nobody would ruin their date, and after accepting payment, they agreed to take a walk in the park under the full moon. Seated with him on a park bench, Hannah remarked, the moon is wonderful during this time of night. I always feel strange when under its illuminating gaze and I feel my body tingle for some reason. She could tell he was feeling the effects as well. Naruto took a deep breath, looked up at the moon, and then grinned at Hannah. Yeah, I feel the same way when the moon is full like it is now. I think it's because I'm a vessel for a tailed beast since Sabaku no Gara is the same way too and several other members of my kin that I've met during my travels, he said. I heard from Anko that you killed Orochimaru by yourself, Hana said, attempting to strike up a discussion. Naruto said, well, not entirely by myself, as she did help out a bit in drawing the Tem from out of his hole, and I did let Anko, Chan burn the body. Not only that, but she also got to kill Kabuto with Orochimaru's own sword, and keep it to have as a souvenir, leaving out the details of what transpired next and the conversation he had with the other girls afterwards. 
Hannah was impressed that he wasn't taking full credit for the mission, as most guys would have boasted about it and made up stories to get under a woman's skirt. Naruto asked, what about you? How has your life been? After noticing Hannah blush from being abruptly put on the spot. Me, oh, nothing really exciting you'd want to hear, Hannah answered, explaining that she was either working on routine missions or managing the animal clinic that her clan had helped establish for sick animals that weren't receiving enough care at the hospital. Naruto's eyes flashed for a moment, and Hannah felt compelled to tell him about some of the things she had seen. Tell me anyway, he said. Among them was the five. Year. Old Kiba who would play with his mother's lipstick and draw over his face to make it resemble a living Andu Inu mask. Naruto laughed at that, knowing it was the ideal form of blackmail for when Kiba tried to prevent him from seeing Hannah again in the future. Hannah was taken to the Inazuka clan residence by Naruto as the exciting evening drew to an end, but she wasn't ready to leave because she still wanted to see how much of an alpha male the Namikaze truly was. That being said, midway to the Inazuka clan residence, Hannah dragged Naruto into an alley and planted a passionate kiss on him, which initially startled the Namikaze but was soon returned with a fervor of his own. Throughout the date, he had behaved gentlemanly toward Hannah, controlling his impulses and resisting the need to mount her in any part of the Konoha that wasn't his bedroom whenever he smelled the perfume. To be honest, Naruto had completely forgotten about the little bet Anko had made with Hannah about him dominating the Inazuka in that way, and about having sex. To be honest, he totally forgot about it, and it wasn't until this battle that it occurred to him. Before long, the two were engaged in a struggle for supremacy in which neither of them was willing to yield to the other. Hannah took pleasure in her battle with Naruto because the Namikaze shared her feelings. But there has to be a winner in every fight, and Naruto emerged on top after Hannah grabbed his pants crotch and he retaliated by going for her breasts. He then gave her a complicated twist of his own design on her nipples, which caused her to become so ecstatic that it allowed him to seize control of their passionate making out. The last thing that broke Hannah's barrier of restraint was Naruto's actions at dinner, their walk in the park, the talking that happened when they sat down, and the fact that he was dominating this moment. I need you, I've been needing you all night, but I didn't want to act like a total slut, and had to keep myself from taking you, Hannah said, panting heavily at this point. Well, I happen to know the owner of a luxury hotel not far from here, and we can stay in one of the more plush rooms to take this further, Naruto stated, deciding that this was the ideal moment to use the room that had been set aside just for him. At that point, he was the hotel's owner. There's never been a better time to use it than now. Go ahead, Hannah commanded before the two were engulfed by the shadows and transported to a location where the Inazuka woman would soon realize that Anko was correct to say the shadow fox was in charge of everything he did. A few days later, in Hokage's office, Tsunade exclaimed, so you're really going after them, all of them, as she noticed him dressed in full shadow fox regalia and could feel her godson's seriousness radiating from him. The storm was about to begin, and he had been spending the last few days and nights unwinding in the figurative calm before it. Naruto spent the entire day with Hannah, Tenten, and Anko during that period, which helped him get to know them better. Since Naruto also desired to spend time with Haku, Hanada, and Yugito, he naturally included them all in his schedule. After bathing in the blood of his enemies, who awaited him in the darkness, they were the light he would return to. When it was all over, he would need them to preserve his humanity. Naruto turned to leave and was about to knock on the door when Tsunade stopped him. You hired me for a job to remove them. Once they're gone, all that will remain is Iowa, and they don't have their demon vessels since those two went into self-imposed exile," he said. After the mission is completed and your time with us expires, what will you do? Tsunade asked, noticing Naruto sigh a little. As the country was thriving and could have a promising shinobi village if given the chance, Naruto said, in all honesty, I have no intention of coming back to the leaf to stay there permanently if that is what you're referring to, and plan to go someplace where people like me are not hated like I still am here. I don't know if all the girls I wish to marry will come with me, but I hope they do, and come with me back to Wave Country to start a shinobi village there." The young Namikaze nodded and left the room. That's a shame. Still, the offer to come back is still here, and this job if you change your mind, Tsunade said. Now that the room was empty, Tsunade could do nothing but sit back in her chair and cry over the likelihood that she would lose her godson to this vile village a third time. HQ.2 Akatsuki days later. Seeing Pain nod in response, Sasori asked, so we're finally going after all the tailed beasts now. Even after losing both Kisame and Itachi. 
Observing the group of shinobi in front of him tense at this news, Payne said, we have little choice in the matter. Word has reached me that the shadow fox has now left the leaf to kill us all. It just means we'll have to be extra cautious and take the more discreet roads to capture out prey, Kakuzu remarked. He was aware of such roads, and since they were also inexpensive, paying the money to go to certain locations wouldn't be an issue. He then exclaimed, wanting to spill blood in the name of Jashin, but this was taking up too much of his time. We should take care of the shadow fox first. With the fucker gone, the rest will fall much easier, and we won't have to deal with this blasphemous shit. The shadow fox's demonic voice echoed through the room's shadows, that can be arranged, causing all of Akatsuki's members to stiffen at the sound. The white half of Zetsu exclaimed in a terrified voice, he's here. The darker half exclaimed, we need to get the fuck out of here. As he discovered both sides had been ripped to pieces and wrapped in shadow strings. Naruto recalled the shadow strings to his hands and said, you can't. I won't let you, his eyes glowing red behind his fox mask. Pain exclaimed, kill him, as he watched Hidan and Kakuzu close in to destroy the Kayubi vessel. In response, Naruto advanced toward them and started the elaborate dance of combat between the two Akatsuki members. Naruto parried a blow from Hidan's side, hit the Jashinist in the stomach, deflected a blow from Kakuzu, kneed the man in the stomach, and executed a reverse spin kick that struck Hidan square in the face. The blows that Naruto delivered to the two, Zombie Brothers, as the late Kisame had dubbed them, sent them flying into the nearest wall, giving Sasori and Didera an opportunity to battle him. While Didera was molding clay to explode when it came near his target, Sasori let loose his living puppets on Naruto. In retaliation, the Shadow Fox threw spiked shadows at Sasori's puppets, allowing the shadow energy he let out to spread from one to the next, poisoning them with shadow and demonic chakra until Sasori was quickly reduced to nothing before he even realized it. In contrast to his earlier, in your face, plan, Didera was now retreating, reconsidering his approach, and reworking his bombs for long range targets. But the plan quickly proved fruitless for the former shinobi of Iwa as well, for tendrils emerged from the ground and entwined themselves around his arms and limbs, covering his hands as they sank into the mouths within the palms. Didera attempted to speak, but a single dark tendril entwined itself around his neck, choking him severely as it pulled back on his throat. Naruto merely exclaimed, boom, as he witnessed Didara's eyes widen in anticipation of what was about to happen. A few seconds later, the man burst into a hundred pieces. Hidan and Kakuzu had regained their footing by now, and they charged Naruto before Namikaze produced his bow, staff. Naruto felt he should hold something back for when this confrontation with the Akatsuki organization arrived. He had been holding back until now because information about him had already been revealed by the bingo book. Naruto moved in an almost regal manner as he danced around his adversaries once more, preventing them from striking him directly. He even managed to get Hidan to swing his scythe and stab Kakuzu before spinning the money, hungry man into another wall and dragging the worshipper of Jashin with him. When Naruto noticed that the two psychos had momentarily lost interest in each other, he focused on pain and his stunning partner Conan. Naturally, even as they prepared to follow suit and heard the shadows murmur details about their true identities, he refrained from acting against them just yet. The reason behind their actions, the suffering that transformed them into these monsters come to life, and the realization that these two were similarly tortured souls to him, with no other option in life than to wage war, in order to bring an end to it however they saw fit. Conan said, your time has come, Kayubi Vessel, you will not stop us from achieving our dream, as she readied herself to take out Naruto while Pain prepared his six paths to use their power to destroy the Namikaze. Your dream is folly, your plan is to hold the world by the throat and to shake it down to the very foundation until it submits to the fear of turning my kin along with myself into a combined weapon using that statue. You really think that's what the world needs in order to bring peace to it? Fools, war will always exist, you simply can't turn it off, even by fear of something so dangerous that it would only halt it for a time and even then war would only evolve into something else that would make your threats useless. That's why shinobi exist, to be the buffer zone, to make sure battles, conflicts, and overall warfare stays small to the point where minimum life is lost in the process. The world will not be held hostage simply to do your bidding should you succeed, as that is not how the way works, and people will fight such oppression, said Naruto, as he saw Pain's eyes narrow, and Conan's eyes widen. You know nothing. To be betrayed and then killed out of fear for doing something good that those we trusted not knowing they would even do such a thing because you were more liked. 
That is what happened with us. We helped AIM become something great, but its leader Hanzo feared our charisma in being heroes of the people, and for that we were betrayed, pain recollected, shaking with pain from the day's events. I know well enough. For 12 years, I also lived a lie, and just like you I planned my revenge on those that betrayed the convictions they claimed to live by. The hypocritical tyrants that destroyed you are dead, as are mine, and those that support them are now no more a threat than the world's smartest termite. You don't have to hate the world for the sins of the few. Just destroy the few and the hate will leave your body with love rising in its place, said Naruto as he saw Pain staring at him. Pain saw Naruto shake his head and sigh bitterly. It's not enough. I will only find love when there is peace and only then on my terms. Pain exclaimed. For what it's worth, I did try, and I would like to say. I'm sorry, Naruto said, proceeding to use hand signals until the room's light completely faded. He then stopped using his own two hand signs, Shadow, and, Demon. W what is this? exclaimed Kakuzu, realizing what was going on, and he then began to look around nervously as well. Naruto closed his eyes and said, a jutsu I created just for this moment. My own jutsu that I regret making and only wish to use this one time for the rest of my natural life. Shadow Style. Dark Abyss Jutsu. The four Akatsuki members, encircled by the swirling dark abyss that engulfed everything in its path and filled the entire room, stared in horror at what could only be described as the jutsu's name. They could see millions upon millions of eyes, all of them non-human, staring at them from inside, evaluating every person in the room as though they were just another piece of meat to be eaten. Pain felt fear shoot up and down his body, down to the original one safely tucked away in aim, as the largest of the eyes fell upon him. The demonic voice, which appeared to originate from the enormous eyeball that was narrowing toward Pain as though it could read his thoughts, said, your real body is not safe from me. Since, in reality, it was able to read Pain's mind and knew what the man was contemplating. When Conan realized what had been said, she yelled, no, don't, in an attempt to protect her beloved from criticism. You, more than anyone else, have done this for far purer purposes, the big eye peered into her head. Conan asked, observing the eye soften as it looked down upon her, so what if I have? Is my life going to be shown more mercy than him simply because of my reasons? Yes, it was, the eye replied, seemingly indifferent to the situation. Conan resolutely uttered, well, don't. Where pain goes, I must follow him, and see things through to the end. The large eye spoke with more authority than the others around it, and hundreds of thousands of different teeth soon emerged under the many eyes, glowing red. That is not up to you child. It has already been set in motion, he said. What are you? Kakuzu asked, observing Hidan grubbling for Jashin to save him. The money. Loving man was secretly hoping the Psyche's god would intervene on his behalf as well. That, which has no name and cannot be given one by the likes of you, the big eye uttered before the thing materialized like a colossal locust plague, roaring and devouring everything in its path in a manner that was beyond the comprehension of human senses. Naruto opened his eyes to discover that, of the four Akatsuki members present in the room, only one had survived when the jutsu ended and the light came back. Conan was the one, she was now on the floor, weeping, weeping for the loss of the one person in this world above all others. Once more, when all of Pain's forms had been taken, Conan cried weakly and tried to pull herself into the abyss, but the things would not take her, and they just knocked her down to put an end to any more, heroics, on her part. Pain. Sama, Conan said. Naruto, seeing Conan look up at him with teary eyes, said, your purpose in this life is not to die here like they did. The people of AIM need you. Conan asked herself, why should I? Why not just end it now? as best she could by creating a paper kanai and stabbing herself in the neck. Because it will accomplish nothing. People feared pain in aim, but they loved you, and that is what a ruler should be when it comes to those that serve the people. It was what helped pain become so popular before Hanzo betrayed him, but all he saw in the aftermath of the betrayal was that being feared was better than being loved, and lost his way when going down that path. You are more loved than feared by the people of AIM Conan and you love them all back despite the fear pain brought them when he took over, Naruto told Conan who was trembling. It won't be the same without pain, Conan stated bluntly. You're resilient, you can withstand it for the benefit of the AIM people. They will require your support more than ever. Will you desert them now? Will you leave them behind? Naruto asked, observing Conan's stunned expression for an extended period of time before she finally met his gaze with resolve in her eyes. 
Conan promised Naruto that she would not betray the people of AIM. I will be their leader just as Pain was, only I will rule over them in my own way, and bring a bright future to the village, Conan declared as she materialized a bouquet of flowers from paper. As he took them, Naruto said, thank you, and noticed Conan's eyes soften and several more tears streamed down her cheeks. Conan turned to go and was gone a few moments later. Consider this my peace offering to you Shadow Fox. I hope in the distant future, if we ever meet again, we fight side by side as allies, and not as bitter enemies, Conan said. Me too, Conan.san. Me too, Naruto uttered as he turned to leave the area, aware that he still had one Akatsuki member to find and that person was currently waiting for him at the location where everything would come full circle. In the Endless Valley, a day later in the Valley of the End. So you're finally here, I was beginning to think you wouldn't show up to finish what the Shodime started, Madara remarked, gazing at the statue of the Shodime while he stood atop his own statue and feeling Naruto approach as the last living Uchiha stood by and watched. Naruto said, staring at Madara's back and noticing the man was wearing his old red samurai armor he wore ages ago. You were one to talk, always hiding in the shadows and never taking credit for the sins I know you committed out of spiteful vengeance. How many people over the years did you manipulate and kill just for the sake of your pitiful dream? Pitiful, there is nothing pitiful in wanting to rule the entire world after the position that should have been mine was taken from me. There is nothing pitiful about wanting to be the superior being that has no equal. And you of all people should know about, spiteful vengeance, Naruto when you consider what you've done during the three years away from the leaf, said Madara, turning to face Naruto with both Sharingan eyes wide open. As he mentally thanked Kayubi for alerting him to Madara, Naruto said, my vengeance wasn't spiteful. I was wrong because of your actions the day of my birth because you couldn't take the simple fact someone else was more qualified in being the Hokage than you. You are just like your ancestor who was the oldest son of the Sage of the Six Paths ages ago, and couldn't stand being stepped over for his younger sibling. I heard Naruto chuckle behind his own mask. Shut up, our family history is none of your business and you can tell my old pet that he can expect a great deal of punishment from me for revealing that piece of information, Madara said. Naruto spoke briefly before rushing forward at supersonic speed and striking Madara in the gut, sending the last true Uchiha of the elemental countries flying into the wall on the other side of a ravine filled with water. He heard you and in all honesty, the fox doesn't really care. You have abused your right to be his summoner time and time again. You are unworthy of your family legacy and I'm going to correct the mistake your cousin made years ago, Naruto responded. He hits as well as the Shodime did in the past. With the intention of repaying Naruto, Madara shot back towards him after flipping around to land on his feet and creating a huge crater in the rock wall. At the last second, Naruto met him halfway unleashing a powerful spin kick that sent the resentful Uchiha flying into the water below while seizing one of Madara's arms. Madara caught the Namikaze's ankle as Naruto was doing this, pulling the creature down with him. However, before they got to the water, the Shadow Fox gave Madara a powerful enough kick to the head to force the Uchiha to release Madara, allowing Naruto to reclaim the water while his opponent followed suit. Seems like I'll actually have to work for your death, Naruto remarked as he noticed Madara furrowed her brow. Madara said, pulling his sword from its sheath at his waist, you didn't think I would be that easy to kill, did you? Madara scowled back at Naruto, who was grinning behind his mask. You know, for the brief second when I first hit you up there, yeah. Yeah I kind of did, Naruto said. Madara exclaimed, you will pay for your arrogance in underestimating me, as he noticed Naruto draw his own blade and sensed the shadow fox was grinning now beneath his mask. Bring it, declared Naruto merely as the two charged at each other, sending a powerful shockwave rising around them as their blades collided. The two fought for as long as they could, shaking the ground, breaking through the rocky walls, and causing the water they were standing in to ripple violently all around them. Naturally, Madara was holding his own thanks to his Sharingan, but he was finding it hard to use his eyes to enter Naruto's mind and that his opponent was far more formidable than he had initially thought. Once more locked in a blade, sparking battle with Naruto, Madara uttered the words, you can't win boy. I've been around since the formation of Konoha. How do you expect to beat someone like me when your year's experience pales in comparison to mine? He could have sworn he heard the Namikaze chuckle. Then, pulling a blade from under his left wrist, Naruto said, it's not about how many years of experience we have under our belts, Madara, but rather what we learned from those years of experience, and it's clear you have learned very little. Of course, I didn't expect a Uchiha to understand the difference between knowledge, and its counterpart, wisdom. 
Madara pulled out a blade, causing the Uchiha to back away in excruciating pain. The damage the blade caused to his brain and the blood that was flowing into it, which would eventually clot before applying pressure to the organ to cause a slow and agonizing death, made Madara exclaim, T. This can't be. I'm immortal, the first true immortal of the elemental countries. How, how can you defeat me? Defeat the Uchiha as perfect as me no less. Naruto watched the man fall to his knees, coughing up blood and crying out in pain before those Sharingan eyes returned to normal. You may be ageless because of your eyes, but you're not immortal, and won't live past today thanks to that lethal strike to your body. You won't be able to fake your death this time around Uchiha Madara. Death has waited along enough, Naruto said. This isn't over, declared Madara, defying the attack's end. Naruto declared, actually, it is, bringing his sword down to sever Madara's head from his body. While the head was still in the air, Naruto grabbed it, moved to a shallow area, threw it to the ground, and then utilized a fire jutsu to permanently end the man's life. An ironic and appropriate conclusion for the reputed master of fire jutsus who founded the Uchiha clan. It was, in fact, a fitting conclusion for the Uchiha clan and ideal for someone who betrayed others in order to gain power. After two years, Epilogue, Hanada, carrying their child, asked, how does it feel to be the Shodime of the village hidden in the waves? As she entered and noticed Naruto grinning with the cage hat on his head. Naruto got up from his chair and gave his wife a hug. Good, very good, I've waited for this moment my entire life and now I have it with you along with the rest of the girls coming with me making this all the more sweeter, he said. Specifically, one of several wives. It was difficult for him to break free from the leaf because Tsunade had tried everything, including pleading with him to stay on her hands and knees and holding onto his leg to prevent him from simply running off after reporting the mission successful. After he returned to the leaf to give his report, a few issues persisted because some members of both councils believed he was too strong to be allowed to go unchecked and attempted to have him arrested on questionable grounds. Tsunade responded with a move of her own, having the two leaf bodies of government, liquidated, and appointing new members to replace the outgoing guards with the blessing of the fire daimyo. Subsequently, the villagers expressed their displeasure at seeing him in the leaf alive and unscathed from his fight with the Akatsuki. Not that it mattered, Naruto was indifferent to them and complied with Tsunade's request because Iwa was such a stickler. It seems that some Konoha residents made the decision to reveal his parentage to Iwa and cause Naruto a great deal of trouble. The Yandaimi, who refused to accept Naruto as the man's son, were seen by most Leaf as the last genuine Namikaze. Naruto was positive that their hero's son had been abused by them when he was younger, but they would all sooner die than admit they were wrong. It's actually rather pitiful of them. Naruto assumed control of the Konohamaru Corps training during his remaining time in the Leaf, to strengthen the trio's junin and assist the group Serutobi in earning the right to succeed Tsunade as the title's heir. Since Konohamaru was going to be her choice after Naruto turned down the offer to be Hokage, Tsunade herself had no issue with that. Despite what some thought of the, Kayubi brat, returning to the village for the ceremony, Naruto was expected to attend and see the hate fade away after six months. Nevertheless, it was their decision, and Naruto did gain from it in terms of his romantic life since the girls, upon witnessing his actions, declined to remain in the leaf any longer than necessary. Hanada had been with Naruto for three years and didn't regret a day of their time together. She loved him without question. Hana was first a little hesitant, but soon encouraged her to follow her intuition and to always support her alpha male partner. Kiba was adamantly opposed, but soon was able to have a mother, daughter conversation with Hannah and help put things right after getting a good punt out of the house. Enko quickly packed her bags because she felt it was time to find a new place where she could be herself and live away from a village that detested her almost as much as it did Naruto. Tenten's feelings about it were conflicted, as one might expect given her relationship with Guy, Lee, and Neji in addition to the other rookies. But they assured her that they would support her decision no matter what, and they could always get together for a visit if the opportunity arose. Though she didn't mean to, Hanada reprimanded, did you finish all your paperwork? You know the kids at home require your help too. Naruto looked at Hanada and said, I'll be sure to make a mental note of it after the fact you girls basically did everything possible to become pregnant in the first place. Hanada blushed because it was true. Well, it's not like you didn't enjoy the process that made as fat as a beached whale, Hanada remarked, noticing Naruto's chuckle. All of his wives experienced mood swings during their pregnancies and were furious about their potential obesity. That was not my fault. I never said you were. If you remember correctly Hanada. 
Chan, I kept say none of you were getting fat, but rather you were simply feeding the life inside of you, and like all things that feed it grows. It's not my fault the baby grew within you either, said Naruto, as he witnessed Hinata pouting and on his shoulder. The female Mizukage in Mist only had the alliance because of her previous, brief relationship with Naruto, which helped the woman become the Cage of Mist. You tell that to the female Mizukage in Mist. She wants you over there to say hello to your twin boys more often, Hinata remarked. Though Tarumi Mei, the red, haired woman, had desired a more substantial alliance with Naruto, Mei became another of his wives and gave birth to a child shortly after. Regarding the shinobi village that Naruto established, it garnered significant backing, and multiple shinobi embraced his cause. Among the prominent shinobi were Iwa's two demon vessels, who had been banished. When they were offered a place in the Namikaze's village, where they would be treated with dignity, the two accepted without hesitation. After the Yandaimi died, the Waterfall Village also joined forces with Naruto because it had long since grown disenchanted with the Leaf's methods. However, Jiraiya of the Sanin had the ability to disable their own demon vessel, and they lacked the strength to oppose Konoha without running the risk of being discovered. With the demon vessel, the system had been altered thanks to Naruto. A girl by the name of Fu had even taken on the role of village leader and was using the Namikaze to help her take the village to new heights. The case cage, Sabaku no Gara, joined Naruto's village but maintained his allegiance to the leaf, if only out of formality. The two became close friends, and Naruto was welcomed as an honored guest in Suna. Additionally beneficial was Naruto's introduction of a trade route to Suna, which allowed them to receive water during the drier seasons when it was more difficult to obtain water from various known locations throughout Wind Country. Conan proposed formalizing their alliance, facilitating trade, and offering differing perspectives on how to train shinobi while maintaining a high degree of secrecy. Since their last encounter, which coincided with the last days of the Akatsuki organization, the Angel of Aim and Naruto had met and grown close friends. Naruto was, in a way, very similar to Pain before things went wrong for them, and the origami woman quickly realized that the Namikaze had been correct in believing that the people of Aim needed love more than fear. With a smug smile on his face, Hinata protruded her tongue and said, Fortunately for me, the way to travel by shadows is quick, and to the point so I don't have to worry about being late. Hinata remarked, I'll remember that when you do come home late at night, and Naruto gave her a sheepish smile in return. Seeing the tick mark on his wife's face, Naruto said, Now Hinata. Chan, you know that I am never late. I always come home exactly when I have to and not a second later. Hinata gave Naruto a little glare and said, You're lucky I love you so much despite being a smart ass, even though Naruto had witnessed far worse when his wives were expecting. Naruto ran home laughing, turning Hinata red with shame. True, but it's me being a smart ass that really turns you on, and has you screaming for more. Or are you still having problems remembering last night? She said, carefully rushing after him to make sure her son didn't wake up. Hanada yelled, come back here so I can kick your ass, Naruto.kun. As Naruto fled from the woman who was pursuing him, the villagers watched the two interact, shaking their heads. Now Hanada. Chan, remember what happened last time you said that? and the result of our actions leading up to our child being born, Naruto said, sprinting faster through the village. He was the most unpredictable shinobi in the elemental countries after all. That's it for today, I hope you guys enjoyed this great story, see you in the next one.